We're nearing the end of the season here at National Stole Series. It's the last chance for pilots to earn points before the series championships. We've descended upon beautiful Gallatin, Tennessee for Music City Stole 2023. Oh, it was a great flight out. It was about four, four and a half hours. Stopped at Danville for fuel and beautiful flight. Absolutely happy to be here. So it's been a long trip. Headwinds all the way. So it was kind of a nightmare, but no long ways. I'm Abe Gaskins. I am from Gallatin. I live in uh, the area. And me and a buddy of mine, Jim Johnson and myself, built this air cam about six years ago. And we've been flying ever since, and it's just one of the funnest things in the world. I'm going to be in an exhibition category, rookie class. I don't think I'm going to be a competitor in the sense that I'm going to win anything. I'm just going to come out here and enjoy the experience and, and uh, hope they don't tear anything up. <laughs> Welcome to the inaugural uh, Music City Stole event here in Gallatin, Tennessee. Uh, we're absolutely thrilled to bring it here, and I uh, hope it's the first of many. Very excited. Got a lot of community support around this event already. Music City Executive Airport, 6,300 foot long runway, uh, one of the longest in the middle of Tennessee besides uh, BNA and Smyrna. We're right about 580 feet MSL elevation. We've got runway that can take you anywhere in the world. Yeah, getting out. Well, I'm Jim Abbott. I'm based right here in Gallatin. I'm a retired uh, helicopter pilot, so hopefully your audience can understand my uh, accent. My phone can't, so I understand if your audience can't. I've got a hangar right down here at the local airfield. My dad's here. You know, my family's around here, and we all fly in this area. And I got a straight tail 182. It's a 59 model. Last of the straight tails, the first year of the cow flap. But in the last four years since I bought it, I bought it out west in Arizona, so it was a dry climbing airplane. And since right before COVID hit, I was able to get it painted. I ended up doing a, an interior kit on it in the hangar during COVID. So that worked out really good for isolation and, 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 and all that spacing we were doing. If you can remember the, seems like the dark ages ago already. Most recently, I have a new motor put in it. I did the upgrade, I did the P-Pong. So it's got the 0520 in it instead of the 470. The only good thing about supply chain issues that happened this year is it took so long, it took 11 months to do it. I did a sensuous upgrades, sensuous there, let's do this, this, and this. And the next thing you know, I've got a all new laser cut panel, a Garmin instrument suite, a, you know, an autopilot, 
you know, everything from the instrument from the yokes forward is brand new. So it wasn't cheap, but it did happen over a long enough time that I was able to pay for it as I went on installment. So I'm still learning the airplane and the uh, and get building confidence in it. I took it up to Maine, where my wife's family's from. So we flew to Maine and back and uh, been doing stuff like that, camping trips with the family and all that. So really enjoying the airplane. And, and then they advertised this was coming up and it's like, well, I've got a stole kit. It takes off pretty short. Let me try it. And they've got a rookie class. So that was pretty good. And I understand why they do it. It's to drum up local pilots and get some local flavor in it. The unlimited classes, they take off as land as short as the helicopters I flew. So it's, it's just absolutely phenomenal to watch them. So mine, uh, you know, flying today, a lot of gusting, a lot of crosswind, and it made my landings pretty ugly, you know, so I'm bouncing them on, and, and I told myself I'm not going to prank anything, I'm not going to ding a tail, I'm not going to do anything, and I'm out here looking like a bucking bronco riding it out on short final on 3.5. Uh, takeoffs are going good, landings we'll have to see, you know, because flying it that slow is not something you're used to, but it is fun, so the good thing is, like I said, they got a rookie class, and uh, we're going to give it a whirl, see how it goes. And welcome everyone to Music City Stole 2023 here, part of National Stole. My name is Ryan Dombrowski and I am so excited to bring this day of Stole competition to you. Beautiful airport here at Music City Executive in Gallatin, Tennessee. And man, it has just been, we had practice yesterday. It's been hot. The wind has been nil, which actually we'll talk about for Stoll is something that we wish we had a little bit more wind. And uh, it's just going to, we're gearing up for a really exciting day of Stoll competition again here in Tennessee. If you are in the crowd and excited for some Stoll action, I want to hear you cheer right now, everyone. Get a cheer for all these volunteers. That's right. We got a huge crowd here in Tennessee forming. Also, if you are joining us online, we broadcast this all over the world. Yesterday, we had people chiming in from Brazil, from, from uh, the UK. People were chiming in from everywhere. We want to still see you online, too. So if you're online, make sure to say hello. I see, again, Ray Powell from Berwick-upon-Tweed in the UK is in the chat right now. So we've got a great crowd here in Tennessee. We've got a great crowd worldwide to watch the second to last competition before the finals for the National Stole Series. We are going to gear things up right now. Let's get it started. Before any competition, you have to have a national anthem and an invocation, and we're going to kick that over to them right now. So if you could all please rise.
Let's get another round of applause for that grateful, great rendition of our national anthem, everybody. And also we have, of course, the local CAP squadron with the colors. A round of applause for them as well. We are getting geared up for an amazing day of stole flying for you, everybody. It is hot and it is sunny, so I just want to say one thing. Don't forget, don't get too excited that you don't hydrate. <laughs> don't get too excited that you don't remember to wear your sunscreen. And don't get too excited that you forget to go buy some awesome Music City, City Stole merch. Sorry, couldn't, couldn't help myself. <laughs> Sergio Mendoza in the chat saying, can't wait to see this one. I cannot wait to see it either. We are about to bring in a special guest as well uh, to help me for the first uh, 30 minutes or so here. But before we do, let me just talk to you. Anyone here in the crowd, has anyone who has not been at a stole competition before, I need you to cheer real loud. Okay, so we've got a lot of newbies today, and that's great. I'm going to do my best to bring you through how this all works. All right, let's talk a little bit about how this works, everybody. You will notice a beautiful grass runway in front of you here at Music City Executive. That's a runway that's been temporarily set up just for us. It's still the same alignment. It's runway 17 is what we're going to be using today. And uh, what you'll see is a beautiful white line painted on that runway. And that's where all the action happens. We've got basically two phases to our competition each round. You'll see different aircraft sorted into different classes. We'll explain that as we go. But what happens is there's, first there's basically a takeoff competition. The goal is to take off in the shortest distance possible. So the aircraft will put their wheels on that white line. They'll go full throttle and take off as short as possible. And all those line judges, line judges, if you can hear me around, can you raise your hand line judges out there? All right, we got, yeah, there they go. So we got all these line judges on the line, and they're going to run to where the aircraft takes off and mark that distance. There's a tape measure. There's some markers to help you guess about where they take off. That's the takeoff distance. We measure from where the main wheels leave the ground. Then the aircraft will go around the traffic pattern, guided, of course, by our intrepid air bosses to make sure that everything is safe, that spacing is well done and separated between all of the aircraft. I love seeing these RVs. That was an RV-8 that just came across. All these beautiful planes that participated in the flyover during the anthem. That is so beautiful to see. So, okay, so they're going to go around the traffic pattern and then they're going to land. And then it gets really exciting. They have to land on the line or after it, not before it. My co-host, who's normally here, Corey Robin, talks a lot about how this is like simulating a backcountry landing on a sandbar. So imagine we're all sitting on the banks of a river and the runway is a sandbar. This is what bush pilots do all the time. You need to land at the line or after it. Otherwise, if we think about our sandbar analogy, we're landing in the water. And that is bad news bears. So we need to land after the line, not before it. If someone lands before the line, you'll hear us call scratch. And that means that the landing and takeoff for that round did not count. Assuming they land after the line, 
We measure the distance from the line to where the wheels stop turning. Put those two distances together and you have your composite score. And then after that, it's basically airplane golf. You want the lowest score possible. You're gonna see airplanes of all shapes and sizes do this today. You're gonna see little airplanes designed just for this. You're gonna see big airplanes designed to carry a bunch of stuff into the back country. We're gonna see all sorts of exciting things. And to help me bring it to you for the first little bit today, a special guest, a dear friend of mine, Mr. Brian Turner is here. Brian, can you hear me from somewhere in Texas? I can hear you from somewhere in Texas. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for joining us. And folks, in the crowd, if you look at the video monitor, you'll get to see uh, Brian's beautiful face uh, for the crowd there. <laughs> so uh, that'll be in just a second when we get him pulled up on the screen there. But Brian, uh, you are a commercial pilot. You're a multi-rated pilot. You're like a, a big deal on the internet. For people who maybe don't know who you are, you want to give them a little, a little brief about where they can find you and what sort of stuff you do? <laughs> sure. And, and for, for reference, I've been a commercial and multi-engine pilot for about a day. Uh, so I have a YouTube channel called Just Plain Silly where I've been uploading videos for a handful of years now. Um, flying's always just been a hobby, but uh, recently decided I think I might take a shot at going at it professionally. So, uh, so last week I had a commercial and a multi-check ride, and now I'm working towards ATP minimums. But uh, in the meantime, we'll keep uh, churning out some some funny videos on my YouTube channel. So after this, make sure you go check out Brian's channel. You can see there on his name it says he's the world's greatest pilot, and uh, I've never flown with him, but I assume it's true. I've got the eye on the website. It's got to be true. So, so Brian, have you ever come to a Stoll event like this before? I have been to uh, the Lone Star Stoll at Gainesville, Texas, and I've gone and watched these uh, competitions, I suppose you call them, at, uh, at uh, AirVenture, um, Sun and Fun, and some other uh, aviation events. And talk to me a little bit about the kind of flying do you do. Do you do any Stoll flying, or is are you are you flying a different type of flying when you fly <laughs> uh not on purpose i had a pretty uh pretty stoll style landing the other day in my comanche and i was curious as to whether or not there's going to be maintenance issues i'm i'm mostly a hobby pilot uh, fly for fun fly my family around um try to get in you know long cross-country trips you know i'm supposed to be in the upper peninsula today actually but uh, i've got a maintenance issue with the airplane so it's it's family flying and then um, with these ratings i'm hoping to uh, kind of I don't know, crossover into professional flying. You, uh, I think in Texas, you had the privilege of flying with one of the other uh, Stoll competitors we see on the circuit sometimes, Levi Noges. And I'm wondering, he took you up in a, a weird airplane. What was that like? So he has this plane. I've never seen anything like it before. It's called a Storch. I think his is a like a three quarter scale replica. So I guess slightly smaller than the real one. Um, Levi is this interesting guy. He's kind of a, a, a cowboy kind of guy. He kind of asked me if I wanted to ride, and I hadn't met him before, but I'd seen him on the internet. I was, I was pretty excited. This this plane. Um, the, the the most outstanding thing that stands out to me was we we, we took off, and of course a very short distance. Um, and then he was trying to show me some steep turns. That thing turns like, like I mean, just on a, on a dime. Like it just sit there and spun without moving is what it seemed like. And I got the 360 camera footage on the outside that it's, it's such tight circles. Um, it was just, just the most unusual thing given that I'm cruising around most of the time at 160, 170 knots. If I'm turning, I'm, all, I'm covering a lot of ground. Uh, so, so flying in that plane, how quickly it got up, how short it landed in it was, with two of us in it, right? Um, and then just the sheer maneuverability of it was an entirely different uh, type of flying than I'm used to. It was awesome. You, uh, we were talking just before the broadcast started and you said that just a couple of weeks ago, you got your kind of second dose of stole flying. What was, what was that experience? Uh, oh yeah, it was, it was also cool. I, I guess I, I like the stole stuff. I need to do it. Uh, I was, uh, invited out to go fly gliders at a local uh, glider company. 
and we were going to get some video of it. And so we went out and flew gliders. And then the tow, tow plane was a, I think it was a super cub. And he goes, uh, he goes, you know, while your buddy's flying the glider, do you want to go up in, in the uh, tow plane? And I was like, yeah, why not? So I sat in the back. I think I had more fun in the back of that tow plane than maybe I did in the glider. Cause they're back there showing some different maneuvers with the glider where they can create this slack and pull it out and, and seeing what it did in this, this cub was, was incredible seeing how it flew. Um, and then once we jettisoned the glider, we just went around and flew this, this super cub around. It was, it was awesome. So, um, most of my flying is cross country flying, but if, I think if I could uh, have a second plane, I would love to a slow and low plane just to go out and have fun with these things. Both experiences I've had with them have been extremely memorable. No, oh, that's awesome. Well, I'm excited to sh share a little bit more of Stole Flying with you today. And thanks again for joining us. And uh, you and I will uh, we'll just uh, hang out and talk airplanes for a little bit while things get started here. A uh, couple of things I want to point out happening on the field right now for the viewers at home and the viewers here in Tennessee. One, uh, one of our officials, that's Eric Farewell, out on the line. He's making sure that line is super, super visible for the pilots. We've got a beautiful runway here in Gallatin. Uh, you guys, have, you're so lucky to have such a great airport in your community here and, and uh, to have this turf so great and accessible to us, even though it's not a normally used runway, is a real special thing. Uh, we need to make sure that line is super, super visible so the pilots know what they're aiming at. In some of the other competitions earlier in the year, due to conditions, either we've had dirt runways, we've had grass runways, we've had tur uh, uh, hard surface runways, they the line can become obscured very quickly. And then the uh, pilots are radioing and saying, okay, like, hey, I don't know where I'm landing. So we need to make sure that that's super visible uh, for safety and for competitive purposes. So Eric's taking care of that for us right now. The other person I want to call out to you is Lexi Duncan. Lexi's uh, on the line. I don't know if she can hear me, but if you can wave, there she is. Yeah, thumbs up. Uh, Lexi is our line judge. And so we talked about the scratching and the scoring and Lexi's our first person to help us understand whether or not someone has scratched. So she sits on the line. She's got two responsibilities. One is to get the pilots exactly marshaled up to the line and ready to go. And then two, the, uh, the other thing she does is check that line and make sure that it's either a, a scratch or good, or if it's too close to call, she sends it back to race control and they review on video. So I'm sure you're going to see that a bunch today, but it's a very exciting thing. Brian, you're probably seeing a few aircraft that look familiar to you. Uh, this is a Cessna 205 in front of us. We're going to introduce these pilots in just a second. This first class is called the touring class, and we sometimes also call it the heavies. So we've got really big airplanes to start the day off for you. For folks who aren't familiar with aviation as much, you're not like an av geek like Brian and I, uh, these planes are huge when it comes to general aviation. You're seeing six passenger planes, uh, planes that can carry, some of them, some of them are four passenger, uh, and you're seeing planes that can carry a ton of weight into the back country. Uh, you know, if you were, and Brian, maybe this is you. I, I, you I'm not this guy. Uh, you know, if you were to hunt a moose, that that th these are the planes that you would bring the moose home in. I don't know if you've done a lot of moose hunting in your day. No, not a lot of moose hunting, but this is definitely the class of plane I'm familiar with. In fact, I, correct me if I'm wrong, at one of these a handful of years ago, didn't you actually have a Comanche 250 participate? Yeah, we've had we've had uh, a Comanche in this class before. Uh, very interesting. Maybe not the most practical for Skull, <laughs> but but here totally possible. I mean, this first plane we're going to talk about more in a second. You know, that's a huge plane, right? Like that Cessna two hundred five. Uh, it's putting in work, but it's also you'll see today, folks, really capable in the backcountry. The, uh, the other ones that you'll see back there, we've got malls, we've got uh, a super rebel in the distance there on the camera. That's a home-built design. Uh, so they're, yeah, just like giant big airplanes. And what's exciting for you in the crowd is you're gonna see airplanes that need to go a little faster and airplanes that need uh, to land a little harder. <laughs> so we'll see, some, we'll see some ploppers, I think, today, uh, especially without good wind all right uh 
Let's head over to the lineup. It's time for the touring class brought to us by Hartzell Propeller. First up, coming up to you right now in a 1963 Cessna 205 from Hearn, Texas, it's Brandon Korn. You can cheer for him, folks. He can probably hear you through that door. Brandon Korn, everybody. Next up, coming down the line in a 1965 Piper Cherokee from Ocala, Florida in Piperzilla. Here he comes up to you. It's Jeff Abrams. Next up. In the 2009 Murphy Super Rebel from Mora, Minnesota. Luke Strandland. And to your right, last but certainly not least, in the red and white 1978 Mall from Omaha, Nebraska, it's John McArdle. So that's your touring class getting ready to kick off again. Brought to you by Hartzell Propeller. In the front, Brandon Korn, 1963 Cessna 205. Jeff Abrams in that 1965 Piper Cherokee. Luke Strandlin in the 2009 Murphy Super Rebel. And John McArdle again in that mall. 1978 mall M5235C. So, so that's the touring class. Uh, just based on looks alone, Brian, who's your uh, who's your money on? I'm pulling for the Piper because I fly a Piper, but uh, also that's really unusual for me to see uh, <laughs> just a Cherokee in one of these competitions. You don't see them at the ultralight field at Oshkosh. Um, I've got a I got a thing for malls. I love malls, so I think I'm I'm I'm, I'm rooting for that guy. <laughs> Yeah, the mall. Uh, the other thing I'll mention about uh, John McArdle is, as he taxied by, he was definitely not wearing a shirt, and so I'm sure that's going to give him an advantage, the shirtless advantage for John McArdle. <laughs> ready to, ready to go. We've got a every few more minutes. Oh yeah, go ahead, Brian. What? Say every bit of weight you can save, like a swimmer. You just you shave all your body hair off and gain as many knots as you can. <laughs> so we've got a few more minutes before we kick things off. Uh, I want to take a second to thank a few sponsors. You heard about Hartzell Propeller. They're the sponsor of the touring class. We all also have to thank a few other people. Aero LEDs. You see some Aero LEDs on a lot of these aircraft. They're the, the lights that uh, make everyone be able to see. Uh, Lift Aviation, making a lot of great aviation products like shoes and helmets and uh, knee boards, things like that. You got to check them out. And then also Tri Green. Tri Green from the local community here. Uh, we really appreciate their help. So those are sponsors that help us bring this together. 
Uh, Brian, I'm going to just recap because I, in case you missed it, just for folks at home, just a quick recap again of how this works. Brandon, for instance, is going to take, he's going to taxi up to the line. Lexi's going to taxi him up to the line and he's going to take off as short as possible. You need to keep in mind that this airplane is huge. Uh, I'll pull up the weight on it real quick, but he's going to taxi up to the line, take off. We measure that distance, comes around the traffic pattern, lands as close to the line as possible, but not before it. And then we measure that distance again from the line to where they stop. Add those two distances together. Today, you're going to see some longer takeoffs and landings. Like, for instance, in this class, you're going to see longer takeoffs and landings. You're going to see some incredibly short takeoffs and landings. In Arizona, earlier this year, in the Unlimited class, we saw an aircraft take off in a jaw-dropping six feet, which I think is wow. basically as, as long as Brian is tall. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> So uh, you're going to see a lot of that. I don't know if we're going to get six feet today. Let me pull up the conditions, the weather. Look at these beautiful drone shots, by the way, by Summit Precision Aerial. The weather right now, our weather station is showing zero knot winds, which is a bummer. I do see a little wind on the flags. It's like a bonanza taking off right there. Uh, if I pull up the weather on ForeFlight or if you pull it up on Garmin Pilot, if that's your flavor you like, I'm showing winds 160 at 6 knots. So basically right down the runway, just a tiny bit of crosswind, but not a lot of wind on the nose. And what we want for stole pilots is more wind. The more wind we have on the nose, the slower the ground speed of the aircraft and the shorter the stopping distance. So the pilot's not super pumped about minimal wind. They'd take as much as we could dish out as long as it's uh, as long as it's safe and on the nose and not super crosswindy or super tailwindy, which is a technical term I just made up. Brian, um, have you ever flown to <laughs> Tennessee before? Have you ever been in this area? Uh, I I've been there a couple times just for fuel stops. I haven't spent any time there. Um, I, I have a question for you though. When it, with respect to landing, uh, planes that are like like the mall that's a tail dragger, does all the wheels have to cross the line or is it just the mains? What's the, what's the cutoff for a scratch? That is an excellent question. So all we care about on a tail dragger is the main wheels. So the tail can actually touch down before the line. The main wheels can touch down, have to touch down afterwards. So there's a little bit of an advantage, I think, sometimes for the tail draggers. If they have the skill, if the pilot has the skill to do that, it can be incredibly difficult to get that exact thing timed out. In the Unlimited class we have, who's not here today, but uh, Steve Henry in his Yeehaw, like highly modified race plane, he can actually, uh, because of the horsepower and the uh, experimental nature of the plane, he can actually sometimes drop that tailwheel down and drag it in the grass before he cuts the power. So that's fine. Uh, from the, to further answer your question, the tri-gear or the nose dragger, or nose wheel planes, like Brandon's plane in the front, folks, has the little wheel in the front. That's a nose wheel aircraft. The, those main wheels still need to, uh, to cross the line. You can't, I guess, I guess technically, if you could somehow do it without prop striking, you could put the nose wheel down first and, and do a wheelbarrow over the line, and that might be okay in the rules. I'm looking at the officials right now to see if they thumbs up that idea or not. Uh, no, <laughs> no one should do that, though, because you're going to kick up a lot of grass and uh, damage your very expes expensive propeller. All right. That's if the plane's not reusable, it doesn't count, I guess, because I, I could probably win this one time. <laughs> Well, it's interesting. We did have a couple pilots at Sodbusters who did end up on their noses. It's very rare, but that can happen. And those landings counted. And I accused them uh, in the I accused them in the award ceremony of doing that on purpose, and they were not uh, not too happy with me. <laughs> Sounds like we're going to release the pilots in just a minute. If you want to follow along at home again, it's Kilo X-Ray, November X-Ray. That's where we're at, Music City Executive. And our little runway is uh, just next to 
the hard surface. So we're still using the same configuration. We're on runway 17 today. Here's Brandon Korn now. Get ready, everybody, for the first takeoff of competition here at Music City Stoll. Let's get pumped. Heavy on the throttle. Those flaps are down. And then you just saw a Cessna 205 take off <laughs> in just over 125 feet. We'll get the scores to you in just a second. Now at the line, Jeff Abrams. Here's the one that uh, Brian Turner of Just Plain Silly is rooting for. He's in Piper Zilla, the Cherokee 180. Flaps dropped, and he's off. That's someone who really wants a little extra wind on the nose. Luke Strandlin now at the line in the 2009 Murphy Super Rebel from Mora, Minnesota. This is another big plane. After we're done competing today, go stand next to it. Go say hi to all these pilots. You're going to be like, oh, man, that is a big plane. Tail off the ground. Pulling back maybe just a little early. And we're looking like somewhere around 275 for him. John McArdle now in the mall waiting for release. He's really good at building up the, uh, the suspense. Taking a big bite, dropping those flaps, and he's off. And Brian, I heard you respond a little bit. You're like, oh, is he going to sink back down? Is he going to sink back down? <laughs> That's what it looks like. It looks like, looks like he was going to bounce it, but he pulled it off. If you touch down again after taking off, we obviously measure from the further distance. I want to say hi to One Aviate on social. Said it's awesome to see this sport grow. Welcome to the new NASCAR. I love that. Also in the chat, we've got Mustache Flyer. You're going to see him compete later. That's Justin <laughs> Tisdale in the sport class. He's saying clear a prop. Here's Brandon Corn now. Safely over the line. That one does deserve applause. Those wheels were locked up the entire way. And so, Brian, I look at these and I think about how big that airplane is. I don't know how much your Comanche weighs. I can't, there's no way I could land and stop my Cessna 172 in 200 ish feet. No, not at all. I'm, and that's, that plane weighs more than mine um, by probably 1,500 pounds. So I, it, these guys have skills that I don't have for sure. Here's Jeff Abrams right over the line it's good according to lexi look at that nose wheel compress i'm gonna watch that on replay right now because it was a close one. Oh, it was good yeah <laughs> it's right on the line awesome. that's a retired airline and uh ups ups i think was his last gig pilot and uh it really shows on those stabilized approaches Luke Strandle now in the, in the Super Rebel. This is a home-built design. You can build this airplane. You can buy a kit and build it. Uh, that is a thing that, Brian, uh, you and I as, like, content creators, people are always trying to get us to build their airplanes. <laughs> it's true. And we have a go around for Luke Strandlin. Didn't like that one. Interesting because it didn't seem like it was that unstable of an approach from my view. Uh, you, but we want to encourage our competitors always to go around if it's not safe or something's feeling wrong. They can go around just like when you fly yourself. You can always go around as long as you've got an engine that's turning and burning. So we encourage that sort of, uh, sort of safe behavior. So if I were flying in this competition, every time I realized I was going to land past the line, could I, could I keep going around until I finally dial it in? 
I think there's a I think there's a realm of reasonableness that needs to apply to that sort of thing. <laughs> Jacob Turek says, "Let's go, John." Nice. There's John on the line, heavy on those brakes. You're going to see that elevator. Let's do a little bit of airplane 101. When you look at an airplane, the controls on the back, the vertical one is the rudder, and that's what controls the side to side. We call it yaw. The control, the horizontal control connected to the stabilizer is called the elevator. And it's called the elevator because it makes you go up and down. Uh, it's, it's, it controls your pitch. And so what you'll hear me say a lot during a stoke competition, I joke a lot that I, I say, stick full back, full on the brakes, uh, like a hundred times each competition. But you're gonna, t that stick being full back pitches the nose up. And when you're landing in a tailwheel, tailwheel aircraft, it keeps your tailwheel down so you can be heavier on the brakes, and it also provides aerodynamic braking, a little more drag to help slow the plane down with the air. So that's why we say that. While we're doing Airplane 101, the other thing to look at, you'll hear us talk a lot about, are flaps. And flaps on airplanes that have them, most of the airplanes competing today do, are the inboard control surfaces on the wings, typically, and they increase drag and lift. How am I doing, commercial pilot? Am I explaining this uh, correctly? You know a lot more about airplanes than you I do. You sound just like a flight instructor, man. All right, cool. I'll take it. I'll take that win. So, <laughs> so here's Luke now. The <laughs> flaps are the controls that are on the inside that are down. And that felt early. It did feel early. Looking for the call. Call the scratch. Scratch. Let's watch it on the replay here. Yeah, you can see the dust get kicked up just before the line there. So that's a scratch. It was a real bummer for Luke because that run does not count now. In. Let's look at the standings after this first run. Brandon Korn in the biggest airplane with the shortest distance. A combined score of 392 feet. In second place, John McArdle in the mall with 497. Jeff Abrams in Piperzilla, that Piper Cherokee with a combined score of 628 feet. And currently sitting in fourth with a DQ is Luke Strandlin. And that's interesting, right? Because technically Luke's plane should on paper outperform Piper Zilla. It should outperform Jeff Abrams, no question. Uh, but he's got to actually put it down after the line to make that happen. So that's where we're at right now, heading into the second run. Any initial reactions, Brian, as you've been, this is your first time kind of calling a show like this with the heavies? Um, I wouldn't expected Luke or or the mall to probably perform. I'm very surprised by this this giant heavy Cessna. It's funny we call them giant planes. People who don't uh, spend a lot of time around GA aircraft probably think these are small, but that's a beast right there. Uh. Yeah, an absolutely huge aircraft, known as the Stationair, sometimes marketed as the Super Skywagon or the Super Skylane. Uh, <laughs> Let's look at the stats on this thing as he gets on the roll. Wow. Hold it off just about right. It looks like 178 or so as I look at the judges marking it. This is an, that is an airplane that can hold six people, wingspan of 36 feet, and a max takeoff weight of 3,600 pounds. <laughs> the little bonkers. Jeff Abrams now at the line. Good takeoff for him. The big thing that the Cherokee gives people, you wouldn't think the Cherokee would be competitive, but those manual flaps, those manual Johnson bar flaps, let him pop the flaps out to get a little bounce of lift, a little burst of lift into the air now looking to get on the board it's luke strandlin in this rebel again just a little early so what you hear me say folks is if it's if i'm saying oh he pulled a little bit early what's happening is the tail is coming up 
and the, air, the pilot is trying to get the aircraft to flying speed, and in the tailwheel aircraft, you can actually yank back and kind of get the airplane to jump into the air while it's still in something called ground effect. I won't be a flight instructor and try to explain that right now. You get a little extra lift when you're low to the ground. I guess I just did. Uh, <laughs> if you time it too soon, the airplane won't fly. It'll still stay on the ground. That was pretty close. That was pretty close for John McArdle there in terms of timing. If you see, you'll, you'll know it when you see it, even if you're new to these events. If someone pulls back and the plane pops right off, they timed it just right. And now low and to your left, Brandon Korn calls his 205 Black Betty. <laughs> which I guess means I need to say Bamba Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> He's good over the line. I could not, I can't, I'm always blown away by that. I'm always, blown. also I'm enjoying Brian just trying to make you laugh. That's my new goal. I'm trying to make one of the funniest, <laughs> the funniest pilots on the internet, trying to make him laugh <laughs> today is my new Thank challenge. You. <clears throat> All right, so here's your favorite of this class, Brian. Jeff Abrams in the Cherokee. Yeah, I just want to see an underdog pull it off. And plus, you don't see a lot of low-wing stole planes. And I, I got to go think about this uh, because you would think with the advantage of ground effect, you, you would actually see more. But So I, I got to go do some mental math. Was that an MU-2 that just landed in the background? Yeah, there are a couple stationed here at, at wow. Music City. They do, I guess, they do medical flights is what I was told last night. So, yeah, sorry, folks. We're nerding out because the airplane that landed <laughs> just behind it is a, a kind of a rare, fair to say, a rarer airplane. I'd say so. Uh, I don't come across them very often, but when you see them, you stop because they're, 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 they're loud. And he's looking good. That one got some applause in the crowd. Very gentle. He's got to get it down and stopped now. And everyone, as you are hanging in the crowd, you've got your cell phone out. If you want to follow along, there's a couple things you can do. One, go to nationalstole.com. You can actually see the unofficial results as the scores are populated, which is really, really cool. And then two, you can go to nationalstole.com slash vote and vote for your favorite pilot. So I think I would maybe vote for John McArdle because he looks so good. Ooh, that was good. It was a good one. And that, uh, I don't even know where they're going to go. That We've got it on the drone camera, that Mitsubishi <laughs> taxiing onto the ramp. But we've got it all blocked off with all our airplanes. They're marshalling them in. Yeah, they're loud, and they fly, I think, with spoilers? Yeah, they do. I don't think they have traditional ailerons. So we haven't talked about ailerons yet, but just to fill people in on that, those are the control surfaces at the edge of the wings that traditionally control roll. That's what pilots will use to bank the aircraft left and right in conjunction with the rudder at the back of the aircraft. Airplanes like that, uh, it's MU-2, right? The MU-2, the, those are... Yep. Those fly by spoiling lift. They roll by spoiling lift with spoilers, which is a different type of thing, and you can Google that. One interesting thing, I was only a few years ago, I was gonna, I was today years old, but it was actually a few years old, a few years ago, when I learned that the F-14 Tomcat uses spoilers to roll. You look suspicious. I, I would've thought for sure they had ailerons. I, I feel like, I don't know, now someone, I got to fact check myself here. Well, I'm gonna, the, I got to Google over here. <laughs> I 
I'm hearing in my ear that maybe it was spoilerons, which sounds even more confusing. It does. Ailerons are not, I'm reading on Wikipedia right now, F-14 Tomcat, ailerons are not fitted with roll control being provided by wing-mounted spoilers and differential operation of tailerons. Look at that short takeoff. Well, we're nerding our about wow. F-14s. A 205 just took off at like 140 feet. That was <laughs> bonkers. That may be his best takeoff yet. For, yeah, 138 foot takeoff for Brandon Corn. Wow. That is bonkers. I'm hearing in my ear that that may have been Brandon Corn's shortest ever takeoff in competition. Yeah, it's hard to tell the distances looking at the screen, but that was uh, significantly shorter looking than the other ones. Here comes Luke Strandlin now. He was on the board. His best takeoff, 272. That one looks like it may be about the same. When the airplane is just off the grass like that, it's hard to tell where the wheels leave the ground. John McArdle now in the mall for his third run of the touring class. Pouring on the coal, giving it the beans, whatever you want to call it. The tail's going to spring up. There it is. <laughs> Taking a bite, and it's perfect. That was perfect and clean. That was short. Did you see him throw those flaps down in court and pulling that tail down all, all in one maneuver? That was sweet. It's like, how do they even have enough <laughs> arms and legs to do that? <laughs> 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 ceases to amaze me. Okay, going into the third round, Brandon Korn, 383 feet. John McCardle, 497. Jeff Abrams in third, 595. And Luke Strandlin in the Super Rebel, 638. Here's Brandon Korn now. Flaps, just, we call him barn doors sometimes. Barn door, it's down. Holding it off right on the line. Oh, nailed it. That was beautiful. That was. It looked like he nailed it from where I'm sitting. Aviator oh. show in the chat saying the sound of Brandon's 205 is so awesome live oh. in person. You are absolutely right. I love that we've got people watching and watching. <laughs> <laughs> He's going a little fast. Yeah, you're right, Brian. A little fast, carrying a little bit of energy. Gave up about 70 feet or so before touching down. Well, He's correct me if I'm wrong, but did he, did he land without flaps? I did not notice. You may Unless right. he retracted them right after he touched down. It looked like he, it looked like he didn't have flaps down. Jeff Abrams, a 50-year age. Slipping 50, it in. Yeah, okay, a little slip it like you mean it happening here. Uh, <laughs> John Davison says, great to hear your respect of the MU2 on the tarmac. That's right, John. We love that thing. Uh, I was going to say about Jeff Abrams, 58 years of flying experience, three different airlines, including UPS for the final 25, right on the line. It got the checkered flag from Lexi. Was that enough to get back into third place? No, stay in second place. Wrong airplane. We're watching the replay. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, so hard to tell. I wonder what the judges are going to say. On the replay, you can see it on the screen. There is dust before the line. I'm curious if they will call that a scratch upon video review. Yep, called scratch on that one. Oh, some, some anger in the crowd from that one. <laughs> There's a couple people that were like, what? No, it was right. The dust of the main wheel, the left main had kicked up some dust right before the line on the, on the replay. Here we go now. 
with the mall. That looks good. That looked good. Get it stopped. Get it stopped. There we go. John McArdle's newly licensed pilot. So he had one year of flying experience. The guy you just saw land there. Uh, he's got about 100 flight hours in the last year in that mall. So this is someone who's basically just started flying and is already flying on a competitive level. Here they go, taxing by you folks. If you're here at Music City Executive, you got to cheer for them. They can hear you. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Abrams got that little porthole for his arm. <laughs> can wave at you. <laughs> and let's look at the standings going into the fourth run. It's the final lap. Brandon Korn with a combined score in first place, 323 feet. John McArdle, 495. Jeff Abrams, 595. That's a big gap. That's a big gap. And then behind him, not too far away, Luke Strandland. So the big thing we've got to see going into this round now is Luke Strandland has got to try to unseat Jeff Abrams in the Cherokee. Brandon sitting pretty good. It's going to be hard for John McArdle to, to sneak up on him. All those distances, it's exponential, right? The shorter, the harder. We go into the touring class season standings before this event as Brandon Korn gets ready to launch. Digging wow. it a little early, but he's off sub 200. Brandon Korn currently in the season first place with 126 points. Jeff Abrams in fourth place for the season with 38 points. Luke Strandland in fifth place in the season with 18 points. So Brandon Korn pretty healthily in front of everyone that he's competing with today for the season's standings. <laughs> this is such edge of your seat stuff. They need to have like Monday night stole competitions. I could watch this forever. <laughs> Okay, Luke Strandland now, if he can get it stopped a bit shorter, again, that's a really heavy airplane, he could easily pop into third. Still pulling just a little early, that left main dragging on the grass just a little bit longer. John McArdle now in the mall. 29 inch tires. What size are the tires on your uh, Comanche? Oh, there's a book that has that in it. I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're certainly <laughs> probably the size of his tailwheel. <laughs> oh, a little bit of a bounce. A so it's gonna, yeah, that's a bummer. He's getting more aggressive though, right? Because he knows he's got a, he's got some ground to cover yeah. to kick. Caught up with Brandon Corn. Uh, want to just take again want to mention a few sponsors again during this touring class Hartzell Propeller sponsor of the class we really appreciate their help Aero LEDs Lift Aviation and TriGreen which I believe TriGreen is a John Deere provider here in Tennessee so we thank all of them Brandon Corn over the line it's good just tearing up the grass around 226 to no a little bit less than that we'll see let's walk all right i'm looking for flaps this round because last time i thought it looked like a no flap landing i want to see if he's got him down maybe he pulls him up right when he touches The arrow LEDs on his wings. Let's watch those flaps. Yep. 
He's, yeah, he's dumping him right, right as soon as he touches down. And what that does, folks, is we talked about the drag and the lift. Well, the less lift your wing is making, the more weight is on the wheels, which makes your brakes more effective. So pilots are going to get rid of those flaps to dump that lift and make their braking more effective as soon as they touch down. It's a lot of workload for the pilots. There's a lot of controls they need to touch to do that. Last night, uh, I was talking to one of our competitors, uh, there's Luke Strandlin now. Okay, very comfortable. Really locked up on the wheels. He's got to keep that tail down. And he's doing that balancing act of the tail between the braking, getting it stopped. That's a heavy airplane to stop. Um, Jeff Daly last night was talking about how he would love an airplane that you could keep the flaps down to keep that drag. But then if you could activate spoilers, so that you could actually get like another, basically another air brake out to help slow the airplane down. That's something you would see in some of the experimental classes later today. You wouldn't be able to do that in the aircraft we're seeing here in the touring class because they're all, uh, all, well, I guess the Murphy, you could do something like that. These are all certificated airplanes otherwise, which means the FAA is very specific about what you can and cannot do to them. Hard to tell on video, but it looked like he just made it. Okay, so that'll be the fourth and final run of the touring class here at Music City Stoll. Let's give another round of applause for all our touring class competitors, the heavies. It was so great to watch, and uh, we've got Stefano Coletto from Italy saying, hello, guys. Greetings from Italy. Hello, Stefano. Greetings from Tennessee. <laughs> Brandon's happy. He's doing a little bit of a wheelie there for us in front. And Black Betty. Technically gray, gray Betty. It's not. <laughs> Less popular song. <laughs> medium gray betty uh, <laughs> there goes jeff abrams let's look at the unofficial standings as we exit this class brandon corn with 323 john mccardle with 495 jeff abrams holding on to third place you never can count out piper zilla 595 and Luke Strandlin in that 2009 Murphy Super Rebel with a combined score of 638. And I want to put that in perspective, folks. Uh, I won't speak for you, Brian, but for me, I cannot probably take off or land just, just one or the other in my Cessna 172 uh, with, in, in any of those distances. No, on my commercial check ride, I had to calculate my takeoff and landing distance. And I think the takeoff distance I calculated for that particular day was just under 1,500 feet. So by comparison, these guys are getting up quick. You know, Brian, one of the things that I love about National Stoll is how exciting and, and accessible it makes aviation feel. I'm wondering as we get ready for our next class, if you could talk a little bit about what aviation has done for you. I'm getting deep. I'm getting heavy right away. Uh, what, what, what is, how has aviation changed your life now that you've been, I mean, you're pursuing a commercial certificate. You just finished that. You're going to looking to become a professional pilot. Like what's that journey been like for you? I mean, I've, I've never been a drug addict, but I, that's, I feel like I, I, I started dabbling in aviation and quickly it just took over my life. Um, you know, I, I, I've always loved airplanes and, uh, about 10, oh, about 12 years ago, I took a discovery flight and now it's eat, sleep and breathe planes. You know, if, if you guys come to my area and do this whole thing, I go out and watch it. Um, we have the airplane and coffee stuff that tra travels around with us. So it's like, it's almost like any excuse to get some more airplane, you know, I, you know, I, I do it. So that's the only thing I can, can uh, equate it to is, is, is a vice. Like it starts off as just something like, oh, I'm going to go try to get my pilot's license. And now it's the only thing I want to do. Uh, I think it costs more <laughs> than, than a lot of vices out there. But it, it just for me, it, it really has just taken over and become very much a part of, of who I am and what I do and what I want to do. 
I have more questions in the follow, but let, I want to take a quick break from that conversation and go over to Reese Dakan, who's uh, plain side with Brandon Corn, to get a little debrief. Looks like we might be having some technical issues there with Reese. Cannot hear him yet, but we'll get that sorted out. Uh, Brian, the, the question I was going to ask you next was, what advice would you have for someone who wants to get involved in aviation? If people are watching this today, getting excited about it, wanting to get involved, what advice would you give them? Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's No, um, I think the best thing you can do is go to an airport and uh, see if you can find a, a flight school that will give you a discovery flight. Um, those are usually like a, a fit, relatively inexpensive flight where they let you do the takeoff and fly around and kind of determine if it's something you're really interested in doing because you, you may see planes flying around and, and be interested in it and then you get in there and realize okay this is this is kind of hot and kind of bumpy and there's some quirks and it's loud and it's uh, maybe it's not for you but the discovery flight I think is, is the number one step um, and I also feel like most people take the discovery flight and get hooked anyway so that's that's really step one and then step two there's you know medical and then and ground school and all that but if, if you take a discovery flight that that's step one and they'll they'll guide you down the rest of that path if you uh you know if you had to talked about what the hardest part of your journey has been and how you overcame that what would you if i asked you that what would you say um, my own brain. Um, there's a lot of stuff where I build it up. Like the, the, I'll give you a great example. It took me forever to pass the instrument. And a lot of that was just me in my head telling me how hard this was and questioning whether I could do it. And now that I've been instrument rated for two years, I'm like, it's, it's really not any harder than any other rating. I mean, it's, it's a lot of, a little bit more math and a little bit more concentration on stuff. But I, I've got a real bad habit of building things up in my head and kind of becoming my own worst enemy when progressing towards some of these things. But, um, all, all of it, all of the training is fun. Like my commercial training I, I just wrapped up was was a blast. It was some of the funnest training I did, the, the multi-training. So I, I enjoy it. Um, I just have to get it out of the way of my own self, you know, with some of the stuff. Cause, cause okay, maybe, maybe the written tests are hard. <laughs> studying for those and knowing that some of that information may or may not be really necessary long-term, but you got to learn it even though it, it, you don't really need it, maybe. Um, but it's more fun than hard, all of it. Yeah, I feel like my journey was one of, of you know, if it was easy, anyone can do it. But I do, I do believe in the end, anybody can do it. It sounds like now we may have Reese ready to go uh, plain side again with Brandon Corn. So I'm going to try to toss it over to you, Reese. Uh, can, can you guys hear me down there uh, in the pit? Five seconds. All right, here we are with Brandon Corn, your touring championship. Basically, no one can catch up with you. You got one competition left. This 205 sounded so mean out there. How was it? Man, it was great. We've been tuning on this thing all week. We had a few setbacks, and uh, we came out here and put down some solid runs. It was great. The crowd is awesome here. Oh, wow. Give it up to the fans out here, local at Gallatin. And I would say 138. That's your best of the season. Did you just get lucky or what? Oh, the wind was in my favor, and everything just went right. You got some fans back at home you want to thank? Uh, my wife's home, my son, my do my two daughters, everybody's watching online. My mom's been watching. This competitor has made it to every tour this season. It takes a lot to be out here. So big shout out to the families back at home and the people that keep you on the road. What are your what are your sponsors that you'd like to thank? Uh, McFarland helps us out. We got Champion Spark Plugs, Tactical Hearing, um, and then our shop, Corn Collision Center, is a major supporter. <laughs> Well, congratu congratulations for a flawless season this year. And back to you, Ryan. Thanks so much, Reese, for that. Thanks to Brandon Korn, and congratulations to him for uh, all the hard work he's been putting in this season to just, yeah, like that plane, that plane is moving around. At certain points, if I'm not mistaken, Brandon was flying that plane to the next competition site, leaving it there, moving to the next place, you know, flying home commercially, all that stuff. Uh, just really great to see. We are getting ready to open up to the rookie class. Uh, Brian, I think the gauntlet has been dropped. The next time we are in Texas, uh, you got to come out and participate in the rookie class here. <laughs> oh, man. I don't. I, <laughs> it may just be a touch and go, and I fly away out of embarrassment. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we These are getting ready. Plane's to... got uh, a lot on me. <laughs> so let's see how the rookie class goes. Here we go. They're taxing up right now in a 1959 Cessna 182 Bravo model. That's this white with red stripes one taxing towards you right now. One of your hometown competitors from Gallatin, Tennessee. It's James Abbott. Give a round of applause. Retired military helicopter pilot, 25 years of service, 3,400 turbine helicopter hours. That's awesome for James Abbott. Next up, taxiing down the line. Here we come, the next competitor in the rookie class, flying November 2631, uh, whoop, 2613 Delta. It's Chase Bentley in a 1952 Cessna 170 from Dry Ridge, Kentucky. Let's give him a round of applause, everybody, in the rookie class, Chase Bentley. Then next up in another mall. This time it's white and blue. 1977 Mall M5 from Macedonia, Illinois. Wherever that is. <laughs> it's Justin. Buckholder, Burkholder, Justin Burkholder. Sorry, Justin. He's going to watch this later. And you mispronounced my name. I'm sorry, Justin. Justin Burkholder, everybody. Round of applause. Contract pilot, 1,200 hours of flight time, 100 hours of flight time in the mall. And last but not least, in the Stinson 108 from North Carolina, it's Daniel Donahue. So the rookie class, uh, we're, we'll talk about a little bit in a, in a second, Brian. It's a thing where you and I could go play in a low, a low stress environment, get a lot of advice from our older, uh, more experienced pilots who've been in the circuit a little bit longer. And one of those folks is standing by for another interview with Reese Dockhand. It's Jeff Abrams and Piper Zilla. The crowd's favorite. Piper Zilla, let's talk about it. Sure, I'm Jeff Abrams from Ocala, Florida. This airplane is my 1965 Piper Cherokee 180. Uh, we call it Piper Zilla, the beast from the southeast. Uh, it's got a few modifications done to it, but it's kind of stock, and uh, it does pretty good in the uh, Stoll Arena. So we have a lot of fun flying it here. This is a great contest, great event. Yeah, it's a very comfortable, long cross-country flying plane, but all the fans out here, if they want to get into aviation, if they're a young kid and they're inspired by flight, where can they get started? Well, one program I'm real active in, I've flown 562 kids to date. I'll be flying some next weekend also at three different airports. Uh, it's called the Young Eagles. And uh, ages 8 to 18, I'm sorry, 8 to 17 uh, are eligible to fly. You go out to the airport, look on their website for uh, Young Eagles, I think it's .org, and uh, maybe .com, but .org, I believe. And uh, anyway, sign up at a nearby event, cost uh, the Young Eagle person nothing. Uh, you go out there, they give you a little bit of ground school training, how an airplane works and uh, flight controls, everything else. Typically, your pilot will spend a little time with you showing you the airplane, and then you go for a ride. And uh, in many cases, you actually get to handle the controls, the young person, depending on the type of aircraft and the uh, pilot you're flying with. It's a great program. Well, thanks for taking so many of our youth under your wings, literally, uh -huh. and we'll have it right back to you, Ryan. Pretty good. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Reese. Thanks to Jeff Abrams for that interview. And uh, man, yeah, it's so fun to watch him fly. Third place for him today. Uh, Brian, he was your favorite. What, how are you feeling about uh, your new your new muse, your new inspiration uh, there? <laughs> it, uh, it makes me think there's a chance I could do one of these, but I don't, I don't have a skill set, but I do like to see. It, it, it's interesting to see what I consider just a typical general aviation airplane amongst what clearly look like a bunch of stole aircraft. So uh, I, I just think it's awesome. It's time for the rookie class now, presented by Sarasota Avionics and Maintenance. Again, here's that lineup. James Abbott in the Cessna 182 Bravo. Chase Bentley in a Cessna 170. Justin Burkholder in a Mall M5. And Daniel Donahue going to be fourth in the lineup in that 1947 Stinson 108 coming all the way from North Carolina. What's exciting about these airplanes, and, and Brian, you were kind of hinting at it just a second ago, a lot of these airplanes, the Cherokee 180 that we just saw, or the airplanes that we're seeing now in this rookie class, the 182, the 170, uh, these are airplanes that are fairly accessible and they are very similar to planes that you may train in. So our goal today, well, one of my personal goals today is that at least a handful of you in the crowd decide that this could be a thing that you could do. And we want to support you in that. And part of show is showing you this is the kind of stuff that you would fly in the very beginning. These, maybe not a tail dragger 170, but something like a 172 or a little bit bigger, this 182. These are airplanes that you would fly in your training that can be accessible can be part of your life if you choose and uh, we just want you all to get inspired to get pumped about it the way we're all inspired and pumped about it so the rookie class again a class where people can come for the first time low impact low stress there's james abbott now very nice very nice takeoff for james abbott Taxing up to the line now, Chase Bentley in that beautiful Cessna 170. This thing really shines. Once you win the rookie class, one of these four pilots, you're effectively banned from the rookie class after that. You, you graduate out. You can only win it once. And then you have to compete with everybody else. Getting that tail up. Getting ready to take a bite. Ooh, nice takeoff for a rookie there. Chase Bentley really showing us how it's done. He's been taking notes in practice yesterday, I'd suspect. Justin yeah, these Bur guys don't look like rookies. Well, there's still time. <laughs> <laughs> We've only seen half of it. Here goes Justin Burkholder now. Looking good. Well timed. You're right. Absolutely. Uh, that's someone who mainly flies a Cirrus Vision jet, <laughs> so that's a little wow. different for him. Dan Donahue. You compete in that? Yeah, that would be wacky. <laughs> someone actually said. Let me pull this up in uh, chat here. There goes Dan Donahue in the Stinson. Mr. Big Pipes wonders, could a Cirrus deploy caps for a stole landing? And I, I guess the answer is once. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be very expensive. Was that like a $60,000 win? Uh, you know, it depends. Uh, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> you actually fly a Cirrus sometimes, Brian. Is, is that something that you you've ever just wanted to do just to get a good parking spot? Um, I, I used to joke that if I was a, yeah, I do fly serious sometimes, but if, uh, if I ever gave up flying, my last thing I would ever do was just, uh, pull the caps, uh, over a Bravo shelf and come down through it. But <laughs> no, it's only for emergencies. By the way, caps is a, it's a ballistic parachute for that takes the entire airframe down under the parachutes. If you're wondering what caps is, that's what we're talking about. I don't remember what the acronym stands for. Cirrus Airframe Parachute System. Nice landing nice. for Chase there. Yeah. Oh, keep that tail down. All right. 
sub 200 foot landing. Now these airplanes, here's the one of the challenges of the rookie class is that we've got airplanes of all sizes competing against each other. Uh, but you're going to start to see some shorter distances with these lighter airplanes like the 170. Next up, another mall. We saw it in the touring class. Justin hoping to graduate from rookie and compete against John McArdle soon. Carrying, coming in a little hot. A lot of energy to dissipate. So obviously speed is a, a thing we need to pay attention to with flying. You can't, if you run out of speed, you run out of lift and that means you, you don't fly anymore. The pilots need to well, I, go ahead, Brian. I'm seeing two techniques here. One is what I, what I would just describe. I saw as him dragging it in behind the power curve. I've seen a couple of people doing that where they're coming in at a very shallow and they with, with more speed. And then you see the, the 205 before, for instance, which seems to be coming down at a steeper um, angle. And I feel like the guys coming down at the steeper angle hit the, um, the line without going past it as much. That one's too close to call for Dan Donahue. We're going to have to go to the replay. That tail in just the right spot. Oh. Oh, it's a scratch. We can see the dust being kicked up there just like maybe a foot short, a foot short, but otherwise textbook, like a textbook landing. Watching Dan Donahue yesterday, uh, he's been flying for about seven years. He's got about 350 hours of flight time. That Stinson, you know, a vintage airplane, right? Built in 1947. After practice was over yesterday, he went out and put in, I don't know, maybe another hour of just going up and down the runway on the main wheels trying to really dial in that sight picture and that directional control and brian you're you're absolutely right these are the kind of two techniques and what's interesting is i think later in the day you'll see more people doing that behind the power curve thing more effectively i do think it really depends on obviously pilot skill but two certain aircraft in certain conditions are good for that. There's, I think there's more, not risk from a safety perspective, but risk from a scoring perspective to that. Like you, you identified that if you're low, kind of hanging it off the prop, uh, you know, if you lose if you lose the wind, you're going to drop just onto the ground. Not a lot to deal with in terms of safety, but it's definitely a, a riskier approach in terms of consistency compared to what we see Brandon Corn do, where he's doing that kind of standard steeper approach. Mm -hmm. By the way, we got to celebrate our women aviators here in Nashville. Check out the Nashville 99s. Those, they're our line judges right now, all the women aviators here in Nashville. Just really great organization, super helpful. They've been hosting us and taking care of us. Uh, but all these amazing pilots and aviation enthusiasts, go to Nashville99s.org, Nashville 99s. Dot org if you want to join if you're in the Nashville area. Big shout out to them for all the work they've been doing, volunteering and making us uh, just feel so welcome in Gallatin. I talked to the mayor of, of Gallatin yesterday and she said, you know, the one thing I hope you notice is our hospitality here in Gallatin and that has been been so true. And that takeoff, by the way, whew, that was a good one just then. Chase Bentley. Now, here's Justin Burkholder in the mall. And we're noticing a little, Brian, I don't know if you can see on your cameras, but we're getting a little bit of crosswind now from the right. Oh. <laughs> Hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Dan Donahue now wanting to get on the board this run. That last approach was 
nearly perfect, just to scratch that uh, DQ'd him on that run. And so what you'll see, folks, is as we get more crosswind, and when I talk about crosswind, it's the, the wind is no longer going right down the runway. The pilots actually have to adjust their control inputs because the wind is coming from, in this case, their right at your backs a little bit in the crowd. Wind this minimum is not necessarily going to make a big difference in terms of, of challenge but it is a little bit, it's something to adjust for. But what you'll see is that the pilots will shift to the left side of the runway because they've got that crosswind from the right. And so if they can cheat a little bit to the left, they can get a little bit of more wind on the nose. Very high now, coming over the line. Gave up about 125 feet. Got the flaps out though. That's James Abbott, who's currently in second place, is 641 feet in that 182. Here's that lower approach that Brian was talking yeah, about. Very now. shallow. Chase Bentley in the 1952 Cessna 170. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Keep those, keep it, up, 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 whoo, all right, <laughs> stop short. So, I mean, what you're hearing us react to is that you can tell when the tail starts to come up, the pilot's got to modulate off those brakes to keep the tail from going all the way over. And they're counteracting that with full elevator control again to keep that tail down. It gets, it's a balancing act. It's definitely a balancing act, and it can be a little exciting, especially when we don't have a ton of wind over the nose of the aircraft. Yeah. Who are you rooting for in this class? They're rookies. I'm rooting for all of them. I love a good underdog story. <laughs> Uh, I like Stinson's. I don't know anything about the pilots, but I really like Stinson's. So I'm hopeful uh, here. Come on. Really well over the line for your Stinson yeah. there. Really good. Again. So I got a question you may you may know the answer to, Ryan. Uh, with respect to, to fuel, is there a rule of thumb? Because obviously taking off, you want to be as light as possible. Landing weight probably helps. Do these guys top off their tanks and keep their planes heavy, or do they do like a, whatever the legal minimum is? What, what do, you, do you know? No, you're absolutely right. They are, they're definitely, especially in the more competitive classes, a lot of the pilots will tailor the fuel load to the CG they want. So Interesting. Typically as light as possible, but sometimes you'll see them adding a little fuel or removing a little fuel to match the CG, particularly in the tailwheel aircraft. Right? If they can get the CG figured out to help them have a higher angle of attack and folks in the crowd, angle of attack is uh, you know, the, the incidence of the air against the wing. You'll see that when we talk about like dragging it in uh, and the power curve is another kind of phrase that Brian and I talked about. We'll try to call that out to you as it happens, but weight is a very big thing in aviation where weight goes because it's all a balancing act in the air and so a pilot might want to tune the weight distribution with fuel. Uh, want to chat about a couple of our sponsors again. Uh, the rookie class brought to you by Sarasota Avionics. Uh, we've got a bunch of great sponsors that help bring this together. Factory 10 Aerospace Composites. Rugged Radios. Brian, you know a little bit about Rugged Radios. I have a pair sitting over here right by me. I've got two pair in my plane. So Rugged Radios, we appreciate their support with Aviation Radios. They actually provide all of the radios for the competition as well for our people to talk to each other. And then a lo local sponsor, Brower Online. Check out Brower Online as well. We appreciate their support. That's just a good looking airplane, man.
So that pilot has 300 hours of fixed wing single engine land experience in that, uh, currently flying that 182. Holds commercial instrument rotor and CF double I ratings along with private pilot for single engine land and is typed in an SK-64, an SK-65, and the MI-8 slash 17, so some Russian helicopters as well. In the 170 now, Chase Bentley. Woo! Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Justin Burkholder in the Mall M5. That's another plane you could put a moose in the back of, I think, if you could, if you could make it fit, if you could cut it up right. <laughs> and the mustard-colored Stinson on the line. Dan Donahue. He's got the airplane outfitted with a climb prop. He's got 150 horsepower on the nose. Tail coming up. Yanking it down a little early. Oh, when you yank it down early, you get extra drag. And the plane has to fight through it. And you get stuck to the ground is what it feels like, I'm told. All right, so which of these planes are you rooting for, Brian? I think I am rooting for Chase Bentley in the 170 because that's the closest to what I fly at home in the 172. And it's, it's very pretty. Both the Cessnas are very pretty. And I guess that matters. <laughs> I once bought a plane because I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> okay, so that's a big improvement there. We gave up a lot less in terms of accuracy for James Abbott that time and folks you gotta cheer every time James Abbott comes around you guys gotta just cheer super loud because he's one of your local boys here from Gallatin you gotta give him that hometown advantage Chase Bentley now low and to your left doing that lower approach you're gonna see the nose come up hanging it on the prop a little bit oh right on the line early I think it was early, oh, Ryan. Oh, 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 whoo, okay. <sighs> Chase is making my heart beat. <laughs> Let's look. It's under review. Oh, it's too short. Yes. You were right. You're good. Brian, you should come in and uh, be one of our line judges. You're really good at calling this. And then look at the keep of the well, tail. Also, <laughs> Even in replay, my monitor. stressful. <laughs> <laughs> all right that one's oh go ahead brian sorry I, I, thank you i thank you i think you might have been early this one too i think so that looks good i think looks right on it call stands after review round of applause for that one <laughs> Justin Burkholder, <laughs> wow. Dan Donahue now uh, with a scratch. Wow, okay, things are getting pumped up here in the rookie class. Lots of scratches that round. Sometimes scratches can be an indication that the conditions have changed. I'm not sure if that's true in this case. Right now, going into our fourth run, Chase Bentley with a combined score of 469. Dan, D oh, it's, uh, it's, we're, it's us against each other, Brian. My guy's in first place. Your guy's in second place. Dan Donahue with 579 in the Stinson. Justin Burkholder in third place in the Mall M5. And James Abbott bringing up the rear in fourth place of the rookie class with 641. All of these, though, 
super respectable scores, especially for people that haven't done this before. Right now, wind, two knots at 178, 178 degrees. And our humidity, thankfully, is considerably lower than yesterday. It was brutal here. Our density altitude only, in quotes, uh, 1,901 versus, I think, close to 2,900 foot density altitude yesterday. How's that air conditioning so remind in your me, Ryan, house? Oh, it's, it's, yeah. You know what? We're coming off 110 degree weeks. It's fantastic here. Um, r remind me, when someone scratches, does that deduct from their overall score at all, or is it just not even a part of it? So if you scratch, that run doesn't count at all. So, for instance, Dan Donahue has scratched twice. Mm -hmm. So the only time, the only score that he has on the board is, is a good one, uh, 579. But his first and third run just don't count at all. James Abbott now waiting for release. See that elevator go nice okay he's dropping the gauntlet he wants to get back in the mix that may be his shortest takeoff so far his best takeoff was 245 and it was 243 wow in a cessna 182 rookie chase bentley now his best takeoff 240 foot that's the last one you watched Getting that tail up. Pulled it kind of perfectly. Waiting for the score. Yep, 231. So that was Chase Bentley's best run. Okay. Things are getting exciting in the fourth and final run of the rookie class. There goes Justin Burkholder. Ooh, a Whitman tailwind taxiing by on the runway. That's a very rare thing to see. If you've ever been to Oshkosh, EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh, the airport's named after the designer of that aircraft. Dan Donahue on the roll, Stitson 108. Off super short, 250-ish. If Dan Donahue can somewhat dramatically shorten his landing, his takeoffs are competitive with uh, James and Chase. He just needs to shorten up that landing to try to hop into first place. James Abbott now flaps dropped. A little burst Thank of power you. there. Got it over the line. And we just got to break, 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 break. And I think for him, that may be the real challenge. N8Foo says, go James! On social. I think I read that in that person's voice. Chase Bentley now. Oh, Looking good. Oh, Lexi's calling it good, but that's going to be a longer landing for him because he didn't even stop. You got to stop. Always oh, stop. Even if it's not a good one, you got to stop because that helps you enter into our most consistent award. So now, unfortunately, uh, Chase, even though he's currently the lead of the rookie class will not be able to be considered for the most consistent prize at the end of the day. It was good though after review. 
Justin Burkholder now. The that blue flag early. is up. You thought it was a scratch, Brian? I think so. Yeah. Yep. Lexi pulled the blue flag out for scratch. Dan Donahue now holding it over. Good. Got that tailwheel down. Gets those flaps out maybe a little bit later than he wanted to. But nice and short in the stints. And think about that airplane. It's literally called the station wagon. Hauling your family around back in the 1940s. He went in one of those. Pulled that was an down. interesting technique. It looked like he had his tailwheel down. Uh, far before the line, just using it, I guess, to get some drag. We talked a little about how hard that is. Let's look at the Sarasota Avionics and maintenance results for here at Music City Stolen. The rookie class, unofficial results. Yeah. Chase Bentley now, best run, 469. Dan Donahue with 515. Tightening it up. Tightening it up. Tightening it up there. James Abbott, 588. And Justin Burkholder in the mall with 606 combined. That's your rookie class here at Music City Stoll in Gallatin, Tennessee. Now we need to take a moment to thank all of our sponsors this season that make National Stoll possible. First, we have to say thank you to Lad Gardner Insurance. Legend Aircraft. Thank you to them. Hartzell Propeller. What? Sarasota Avionics. USA Trailers Direct.com. Duke Propeller. Lift Aviation USA. AirTech Coatings. Factory 10 Aerospace Composites. Aero LED, Rugged Radios, FlightHelmet.com, Flight Outfitters, Committee Coffee, Avi Nation, and Flying Eyes Optics. So thank you very much to those annual sponsors. Now we're going to go to a little package, a little package. We had the opportunity to chat with the mayor of Gallatin, and I'd love to talk... <laughs> Uh, show you that right now, Mayor Paige Brown from the city of Gallatin. Hello and welcome to Gallatin. I'm Paige Brown, I'm the mayor of the city, and I'm honored to have the opportunity to welcome you all to our city. I hope you find it very welcoming. I hope you have a chance to visit some of our wonderful shops and restaurants and our historic downtown square. We're so glad Stoll's here. We hope you'll come back again. We'll welcome you anytime. You all have a great weekend. I wish you safe and happy flying.
And we are back from some commercials here in beautiful Gallatin, Tennessee. Uh, by the way, I don't know if I've shared this. It's my first time in Tennessee, and it has been awesome. You guys have been great in the crowd. I want to take a moment just to remind you, I don't want to be a dad about it, but you got to drink a ton of water today. You got to put a ton of sunscreen on. It's, we're out in the sun. We are, uh, we're having some heat. We're having some fun. But uh, just make sure to take care of yourself. Uh, we want you to have a great time and, and have a lot of fun. Before we move on to the next class, you see some folks taxiing out in front of us. Thanks for getting excited for that. I just want to take a moment to thank my friend Brian Turner for coming on today. Brian, there you, you see him on the screen there. You joined us remotely uh, from your home and took the time to hang out with us and talk stole. And I just can't thank you so much, my friend. I know you got to head out. Your agent just called and said, whoa, you're past the contracted <laughs> amount of time. Uh, <laughs> But we thank you so much and for joining us. Is, is a 14-year-old girl that wants to get fed. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for that, man. Your passion for aviation is so infectious. And uh, I've just it's, it's a great honor to know you and have you uh, in our corner on all of this. For people who want to find more, learn more about you, where, they can, where can they find you? The uh, best thing to do is just uh, hop on YouTube or Instagram and look up uh, Just Plain Silly. That's where I, I uh, do all my shenanigans and my aviation tomfoolery. <laughs> and Tom tomfoolery is right. Uh, you and I became fast friends because we're both uh, jokesters at heart. And uh, I've, it, yeah, it's just you got to go check out Brian's stuff. He's, as the kids would say, totes hillars. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they say that or not. Brian, dude, thank you so much, man. It's been an honor hanging out with you today, and uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Next time you guys uh, are in my neighborhood doing this, let me know. I'll come out. I want to. I want to be the line judge. That looks like a fun job. Well, uh, in, in Texas in November, early November, uh, we'll check it out. Nationalstole.com. Uh, you guys can get your tickets, get ready. And Brian, I, I, I don't want to. I think I can speak for all of us when I think we'd love to have you uh, come hang out with us. All right, I'll, I'll come out for it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brian. Now, let's go back to the field. Reese Dockhan, standing by. Who do you got there, Reese? We've got your rookie class champion. Talk to me about your history in the stole competitions. Well, I've uh, done a couple of friendlies before and a lot of practice on my home strip. Um, but uh, this is my first with National Stole, and it was an absolute pleasure. Walk me through what was going through your head as you took the line for the first time. Um, honestly, I thought I'd be a little bit more nervous, but uh, honestly, just went out there and flew the airplane and, and uh, just focused on trying to beat my best, and uh, it seemed to work out pretty good. So Let's talk about that airplane. You were really pushing it to the limit there. I saw like, a couple tails get a little high. Yeah, yeah. I have better brakes than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and you got some great uh, fans here. Why don't you introduce them? Yeah, so this is my lovely wife, Alexandra, and my son, Theo, and uh, also want to, uh, I have two other kids at home as well, Viola and Dorian, and uh, my parents are watching, uh, Terry and Jolene, so I just want to thank everybody for their support. It's been awesome. Now, what you guys didn't see off camera was the congratulatory hug. Now, talk about it, having a, a pilot in the competition. How is it nerve-wracking for the family? Uh, I'm just really excited for him. This is something that he's always wanted to do, and I'm really proud that he practiced as much as he does, and he's really dedicated to flying and the sport of stole, and I just it's so exciting to see that he's actually getting to really live his dream. So. That's awesome. What about you? Is um, Dad living his dream? Yeah, I'm happy for him. Um, he's doing his best, and yeah, I'm just happy. Well, just keep doing your best, I guess, this rookie yeah. class, but now you can't be a rookie anymore. You got to move on up. I know. Time to get some upgrades. Back to you, Ryan. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys, for that great interview. Sorry, I'm, I'm stuffing some pizza in my mouth <laughs> here as we're in the booth getting ready for the next class. A lot of great comments, by the way, in social. Uh, first want to say to uh, Justin Tisdale, who you're going to see a little bit later in the sport class. He said, these rookies are killing it. Can't wait to see them in their competitive classes. And Justin Tisdale was someone who was a rookie not too long ago, putting in that work. We'll talk about that more when he flies later this afternoon. I have no idea how to pronounce that because there's numbers in it, but I'm guessing it's stare, store, or something like that. A big shout out to the commentary team. Aw, shucks. We really appreciate you watching and appreciate your support. So, yeah, everyone in chat, if you have any other questions, 
We would love to hear your questions. And again, hope everyone in the crowd is uh, staying hydrated, staying sunscreened, whatever that means, as we get ready for the next class. I want to talk a little bit about how the classes work. Basically, the way the classes are arranged is that they are first and primarily sorted by weight, right? So that touring class we saw at the top of the show, typically aircraft that are 2,300 pounds to 3,600 pounds, those are huge. We are heading into the backcountry class, I believe. And the backcountry class our aircraft from 1321 to 2,300 pounds. But new this season, after a couple seasons of data, the officials started moving some aircraft around but to be more competitive with each other. So we would want to make sure that every class is competitive and fun to watch. And so some aircraft were moved around. So backcountry class typically used to be like Aviat Huskies, things like that. Now we've added into this class the Cessna 170 Bravo model. You're going to see a lot of those today. It is one of the most competitive segments in the series, these Cessna 170 Bravo pilots. We're going to introduce you in it. So uh, quick announcement, sorry, a quick announcement for the folks here in the audience. If you flew in in a transit aircraft, thank you. That's super dope. Don't forget to go buy a wristband. You got to actually buy a wristband uh, if you flew in a transit aircraft. So thank you very much for that, uh, for flying in. Our host did a lot of work to be here and to put this on. And it's a little way for our pilots to give back, to make sure they actually pay their way in, <laughs> which is great. So... Very glad to have everybody here who flew in. I'm envious. I wish my airplane was here. <laughs> By but, the way, who are you? Who is this new voice on the mic? It's just a random voice. My name is Eric Farewell. I'm one of the owners here at National Stoll, and I came into this National Stoll world as an announcer so that I get to be back in my old seat, sitting next to my buddy here, eating his pizza, giving Ryan time to uh, to swallow and hopefully chew. I'm not sure. We won't see any, uh, you know, any choking deaths today. Keeping it friendly, keeping it kid-friendly, guys. Great to be here at beautiful Gallatin, Tennessee. Couldn't ask for better conditions. Maybe a little bit more wind, but honestly, guys, what great performances we've seen from our touring class and from our rookies coming out strong. And one thing I wanted to highlight, and some of you guys may have seen it, was the pilots. A lot of the pilots from the other classes were lined up next to our broadcast trailer, cheering on every takeoff and every landing for those rookie pilots, just showing them how excited they are to be in this, this whole new adventure with them. But guys, look at this beautiful 185 taxiing by. Absolutely gorgeous. And it looks like we're getting ready to kick things off in our backcountry class. We've got one of the most heated possible rivalries in Stoll about to take place right in front of you guys. That is Jeff Pohl and Micah Lindstrom. These two gentlemen have some extra challenge today with Sean joining them as well. Let's jump right in to the introductions. He's still swallowing. There we go. Oh, now he's back. Now I got the pizza <laughs> out of my mouth. Okay, let's introduce this backcountry class for you folks. First, who flew in late last night from Malacca, Minnesota. Let's get him taxiing up to the line in that polished and black Cessna 170, 170 Bravo model. Micah Lindstrom, all the way from Mayaka. He's, he's taking his time here, guys, but they're, uh, they're, he'll be in front of you in a moment. What's really cool about, about Micah is that Micah is actually a young man. He's, I believe, 23 years old. He's owned this airplane for a few years, and he bought it as a young man in not the perfect condition, but he's a heavy equipment operator, and he learned to wrench on the airplane. He had great AMPs and IAs right there alongside, and he got this airplane flying again, and he absolutely loves it. For the young men and women in the audience, he's got some funny stickers on there, and he can hear you clap as you come by. Make sure you put your hands together for Mr. Micah Lindstrom.
as Mike is taxi and by you. We're looking for James Abbott. James Abbott to return to his plane, please. One of our filmmakers, Reese Dockhan, is looking for you. James Abbott, back to your airplane, please. Now, coming up to the line next, it's double zero. Jeff Pohl in the Cessna 170 Bravo. He's getting some cheers in the crowd already. Watching him ag compete against Micah this season has been really exciting. So here he is, everybody, in Dirty Bird, Jeff Pohl. Just a few weeks ago in Pinedale, Mo Pinedale, Wyoming, not Montana, Pinedale, Wyoming, Jeff was finishing the debrief from our practice day and was talking about how, you know, he was really excited that he finally gets to get some more points on the board because Micah wasn't there. Micah heard him, got in his airplane, and nine hours later showed up after midnight. But here in front of you now is Sean Johnson. That's right, Sean Johnson in the 1955 Cessna 170 Bravo. That's this green carbon fiber on white one. He's from Stamping Ground, Kentucky. Called next the Stormtrooper. Next up, coming up to the line, it's the Colonel Matt Peterson in the Intruder. That's a Cessna 172 from Ethel, Louisiana. And Matthew Peterson's the host of Swamp Stole, where we've been the last two years, having a great time down there in Louisiana. It's, uh, it's either been very, very hot or very, very cold, very, very dry or very, very wet. This year we had sleet and mud, and it was an adventure indeed. Matt was our most improved pilot back in 2021, and he is really in a, in a unique position to have a great, great chance against these 170s. So let's look at the lineup now for the Lad Gardner Insurance Backcountry Class. Up in front at the line right now, Micah Lindstrom, 1955 Cessna 170 Bravo. Behind him in double zero, Jeff Pohl, 1955 Cessna 170 Bravo. Guess what? After him, it's Sean Johnson, and you guessed it, a 1955 Cessna 170 Bravo model. I'm sensing a trend. There is a little bit of a trend. And then for this first heat, we've got two heats for the backcountry class, Matt Peterson in the 1957 Cessna 172. And then we'll pick up the competition with a few more backcountry pilots right after this. And really quick from the comments section, Bobby Kerr asks if he can compete even though Lone Star is the championship. If you were to come to Texas and join us, absolutely, Bobby, we welcome all competitors, even if you have not competed with us before, we'd love to have you. Big shout out to John Caldwell joining us as well from Texas. Great to see all these great names. And somebody asked where you can buy the cool National Stole Straw Hats. If you're right here with us in Gallatin, Tennessee, head over to the merch tent. It's a, about halfway between here and the entrance, and it says National Stole on top. We've got event shirts, series shirts, hats, all kinds of stuff. We've already sold out of a few things. And very soon, if you check out our new store opening next week on nationalstole.com, you'll be able to buy them there as well. And with that, guys, we're going to go out into the pits with Reese Dockhan for a very special interview. Now, when we have all the competitors out there, the top dogs are the unlimited. This Carbon Cub is a raging beast out there. Charles, you're a local guy. Talk to us about what you're going to do to take the competition home. Well, you know, the goal today is really just to beat one guy, you know, uh, beat Patrick. Uh, he's got a little bit smaller aircraft, so I'm really hoping that, uh, that I can bring home the gold. It's my first competition, but, uh, you know, I feel like I got the skills to get it done. Um, you know, the, the Sugar and Joe Cookie Co., they really, you know, hooked me up with uh, a couple of air streaks, made, uh, made sure the Carbon Cup is running good, along with SkyTrain and the Plane Co. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be able to take home the gold today. It's definitely a team effort to get these planes performance, performing on the top tier of their levels. The carbon fiber, the weight saving. What are you doing out there? What tire pressures are you running? Oh, man. I'm running about 18, 19. Uh, you know, a little bit lower, but uh, tire pressure is not really where my, my, my secrets come in. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll keep that off camera. But, man, you're going to see some of the top tier pilots coming up. So, stay tuned. Stay hydrated and stay good. We'll see you guys very soon. Go Vols. And we are back. Go Vols, I hear it from here. Guys, this is the moment you've been waiting for as backcountry class comes in. It's going to be wild. Michael Lindstrom taking the line now. He is known for his aggression, and he is not known for his love for taking care of that airplane. Those landings can be wild. Ryan, who do you take for this round? 
Well, I don't know, because Jeff pulls right behind him, and Jeff pulls has been a little frustrated that Micah keeps besting him. I will say I, this. I think that Jeff is at the point right now where the full aggression, every ounce of anger in that five foot six body of his is going to be, I'm just kidding, he's much taller than that, but we're yeah, at least five seven. Here's <laughs> Micah now. Give it the beans. Him. Tails way up there. Inches of prop clearance is that's all he's got. 150. A little a little late for Mike on that one. He pulled a little or a little early, I mean, pulled a little early, but we've got a bunch of rounds to dial it in for him. We do indeed. And just now we're starting to feel a gust come through. It was very calm winds there. If Jeff Pull is able to capitalize on this gust, this will be a huge difference between the scores. That heart sold propeller diving toward the ground a little less aggression wait for the rotation there it is oh dropping the gauntlet between the two not to be undone sean johnson rolling up to the line he was the only one of this trio of 170 bravos that showed up to practice yesterday he was indeed and he is a force to be reckoned with but not as much as the folks from gal Utten who are telling me i'm saying it wrong all over the internet apologies sean on the roll Okay. All right. Things are heating up here in Music City in the backcountry class. Matt <laughs> Peterson now on the line rolling up. The colonel, he has put in time. You talk about someone who's put in time to learn how to fly stole. So passionate about it. And you're right. Did at one point get the most improved award at the end of the season because he's really just putting in that practice putting in the practice that this airplane may be one of the best possible suited for this type of flying. You wouldn't think it, but that tricycle gear can actually give him an advantage. Early pull now. Second rotation gets him off much later than I know he'd want to. But, uh, you know, we've got more, four more rounds or three more rounds of takeoff to see what he can put down. Well, they loop around, Eric. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't even have time to do sponsors because guess who is low and to your left, folk? Folks, it's Micah. I think he landed at like 10 p.m. last night. He's coming in just to drop the gauntlet all over Jeff. Let's see what he does on this first run. Look at that incredible amount of energy into the gear. You notice he drops almost directly vertical down, transferring the energy into the ground instead of into that landing roll just past 125 feet. Really exceptional. Micah is known for that sort of aggressive... <laughs> I don't really care if my airplane tires pop kind of behavior. <laughs> He's showing it right here at Music City Stoll. So first score on the board, Michael Lindstrom. Everyone needs to do an audible gasp after I read, read this number. 290 feet combined. That's the shortest today, and we're, we're going to see shorter. I didn't actually hear it, though. 290 feet combined. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, Jeff Pohl coming in now, hovering in to your left. In double zero, he actually bested Micah's takeoff number by nine feet. He's very high, very aggressive. It's a good landing. Keep it on its keep it on its gear. Don't go over. Yeah. Woo! Guys, we're seeing the weather really play in heavily here. Keep an eye on those flags. We can see that the flags are moving right now, and in a moment they might stop. That little bit of gust might have been the difference between Micah's 125-foot landing and Jeff's 150-plus. Currently separated by 24 feet between the two of them. But guess what? Sean Johnson, who's up next, had the shortest takeoff of this first round with 142 feet. Sean is one to look out for. He's brought his entire family here, and I know he does not want to let them down. Absolutely incredible competitor. He's an airline pilot by day. Stole pilot in the Stormtrooper 170 with some beautiful new graphics on the tail. Different type of drive here. He's bringing it a lot more like Micah. Not quite as much altitude as we saw with Jeff. Gets it across the line. Oh. Ooh, our line judge oh, is not calling what, it. What do you think in the crowd? Because Lexi's saying, I need a review. Thumbs up. Who's going to say thumbs up? That was good. Oh, I see a bunch of thumbs out by the line. Hawaiian shirt. I see you. Look at that. I, th I think it was good on the replay there. The replay shows it just across the line. And the race control is calling it. It is good. Sean Johnson putting out some serious numbers. 
So now as we watch Matt Peterson come in, we've got an interesting story developing in the scores. He's got to give a little throttle to get over the line. He's good. Gave up about 70 feet. Heavy on the brakes. You know, Matt has told me many times that the only thing that's important to him in the first round is just get a score on the board. That is everything. And as we are watching these pilots start to taxi back, let's go back to Reese Dockhand out in the paddocks. What do you got for us, Reese? That's so nice. One, and he's actually competing in this. Uh, you're actually scoping out the competition. Oh what are you looking gosh. at? These guys are so good. This is going to be a killer. Now, I know we talked about the tires yesterday, but what are some things that make this a performance um, competitor? Well, this is a stock uh, Husky. Uh, I haven't done anything to it uh, for stall competitions. Came out of the factory this way, uh, but it was built for this. So that's what makes it, you know, ready to compete. And you have a long history in air shows, right? Talk a little bit about that and maybe some of the nerves that, that go along with it. Well, you know, I, I spent the last 20 years uh, doing air shows all across North America, and, and folks, uh, you know, just love to come out and, and watch all kinds of aviation. Uh, the nerves get to you, but you just practice and practice until you're ready, and then you focus. All right, that's what they like, say. Uh, just don't do anything new here in the competition. Fly it just like you do back at home, and you're seeing it. It's beautiful, isn't it? Back to you, Ryan. And that right there, we're back, guys. That is a air show legend indeed, here to compete and play with us once again at National Stoll in his personal Husky aircraft. Very excited to see him fly later. Saw some incredible improvements in his performance yesterday during practice. But as we wait for race control to release Micah here, we've got some preliminary numbers from you for you from the first round. Walk us through them. Here we go, Micah, who's taking off right now in first place with 290. He's going to mow the lawn. Hyper aggressive. Grab that bite. Sub 150. Then this is your current third place contender, Jeff Pohl. Combined score of 314. This class is getting tight. I'm watching as Jeff Pohl's girlfriend is radioing him numbers, letting him know how close it is, enticing him perhaps to do Whoa! just that. <laughs> okay, so that that takeoff from Micah was tied for the best of the heat with 142. Let's see what Jeff pops up on the score. 141, bested him by a foot. Sean Johnson now. <laughs> Cheating to the right side, also mowing the lawn. Take it right, impressive. <laughs> I, they are pointing cow. there. I would have point much sooner. I would, I would point sub 125. I would say about 123 is what it looked like from my angle. But again, they have the eyes on the prize right there. We have to leave it to the judges. We're actually very blessed here today. We've got a whole big group of the local Nashville 99s. Lady pilots all out here in force doing their best to get the right numbers on the board. Colonel Matt on the roll. Like legit, As these pilots make their way back around the field, I just want to take a moment to Thank one of our sponsors, Sarasota Avionics. Not only are they a great supporter of us, having six different avionics shops in Florida, but actually a couple of the members of their team are here today, and one of them has recently bought himself a cute little bush plane that he's going to be out here competing with very soon, I'm sure. Huge thanks to Sarasota Avionics. Let's get back to the feud of the 170s. Micah, slow low, aggressive approach. Watch that tail slide down in just a moment. Power will be chopped. Get it across the line. Highly aggressive. Got that yoke full back, holding it off. Look Our at best that. Best landing by far. Micah catching that wind at just the right moment. There is an element of luck here and there, but the skills exercised there were clear. We've got line judges jumping up and down with excitement. And I have to admit, I left my seat to watch that one. I'm getting too excited as well. 
So now Micah's combined score, a huge improvement from 290 feet down to 254. He is trying to widen that gap between him, Jeff, and Sean. Sean nipping at his heels. We'll see that in just a second. Here comes Jeff Pohl now. And I'm the suspense is killing me, but he's coming in nice and slow. <laughs> Again, every one of these pilots is trying to do the same thing. They have the same goal, but they have different styles. The way that each of these pilots fly is very different. Watching that left wing start to drop a touch of power, oh. gets it on the line. It looks like a scratch from Lexi, but, but that is an that incredibly short landing. short landing. It's under review. Let's watch the replay. Oh, that's definitely a scratch. You can see the dust kick up before the line there. Lexi was 100% correct. Sorry I ever doubted you, Lexi. <laughs> She's like, I got you, bud. That would have been a 94-foot landing for Jeff Pohl had he not been about a foot, not even, six inches too short. Here comes Sean Johnson now, again, from Stamping Ground, Kentucky, in that 1955, 170, holding it off. Little burst of throttle over the line. It's good. Hyper aggressive, keeping that prop just out of the dirt. Man, look at that. Sean Johnson may be here to disrupt this points battle. It's going to be a really tight race right now. This is going to be wild to see because we are getting to run this for four flights instead of three today. Very exciting to get to see these pilots do even more. And we just saw a place change. Now, Sean Johnson currently in first place with 244. Here's the Colonel with a scratch. They'll be disappointed in that result for sure. Matt Peterson with a nice landing, just a bit too short before the line. So let's look at the current standings now. Sean Johnson, first place, 244. Michael Lindstrom, 10 feet behind him. 254. Jeff Pohl still riding that first run at 314, but we saw sh we would have seen shorter this time had he not scratched. And Matt Peterson at 618. Make sure you get your hands together for these guys as they go past you. Give them a big fist pump. They are out here making life happen to show off their airplanes and their skills. They love being here with you. Absolute competitors, deeply passionate and profoundly talented aviators. We love having these folks here. The other folks we love having, Eric, are all the sponsors that help bring this class to you. Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance, Flight Outfitters, Flying Eyes, and Ingram Aviation Insurance. I'm actually rocking, are you, I'm rocking some Flying Eyes right now. I don't know, they're, they're new to me. Prescription, got the magnetic, uh, Got the magnetic shades I can throw on there if I need. Very comfortable I'm in the headset. I'm regretting that I'm not wearing them because when I, as soon as I put this headset on, I just feel the pressure, right, in the temples. I'm missing those flying eyes. Mine live in my airplane. I don't fly without them. Absolutely worth the investment. And their warranty is one of the best in the business. Yeah, I think you just call and say they're broken. And they say, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll replace them for free. Yeah. It's fantastic. This thing is heating up. Who's having fun here in the backcountry class? You guys bored or no? Yeah, that's right. Love hearing the tears, guys. This is what makes it all worth it. Mike can now on the power. That beautiful MT propeller ripping him forward. Hyper aggressive and just over 125, 130 feet there. Jeff Pohl now. And look, Eric, we see this all the time. When we get any ounce of crosswind, people cheat hard into it to try to get as much of it on the nose. Jeff Pohl is doing that right now. He's got to be fired up. That, that scratch on the last round's got to be eating him up a little bit. Heavy on the throttle. Tail's way high. Huge yeah, rotation. Back. Nice. You know, I've never seen Jeff Pohl pull anything out of his airplane. He leaves the full interior. He leaves the tools. He leaves the tie downs. He leaves the dog and sometimes the girlfriend. It doesn't usually matter to him. But as this season is heated up, I've seen more and more and more things come out of the airplane. Today, there's not even carpet in the back seats. That guy is really in it to win it. But Sean Johnson is too. Hyper aggressive. Pulls early and he sticks. That's going to be good for. Jeff and Micah in this heat. 
because they do not want Sean Johnson to extend his lead in front of them. Here's the colonel, Matt Peterson. I've gotten to fly with him in this aircraft. So competent and just an infectious love of aviation. Here we go. Timing it out. Feeling Yanking, the speed. Getting the tail down. Still a little bit longer than we normally see from the colonel. We must be dialing that in a little bit. It's the first time we've seen him this season, aside from Swamp Stoll. It's great to see him back in the competition. You know, as a pilot, it's always fun to see people improve, and watching his flight conditions and his, his skill change has been absolutely impressive. And just uh, race control, you saw there with a little note that the deck angle on Sean Johnson's takeoff was a little too aggressive for their taste. It's just a note. No uh, disciplinary action just yet. There's Micah right over the line. Getting Holy that tail cow. super high. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> An absolute art form of balance right there. You can tell he's a heavy equipment operator. He is just fine. Put it on a teeter-totter and see what happens. That was a 124-foot landing with a 132-foot takeoff, but still not his best. Run two is his best with 254. Jeff Pohl now coming in. By the way, Micah and Jeff are from the same airport. They're from the same town. They are indeed. I wonder how that works out on the flight home. They take turns saying who taught who how to fly, which is always entertaining. Jeff Pohl now coming in. Again, cheating into that crosswind. The wind's basically nil again. Not great for Jeff. Right on the line. Super heavy on the brakes. Again, we just see that pendulum effect. Gets Lex the tail down. Lexi's saying, I need you to review it. She didn't call it. Absolutely as close as it gets. It looks like it might be before the line. We'll wait to hear from race control. They're calling it a scratch. Oh, heartbreak for Jeff Pohl with a second scratch. Oh, couldn't be closer, guys. That literally maybe an inch, maybe an inch of a scratch. By the way, I heard those boos, and I just want to make sure that you know that Eric and I don't make those calls. We don't. We, we just don't. report them to you, so when you're mad later, don't. It's not us, okay? Don't hesitate to throw tomatoes at Ryan, though. He, he's into what? that. All right, Sean now on that close approach once again, really slowing it up. Touch of power Ooh. across the line. And you can see, Eric, I think, you know, we had only a few knots of wind on the nose the last run. We have, I think, zero now. And it's Truly making a zero. difference. It's making like a 10-foot difference on these landing distances. Which is remarkable when you think about the, that. It's only a few knots of wind. It really does make a huge, huge difference. But it looks like the wind is picking out. I'm looking out of that USA Trailers Direct.com flag. And that one looks like it's starting to move. So Matt Peterson here may actually have just the amount of wind he needs to get a better score. I know he keeps track of all of his scores from every event. Event, and he doesn't really care Ooh. if he wins the competition. He wants to win against himself. Okay, look at that. Matt showing a little bit of a clinic on throttle management coming in there. Absolutely fantastic control there from Matthew Peterson from Louisiana. As I mentioned, that USA Trailers Direct.com flag. I'm sitting in a USA Trailers Direct.com trailer provided by them for this production. They have over 40 dealers around the country where you can buy any kind of trailer you might need. And if any of you guys are, you know, pilot people, aviation people, the chances are you've got toys that need to be going into a trailer. So pick up your trailers at usatrailersdirect.com. Huge thank you to Craig Owens and their team there. Absolutely love this trailer. Couldn't be happier with it. And we are getting ready now for round three of our competition or is it round four? I can't keep track. I'm having too much fun. I think we're headed into round four, which if I'm Jeff Pohl, I'm like, whoo, I'm glad we had time for four today because I've got one more run. He only has one on the board. And normally what you want to do strategically is you want to have the safe one in your first one run and then get more aggressive. Well, guess what? That's working out for Jeff because he has the safe one on the board. But now he's like, I got to improve it. Look at that beautiful Velocity aircraft taxiing by. That's an airplane that I would love to own someday. They make them in five seats and twin engines. It's a ripper at probably almost 200 knots. That's a fast thing, and I like that it looks like a spaceship. It does look a bit like a spaceship. Look at that. All right. 
Power is on. Micah looking to defend the title. Currently in second place, only 10 feet behind Sean Johnson. Micah pulling off. I don't know what she's saying, but I saw Jeff Pohl's girlfriend looking at me like I'm crazy. Something went wrong. I don't know. Jeff Pohl now, Hartzell propeller. Here we go, Jeff. I'm rooting for you. Get that thing it's a little an early. early. I love this, guys. Dan Reynolds, the Valdez champion, many times over, national stole champion. He is an incredible pilot from all the way all the way up north in the white country. And he says that we are watching the best of the best. And I completely agree. These are some of the best stole pilots in the country, if not the world. Sean Johnson currently in the lead on the roll. Woo! That timing was impeccable. Matthew Peterson, once again, a beautiful 1956 Cessna 172. I had one just like this. I couldn't do that, though. Off the ground, touching oh, down once oh. again. It'll be measured from the bounce. A beautiful drone shot bringing us in from the airport. We can see Matthew as he sets up for that crosswind. These pilots making their way back around in their final round or current standings. Sean Johnson with 244, Michael Lindstrom 254, Jeff Pohl at 314. These guys are battling it out for our top three and Sean Johnson taking the trophy might mean the difference in points lead between Micah and Jeff. We'll have to go to the booth to find out, but Micah now just across the line, hyper aggressive again. Look at the big bounce in the tires. Getting it stopped around 148 feet. I love how he, he'll sit there and let the tail just fly. Wait for him to get his measurement. Yeah, saunter a little off. bit of a, a little bit of a showman. Little. Some of our chatter in the in the chat right now. People want a T-shirt of the legs and boots under the plane. I think Lexi's got some fans online. There goes that velocity. Hey. Taking it off at about the cruise speed of some of these airplanes. Jeff, Jeff Pohl. Jeff Pohl with those flaps dropped, trying to grab any little bit of that crosswind as he comes in, straightening it out. Gave up a few feet over the line. Probably doesn't want to scratch again. And again, just playing with that tail in the air. Nice control. He came in a bit higher, tried to transfer more of the energy into the landing gear, not into that forward momentum. Really clean control from Jeff. Sean Johnson now. He's your current leader with 244 feet combined, which I think we did the math on yesterday. That is less than five F-14 Tomcats nose to, sail, nose to tail, <laughs> which is, again, a weird thing that I guess makes me an uber nerd to know that. Uh, <laughs> here he comes super low now. It's also equal to about 4,000 cucumbers. Just, just if we're, you know... 4,000 <laughs> cucumbers. All right. How many washing machines? The wind has died, ladies and gentlemen. If you start to look, these flags are turning all different directions. Oh, that tells us we're a in a thermal. That's a scratch for Sean. Deeply disappointing. I know that his sons, Archer and Cooper, are out in the audience right now, and they're going to be bummed for dad. Still holding the lead, though, with 244. Now, let's not forget, folks, that this backcountry class is broken into two heats. So you've got the 170s and the 172 piloted by the Colonel, who's on uh, final approach right now. They all are competing against a second heat, the Delta heat. That's a 172 Delta, an Aviat Husky, a Decathlon, and a Cessna 140, it's possible. Oh, hold it off, Matt. Hold it off. Oh! oh good. Lexi oh, says he did it. <laughs> Tickling 
tickling the tops of the grass, watching it under review. It looks like it's off. A big thank you to Eric for coming on the mic with me. Let me scarf some pizza today as we ramp things up here in the backcountry class. Guess who's back from yesterday? It's Chad Hall. Oh, man. What a beautiful day here in Gallatin to watch some airplanes. Ryan, the broadcast is awesome. Oh, well, now yeah, it's even awesomer I've now that you're uh, here. Yeah, I've been sitting back watching and uh, see a lot of happy faces out here. So just so grateful for all the support that we've had to get National Stole here in our beautiful city of Gallatin. And, uh, man, it's just, uh, couldn't get, does it get much better than this? It doesn't get much better than this. A little bit of confusion in the Airboss tent there as we have to get people sorted out a little bit. They did not need to go for a fifth run. I think Micah and Jeff just wanted to keep fighting a little bit more. And Micah just decided to dust us. Thanks, Micah. Appreciate that. So, okay, Chad, now we, yeah. we've, we are... Um, actually, I'm going to go to Burstics here in the chat. He said, Micah knows the weight and balance of his aircraft... Uh, of his plane. It's so cool to see a younger guy like him fare so well here. And absolutely, he's kind of a newcomer to the circuit compared to people who have been around from the start, like Jeff Pohl. Uh, it's just really great to see Micah fight back and forth. And I, I spent some time, actually a long time, last night talking to Jeff Pohl about uh, a lot of things. We were, we were even talking about tractors and World War II engines of airplanes that he's recently purchased. But uh, what's so great about that gentleman is that he, there's a, a camaraderie and a competitive spirit between him, Micah, Sean, and the rest of the 170 team in particular. And uh, he, he can be frustrated or mad or, or whatever about com com competition, his results, but he's always going to be uh, just a super great colleague to all these pilots that he competes with. So it's just a really great time to spend with him last night. Uh, give me some advice on which airplane I should buy next. I always appreciate that. Uh, so we're getting ready for the rest of the backcountry class, Chad. Right. We're, we're headed with Keith Watts, Gary Rower. We'll, we'll introduce them to you guys in just a second. Anthony Lee and Ben L Lehman. Uh, they're going to kind of bring up the second heat of this class. The gauntlet has been dropped pretty substantially. Uh, so let's look at again. So the gauntlet has been dropped. We have 244 for Sean Johnson. Both Micah and Jeff are going to be a little frustrated with that one if it sticks. Uh, Micah Lindstrom, second place with 254. Jeff Pohl, 314. And the Colonel currently in fourth place with 605. It's going to be interesting to see if Matt Peterson can hold the line at fourth place there as we head into the next heat. He's got some aircraft here. Chad that are, you know, we've got a 172 very similar to his. We've got an Aviat Husky. We've got a, a Decathlon and a 140. Let's actually kick it over to Reese Dockhand, who Micah's literally just shutting down the engine. Uh, Reese, are you going to ambush him as he gets out there? Now here's Micah Lindstrom in the paddock, coming out the plane. It's hot out there, and you were talking about giving uh, Jeff Pohl the second place, but you took the second place. There's a new sheriff in town. Yeah, I guess the old man upstairs had different plans for me. He uh, didn't get no headwind, which is unfortunate, but still got second place. And mo more importantly, uh, Jeff Pohl got third place, which is, <laughs> uh, you know, deep down inside, I'm proud of him. He's doing his best, absolutely. You're still the points champion, leader into it for... The competition, you got one more going into it. It's really going to come down to the very end. 
Yeah, it's going to be really close. A lot closer than I was hoping for. One, one thing that you got going on, you got a tuned exhaust, you got a big propeller up front. What are some other modifications that you got going on in this aircraft that's taking it to the next level? I got the Sportsman Stoll Kit and Vortex Generators and 31-inch uh, Alaskan bush wheels. Uh, I got a Surefly Mag. So it's set up pretty nice. Yes, it's a beautiful airplane. One of our cameraman's favorite airplanes are the 170Bs. And just look right, look right over here. You got Jeff Pohl. We're going to walk over there and go give him a shout. Great job, Micah. Dirty birds in the house. The dirtiest of birds, his wife. He's not running away, so this is a good thing. Last time I had to chase him around the, the paddock. You took all the fuel. You took all the weight. It's still just not enough. I know. What's going on, man? I scratched by six inches. Otherwise, I think I might have had it. But six inches is six inches. That's all it takes sometimes for uh, not counting. And, you know, my heart goes out to you. I know you're putting everything on the line out there. And you're, you're making all the competition. You're making every effort to get on top. But it's just one, one left. Well, Lone Star. <laughs> I guess I'll go there and I'll, I'll try to get first, second, or third. Well, it's very nice that you actually are still competing and just not giving up, right? That's not what it's all about. Well, I've held the, the national title for the last couple of years. If I have to pass the torch, I guess so be it. Oh, man. <laughs> it's tough to say. I know it's just hard to say those words. But thank you, everyone, for watching live. These are some of the most competitive pilots in the paddock. And we're going to see. And we also cry. We cry. Grown men do cry. Back to you, Eric and Ryan. Okay, Reese. Thanks so much. It is yeah, a little bit of heartbreak in Jeff Pohl's eyes there. And, you know, it's not... What's interesting is it hasn't sealed the deal. If we do the math, it'll be interesting to see. I don't believe it sealed the deal for the national championships because everyone is so tight in that class. It is not over, though. It's not over in the backcountry class because we have the second heat. And we're going to introduce them to you in just a second. And while they get ready, Chad, uh, you know, we're not quite halfway through the uh not quite halfway through the inaugural music city stole event I, you've been working really hard to put it on so first of all i guess thank you but second of all what what are your takeaways now as we're halfway through competition you know, I think uh, Gallatin's, uh, this is a, a great time to be bringing National Stoll to Gallatin because we've had such a great involvement in our community with our breakfast that we've been doing with our local EA chapter here. And we've seen aviation become more popular. We have a high school with Liberty Creek here in Sumner County that has one of the best aviation schools in the country. And uh, we're seeing these kids get involved. And the great thing is that there's so many opportunities in aviation for careers um, and uh, not just pilots, but even like my own son who works here on the field is uh, becoming a, an A&P. He's, he's going to be an aircraft mechanic. And, and so we want to be able to make sure that we can uh, have, be a conduit for uh, uh, young people to be introduce them not only to general av aviation, but aviation as a career. And, and it's accessible for anybody, no matter what your economic status or background or anything. And we want to make sure that GA is accessible for everyone. Well, we're doing a great job today, I think, of showing that. Uh, Stoll is one of those things that's super, or I shouldn't say super accessible, more accessible than you might think. You know, we're going to see aircraft later today that could be acquired for about the same price as a, a nice car. And, uh, you know, I think it's about what you prioritize and what you want to do. And we talked yesterday during practice that there are airplanes you can acquire, maybe not Stoll competitive. You know, I saw a plane on barnstormers.com, not a, not a sponsor, that you've heard 10000 bucks. That's less right. than my neighbor's Harley. Uh, let's hop over to Reese, because guess who he's with? He's with Sean Johnson. Reese, can you read me? Sean Johnson, the yes. family man, the family community. Congratulations. You took the first place. No. Yes. You're joking. 100%. Micah and Jeff Bowler are still crying about it. You got to be kidding me. Man, this thing is, uh, what have you done to take the win? I mean, you are coming in so slow. I, I mean, it's got an older stole kit. I did just refreshing up the motor from Jennings. I found out I had three cracked cylinders, so the motor's fresh. That's great. Got the uh, MT McFarland propeller on there, which is amazing. And uh, honestly, I thought I was an underdog here. There's no way I could do it, but you, you got to be kidding me. This is unbelievable. The family's here. The kids are in the crowd. Right. It, can't, it can't feel any better, right? Oh, I, I am on top of the world. This is unfreaking believable Brand new paint scheme on this 170B. You'll see a lot more of him. Sean Johnson, the new sheriff in town. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, I want to thank uh, McFarland Aviation, MT Propellers, uh, Legion Airlines, and uh, Flight Outfitters. Not sponsors yet. 
Yeah. And that's what it's all about. That yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. Thanks so much, Reese and Sean. And now, technically, Sean hasn't sealed the deal yet because we've got one more heat of the backcountry class coming up. But that's going to be a tough score to unseat, <laughs> we'll especially considering who we've got in the, the aircraft that we have. So let's go back to the second heat. This is the Delta heat. It's backcountry class here at Music City Stoll. First, running up to us, it's Keith Watts. Taxiing up right now, Keith Watts in a 1963 170 Delta model, 172 Delta model, excuse me, from Chapel Hill, Tennessee, everyone. Here comes Keith Watts. Keith Watts is uh, not only a pilot, but has 39 years in the motorsports industry as a professional race car driver and has mentored young drivers who have achieved success in races like the Indy 500 and Daytona 500. So everyone give a round of applause for Keith Watts. Next up, coming up in a 1996 Aviat Husky from Brooks, Georgia. Started flying at age 16. He's got over 18,000 hours of flying. It's Gary Rower. Make sure to cheer, folks. He can hear you in the cockpit. Used to fly the F-16 Fighting Falcon, and he was the 136th Air Force pilot worldwide to achieve 1,000 hours in that aircraft. Next up. In a decathlon, it's 57-year-old aviation enthusiast, Anthony Lee. And that 1979 Belonka decathlon, he's one of your hometown boys from Gallatin. Purchased this aircraft in 1995, has over 1,400 hours of flight on it. Does some banner towing, some glider towing, all sorts of stuff. That's Anthony Lee, everybody. And last, but certainly not least, the coffee man, Ben Lehman, in the 1950 Cessna 140. Over 20 years of flying experience, passion for aviation since childhood. You can check him out at flywithben.com, and they are taxiing up to the line right now. Yeah. So let's no, recap not, now. Not, it's your Lad Gardner Aviation yeah. Insurance Backcountry Class. We've got Keith Watts on the line from Chapel Hill, Tennessee, Gary Rower. Up next in that Husky from Brooks, Georgia, Anthony Lee here from Gallatin, Tennessee in that Belanca, and Ben Lehman from Nashville, Tennessee in the Cessna 140. That's your second heat of the Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance Backcountry Class coming up in just a minute. And while they're getting their aircraft warmed up, Let's go talk to our friend in the pits. It's looking like Reese Dockhan has the Colonel, Matt Peterson, ready for the hot seat. Yeah, that's right. My apologies for uh, mispronouncing the champion, but Matt, what was it out there with that tail dragger? Let me tell you something, Reese. We're out here today with some of these fine airplanes flying, but there's one that was on fire today because I had a front row seat and I watched all three of those pilots fly. Sean Johnson, Sean Johnson was on fire today. He was flying his best game and he got to bring his best game because he's flying against Michael Lindstrom and Jeff Pohl, two of the best pilots in the lower 48. Let me tell you, brother, they're awesome out here today with this beautiful weather. It's so good to be out here. I tell you what, that Michael Lindstrom's got something to beat, but there's a new sheriff in town and that is Sean Johnson. You've seen it, right? You seen firsthand, right? You're right behind them. That's right. I had a great seat. They were taking off right in front of me. I watched the first plane take off. He looked really good. That was Jeff Pohl. Then here comes Michael Lindstrom. He did really good when with Sean Johnson. He pulled it exactly the right time, and he's logged along in that ground effect because he got all the energy into that airplane and just had a great performance today. I tell you what, brother, those tail draggers are something to beat with those nose draggers out there, huh? 
Well, let me tell you, I'm out there in a nose dragger, and if you've got a nose dragger back home and you think you can't come here and fly in the National Stole Series, let me tell you something. You can come out here and you can be out here with some of the best in the lower 48. So get your nose dragger out and you bring it to a National Stole Series event. We'll see what you got. Oh, yeah, brother. Back to you, Ryan. <laughs> wow, the Hulkster in the crowd. <laughs> All right, it's time to go. Here comes Keith Watts now. Chapel Hill, Tennessee. See if that race car experience can apply here. Next up, Gary Rower in the Avion Husky. If someone's going to give the first seat a run for their money, it's going to be Gary. Oh. Off short. Sub 125 for sure. He is not messing around. Next up, Anthony Lee from this very airport. We Do love him. seeing our hometown boys here competing. This is a good heat to be in for me. Now that decathlon, Chad, it designed a little bit of a drop back down there. It designed more for aerobatics than Absolutely. stole. Maybe not the best wing for it. Really good wing for going upside down. It's great for going upside down, and uh, but I'm just you know excited that we've got guys getting out here and trying it. You know, it's uh, you can bring any aircraft, and here's Ben, another good friend, and uh, yeah, we've got Gallatin well represented. Tennessee is well represented here in this heat. Woo! There we go. Keep it off. Keep it off. There we go. Yeah, Cessna 140, not as much power. You know, only a Continental C90 on the front of that thing. Uh, the other thing that's really funny is we asked the pilots, like, what modifications have you done to your aircraft? And Ben said, wax. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's look into the pattern now. And turning uh, right base to final, we've got Keith Watts in that 172. While Keith Watts is coming in on final there, let's thank our second heat sponsors, Committee Coffee, USA Trailers Direct, and Firefly LED. Check out that big screen you guys have been watching. All day. Hold it off, hold it off. He made it over the line, but now he's got extra speed to deal with. Keeping those brakes locked up. And the other thing, folks, while you're in the crowd, I know you all have phones. You all have cellular phones. Go to nationalstole.com slash vote. Don't forget, at the end of the day, National Stole, or right now, nationalstole.com slash vote to vote for your favorite pilot. Gary Rower now on short final. He's over the line, giving up about 60 feet. He's got to get it stopped. So this is an interesting thing now. He pretty much decimated everybody on the takeoff. Put in a number as short as Sean Johnson did on the takeoff, actually shorter. But he's got to overcome that landing distance now to remain competitive. So that takeoff for Gary Rower was 125 feet. Waiting for the score to come in, there's almost definitely going to be some change-ups. 322 on the landing. Here's the decathlon now. Not even touching down until about 175. So Gary Rower in fourth place now, unseating Matt Peterson for that with now a combined score of 447. Keith Watts holding up sixth place, but our top three unchanged. I think he was trying to sneak in a little stole action there yeah. on that uh, takeoff. Here's Ben now. 
giving up about almost 100 feet before touching down. He had a 372-foot takeoff. Anthony Lee, by the way, with a 900-foot landing on that. Maybe just a rollout issue. Waiting for the score to come in for Ben. Three, very interesting. Takeoff 372, landing 372 for Ben. That's, wow. that's accuracy for you. So he's going to be in seventh place with 744 feet. So the only shift we've had is Gary Rower popping into fourth place, moving Matt Peterson down into fifth. Gary Rower, though, if you look at the... Jeff Pohl currently with 314, Gary Rower with 447. Totally possible that if Gary can get it stopped a little bit hard, he's putting in takeoffs that are vastly shorter than the Cessna 170s. That's one of the advantages of a aircraft like a Husky compared to the 170s. You've got tube and fabric working for you instead of metal construction, a little bit less weight to deal with. So if he can get it landed and stopped shorter, not much spread between him and Jeff Pohl. As they taxi by you folks, make sure to cheer. They can hear you. Give them some fist bumps. Yeah, Ryan, we were excited to see our hometown guys compete, and, and even Keith, too. And, and hopefully when we come back next year, we're going to get some more guys out here to, uh, to give it a whirl. Ben's 140 taxing passes. That is a beautiful 140. He takes really good care of that thing. Hard to believe, and it's 1950. Looks brand new. The other thing I think we should mention, uh, just maybe worth a, worth a mention, is we lost, a, the world lost a great aviator last night. We I think sure at like did. four in the morning, I got a text from uh, the New York Times. Mr. Jimmy Buffett passed away. Sorry if I'm breaking that news to you, but uh, a lot of his songs about flying and the, yeah. and the love of aviation and the adventure, so... Very sad day. So there went Keith Watts now in that 172. His previous takeoff was 387. Gary Rower off. To me, it looked like between 100 and 125 feet. The judges are calling it about 126. They've got a different angle on that. Look at Keith Watts' improvement. He shaved 100 feet off of his takeoff. Ben Lehman now on the roll in that beautiful green 140. Tails up. Pulled a little early. Still not ready to fly.
Keith Watts now holding it off. Look at that deck angle there. Holding it off. Oh, oh with a scratch for Keith. Really so. huge deck angle. High angle of attack. Risky. Yeah, it, did, uh, it didn't pay off this time. By the way, if you like my sun, my, well, they're not sunglasses right now. They're just prescription glasses right now. But if you like them, I will tell you, they slide in under there right, real well. Uh, you can go to Flying Eyes and get a coupon code National Stole for 10% off. Uh, the big thing about that, as we watch Gary Rower come in, giving up like 75 feet. If he could shorten that 75 feet and touch on the line, he would pop into third yeah. place, I think. Yeah, he would, he would be in the third place if he could touch a little bit closer to the line. Here comes the decathlon now with a go-around because I believe we needed a little bit more separation between the aircraft, so he's going to loop around, keep that nice and safe. Ben Lehman, then, is your next aircraft to approach. Anthony was telling me yesterday he has to come in the uh, final around 60 miles per hour, so I think he catches up pretty quick to everybody on those uh, short finals. Got it held off. A lot of speed, though. Every time he adds that little burst of throttle, it's keeping him in the air, but it's also giving him a little more speed to contend with. There's the decathlon over the line. Like you said, coming in hot because yeah. he has to. And I want to say again, thanks to the Nashville 99s. They've been totally critical in helping pull this off. And if you want to mention anything yeah, about they, the work they've been doing. Karina and her chapter have been unbelievable. They've been great friends of ours here at Gallatin. And we're just really excited that they've been out here to... Uh, Help us out on the flight line and uh, with our welcome party for everyone last night. Uh, we love the 99s here and great organization for females uh, in aviation. And if you're a young lady want to get into aviation, you should definitely check out the 99s. They're an amazing group of ladies. So if you're in the area, go to Nashville99s.org. So Nashville99s, like 99s. Uh, Nashville99s.org. Can learn more about that and yeah i got to talk to a few of the 99s last night and uh just super awesome uh very kind of to help throw that party oh yeah <laughs> you know couldn't do it without them okay let's look at the standings now as we go into this next round the third round of the second heat of the backcountry class here at music city stole Sean Johnson still holding the lead at 244. Michael Lindstrom, 254. Jeff Pohl, 314. Gary Rower, 447. If anyone's going to make a move, it's going to be him. Matt Peterson at 605. And Keith Watts in sixth place with 629. What? I'm in fourth? And we're live. 30 seconds to a minute. There goes Keith Watts now, currently in sixth place. Gary Rower, okay. Gary Rower put down the shortest takeoff of the, of the backcountry class in his first round with 125 feet. Right around 150-something feet that time. So if he can shorten it up, he's in striking distance. If he can shorten up that landing, he could pop into third place. Jeff Pohl's got to be watching with bated breath on that one. Anthony Lee now getting ready to show us 
some loops. And Hammerhead, just kidding, he's just going to take off. And I Love Aviation's on the social saying, See, switching in and seeing this wonderful plane, awesome. Howdy from Germany. Hello from Tennessee, I Love Aviation. Thanks for watching. Ben, flywithben.com. Putting out a bit of a clinic on what you can do with a Cessna 140. And while he takes into the air, I want to kick it over to my friend, Reese Dakan who's got a couple of dudes lounging under a wing with him. We're hanging out underneath the Legend Cubs. Some of the more, I mean, they created a whole class for you guys, right? But more competitive Cubs? They did. We're, uh, we're the competitive ones for this competition. Unlimited class isn't here, so we're kind of the big boys today. Yeah, give us a little background on this MOAC, the mother of all Cubs. So it's basically a Piper Super Cub, just a little bit bigger with about... 50 more horsepower, bigger gear, the leading edge slats. I think the wings are a little bit bigger too. So um, just quite a bit more performance, much higher gross weight, things like that. Made right here in America. And it looks like we lost Reese there, but let's go right back to Keith Watts, who just dropped it in. And actually wanted to let you know there will be some unlimited class action today. There was a last minute entry between two of our competitors. We just wanted to throw down and see who was better. So we've got a little bit of a grudge match coming up in unlimited. That'll be at the end of the day. Patrick McIntyre and Charles Lilly decided to say, you know, 1v1, who's the best pilot? So they're going to do that at the end. A lot of money on the stake for them now. Here we go. Gary Rowers got to get it stopped. And that's a long one. He is so close to unseating third. If he could slow that plane down a little bit there. Here's the decathlon now on short-ish final, let's call it. That's Anthony Lee. Really well on the accuracy. A little bit of a bounce. Another bounce. Yeah, Chad, I mean, like you mentioned, he's got to come in so hot with that symmetrical airfoil. Yeah, there's not much he can do to fight that. It's, uh, he's doing the best he can with it. Again, it's an airplane that's not uh, meant for stole, but uh, I, I just still think it's great that you're, you're bringing it out here, you're competing, and I encourage people when I talk to other pilots here in the area, when, uh, you know, coming to this event, hey, come out here and give it a try. It doesn't matter what you fly. Yeah, I mean, speaking of it doesn't matter what you fly, you would never expect to see a Cessna 140. We just saw a beautiful slip by Ben there, slipping it in. That's when we cross control the airplane. I'll explain that in a second. Right over the line there for nice. Ben. Rung what you brung, right? You want to, this is about proficiency, it's about safety, and it's about, uh, let's see, that's under review now. Oh, zooming in on it. I feel like, yeah, the call stands. The judges are calling that good. Yeah, Ben's a local CFI here at Gallatin, and he teaches people in that, uh, that 140. And it's, um, it's a great way to start learning to fly airplanes in, in a tail dragger. It really helps you learn your stick and rudder skills and be very proficient when you move up to other airplanes. Now, you are a pilot here. We just saw a comment on the chat that the wind conditions here in Gallatin be can become quite tricky as the day progresses through the midday and afternoon hours. Is that, they say in the sim they've tried that, does that hold true for you as well in uh, real real it, flight? It, it, it depends. I mean, everything here is fairly mild, and we can get some variable conditions, and of course, you know, thermals like anywhere else, but uh, you typically uh, there's nothing really unusual about the wind patterns here, and uh, uh, again, you just kind of have to watch those variable gusty conditions, which happen from time to time, but generally speaking, we have pretty favorable conditions here getting ready to set up for the fourth and final takeoff and landing for the backcountry class the second heat keep your eyes on gary rower he's the one up next in that husky here goes keep watts now i can't fly my 172 like that <laughs> no. <laughs> no i'm not good like that in mine 
Having those Johnson bar flaps to pop those down are really, really nice. I've never uh, got to fly with that yet, but um, that gives you an advantage for sure. Wow. There went Gary Rower. Let's see what the score comes in at. His best takeoff, 125. I think he just beat that. 129, so pretty close. Oh, okay. So if he's going to do it, if he's going to take third, this is the round to do it. And I think we noticed that if he can get really close to the line and get it stopped where he normally has, he okay. may be in striking distance of Jeff Pohl. There goes the decathlon. Love me a decathlon. I grew up not too far. That's a Belanca. Uh, American champion makes him now. And I grew up just down the road from there. They're in Rochester, Wisconsin, uh, cranking out these amazing aerobatic aircraft. Never noticed it when I was a kid. I don't know what's up with that. Here's the, here's the Cessna 140 from Nashville, Tennessee. Ben really showing everyone that he's a good instructor with his technique there. You'll notice that he pops off, keeps it in ground effect. That's that thing that we were talking about earlier about how when you're a little bit closer to the ground, you get a little boost of, uh, of efficiency of lift. When you're that close, so you'll nurse it into that as he pops off and then nurse it out as he gains flying speed. That's kind of a classic short field maneuver that all pilots are trained. Again, National Stoll is just turning that up to 11. All these techniques that you're learning here are techniques that if you choose to become a pilot, that you could do yourself. You'll be, learn, you'll be taught how to do them uh, on a basic level. And then if you wanted to proceed into national stole competition, you'd just keep practicing that and getting more proficient. But every pilot is taught how to get off short, how to get off off of grass or other soft field conditions. And so if that seems exciting to you, you definitely gotta, you gotta hop in and do it. Here's Keith Watts now. Nice. He's locking him up. That was a really yes. accurate landing. That was fantastic. Gary Rower now. It's the one I'm rooting for in this heat. I want to see some controversy. Get it on the line, Gary. Let's go. Oh, it's looking okay. good. Okay. Oh. Closer than before. A lot of speed. He's got to dissipate. It's short. It's one of his shortest for sure. His shortest was 291. Can he beat it? I'm just watching the spreadsheet. 254, which puts him down to 383, which is not enough to grab third place from Jeff Pohl, but it's closer. He has definitely got closer. That one's a scratch. Coming in with Anthony in the decathlon. And to round out, look at Ben slipping it in. When we talk about slipping, you've got your aileron, your roll correction one way, your rudder, then keeping the airplane straight. And the airplane is what we call cross-controlled. And you can use that. Yeah, I Love Aviation says they all come in so hot. I think newer pilots in particular come in a little bit hotter. Uh, that cro it's called cross-controlled, and it allows you to either correct for a crosswind or, in the case that we just saw Ben do it, reduce your altitude, get some extra sink uh, from the airplane. You can kind of just force it to descend that way. So that'll wrap up the backcountry class. Let's recap the stats real quick. Sean Johnson, 244. Michael Lindstrom, 254. Jeff Pohl, 314. Gary Rower at 383. So an improvement for him, but not enough. Keith Watts in fifth place, 468. And Matt Peterson in sixth place with 605. And now let's kick it back to Reese, who's still hanging out with the Legend this Cub guys over in the pits. 
What's happening, everyone? We're here with an Made in America Cub. We were talking about it. It's called the mother of all. Actually, a little bit more performance. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. So yeah, it's got about two, this one's got about 210 horsepower, so quite a bit more horsepower than your typical Super Cub. The slats make a big difference, adding that extra lift. So we can get about 60, 50 foot takeoffs sometimes at these competitions. So it really, really goes to show how much these planes can do. It really deals with the wind and the conditions of the weather, but I mean, just look how gorgeous things things are behind us. Made in Texas, made in America, and uh, some of the coolest people, they're actually sponsoring our next event out in Lone Star. And uh, we were just looking at the point standing. You're about fourth, fighting for fourth place. Yeah, I'm tied with fourth. So I'm hoping to get quite a few points here, try to get up the the second second place range and hopefully by the championship i'll be able to get in the second place right behind brian stick right on your home turf we're really excited to see luke fly this beautiful cub good luck uh, out there thank you. coming up next back to you ryan thanks so much reese good appreciate luck, that lovely interview and we are getting ready to head into that adventure class but now i am joined uh Actually, I'm going to Tasty Basie. Uh, it says, I love seeing these not so typical Stolberg pilots competing. And I love that shot of the golf cart as we uh, rove around there. Let's go. I've got a special guest to inter introduce. But before we do that, we need to talk about some of our sponsors here that have done things locally. And then I've got another special guest that's joining me today. It's a, it's a secret. It's a secret for the next 60 seconds. So locally, we've got a bunch of amazing sponsors that have helped us bring this together. The first one I'll talk about is right behind me, out of the trailer, there's a beautiful screen that's bringing this to everybody. The crisp images, and of course, I like it because it's got my face on it. That's brought to you by Firefly LED. Thank you to Firefly LED. Let's list off some other ones. We've got Matt Harris and Ben Harris Homes, TriGreen, Ingram Aviation Insurance, Jet Access, Sumner County Tourism, the City of Gallatin and the Gallatin Economic Board, Factory 10 Aerospace Composites, Charlie's Golf Carts, Stolen Aircraft, Sumner Bank and Trust, Rogers Group, Brower Online, Tennessee Flight Training, and Tennessee Brew Works, and Half Batch. So thank you very much to all those local sponsors that have helped us bring Music City Stole to you in the crowd and to you worldwide here on the broadcast uh, we're gonna kick it. You gotta. I'm gonna keep you waiting on who this special guest is. We're gonna kick it over to Reese Dockhan and Brennan, our intrepid field crew out there. Reese, What's who happening? you got now? We're Paddock with Keith, man. Your first competition. You didn't come in last. I didn't. You didn't. All right. Awesome. So. Well, I can tell you why, because we were somewhat late to the pilots meeting and I ran and I actually beat Jeff Pohl into the, the, the lounge there. So I did at least beat Jeff Pohl once in my life. And I can say that outstanding. I can't believe uh, how well I did with all the help of my, uh, my peers and classmates here. This is awesome for just an average Joe. You can do it. You're an average Joe when it comes to racing airplanes, but not when racing automotive. Let's talk about the history and how you transition automotive to airplanes. Yeah, that was a pretty interesting uh, change of pace I had in my life. I started out young, skinny, fast, and single, two-time national go-kart champion, and was fortunate to make a living racing sports cars and open-wheel cars and coaching as well, you know, all the way to, you know, coaching kids that went to the Indy 500 and Daytona 500 with success. And to take some of that knowledge, which is eyes up, looking ahead, and all that stuff adds up. And you know what adds up most of any of it is finding sponsorship to pay for it, for one, and number two, is just the ability to learn. You have to learn. If you've got the ability to learn, you can do this. They have motors running, cranking up, props spinning. It's just exciting when you're here. A lot of people are at home. They can't feel that, that pound of that motor. Talk about the atmosphere here at Galton. Well, this is the first time I've ever had more than 10 people watch me take off or land. I'm sure I've got a lot of critics over there, but that's okay. Because the reality is when you get here, it's a whole different energy. 
It's a positive energy. It's not a nervous energy. It's a, everybody's here for you. They want to see you win. They want to see you do a good job. Well, you did a great job out there. You had some great energy. I'm just so blessed to be here on the tarmac interviewing these pilots, come doing it for their first time. And <laughs> smiles all on their faces. Ryan, back to you. Thank you so much, Reese. We really appreciate all the work you guys are doing out there. Uh, you're making that hat do some like work. Home. It's been all that over the big world. hat. So I've got a special guest here with me in the booth now. It's the Colonel. Matt Peterson in the booth. You just competed. I'll do my own little interview while the uh, the adventure class kicks around. Uh, how was it out there today for you? It was it was really good out there today. I was behind the number one, two, and three. I had Jeff Pohl, Michael Lindstrom, and Sean Johnson in front of me. So I had a front row seat to some really, really good flying. Um, I didn't fly very well. I had kind of an off day, but that's okay. Some days you have an off day. I would like to point out, though, that uh, I've been coaching Keith the whole time he's been here. So I'm really proud that he beat me. He did really, really well. I'm, I'm proud of Keith. He did a good job. Good job, buddy. I didn't know you were doing that. You're working with him and showing him the ropes. Uh, Kenny Monger and I have been, been talking to Keith online, and this is possibly one of the only sports where the competitors coach each other. Um, we're always trying to help each other and help everybody get better. Um, after a while, it, you're really competing against yourself. It's, it's kind of like golf. You just want to do better than you did the day before. And, and even the top pilots... Um, and, you know, uh, if you ask Steve Henry, he'll say, I'm always trying to do better than I did the day before. Sure. And, and that's how he got to where he is, you know, and, and, and he's, you know, awesome. So there you go. Yeah, I, I would. You said you didn't think you flew that well. I think you obviously flew very well. The, the conditions very challenging today. And uh, we saw, you know, real quick kind of an upset in the in the class right you mentioned it in your in your uh, plain sight interview there with reese uh your alter ego the hulk was here the hulk mania was here but uh you know seeing sean johnson kind of come in and mike is a very confident young man and it was interesting to see him get unseated by sean all three of those pilots are top notch all three of them uh they are just the possibly the three best in that class in the lower 48 um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about my guy, Sean Johnson. I had to apologize at Swamp Stole to Sean. And, you know, colonels don't apologize much. But I had to apologize to Sean because when he first showed up, I met him and his father, and he said, well, I'm here to win. And uh, Jeff was at Swamp Stole last year, and, you know, Jeff is an outstanding competitor, and Micah was there. And I kind of pulled Sean to the side, and I said, listen, man, you need to kind of, you know, curb your expectations. You're competing with some of the best pilots in the mm. lower 48 here. And when we get that a lot on the series. You have somebody who'll show up and they don't do a lot of research or they don't fly before they get here and they think they're just going to show up and, and snatch the trophy away from some of these top-notch pilots. Um, and so I was trying to kind of, you know, leaven the blow. And at uh, any rate, Sean Johnson went out there to, to Swamp Stole and he put on a, a clinic. He did a really good yeah. job. And after the practice day, I caught him at the crawfish boil, you know, those little things that we were eating at the, yeah. at the gym. Um I know you, you know, <laughs> yeah, I just got to explain yeah, yeah. that every now and again. But uh, I caught Sean and I said, man, I've got to apologize. You, you've got a shot. You've really well, got a shot at number one. And today? Today he did it. He did it. Today he, he did, did it. it. Speaking of someone else who did it, check out Reese now. He's standing in front of a decathlon, which is not a classic stow airplane. Reese, who you got there in front of that decathlon? Ah, uh, this is Anthony. You, you're a local pilot, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am a local pilot. Here and and uh, this is not your average stole plane. No, it is not your average stole plane. It's fully aerobatic and it has no flaps and it's uh, not designed to do this kind of flying. But I'm out here just having a good time. A local Gallatin pilot with a plane that can go upside down. What are some challenges you're fighting through coming in on short final? So my biggest challenge in this airplane is that um, I don't have any flaps, so I have no way to destroy the lift and no way to really produce any drag. So, and the semi-symmetrical wing likes to float and I'm getting down close to the ground and I just can't get it to stop flying. And, and I'm approaching it at like 55 and these guys are probably doing like 40 or, or less. Now, stole might not be your favorite thing to do in this plane, but what are some of the things that you love to do in this aircraft? Well, I, I do like to fly it upside down. It is, you know, aerobatics is what I like to do. I do a little um, tailwheel instruction teaching in it and some spin and upset stuff. But, you know, aerobatics is really what I do. But flying, this, this kind of flying reminded me of my days of towing and things like that. So it's, it's a lot of fun flying close to the ground. 
Hey, Ryan, can we uh, do a live stream upside down in the decathlon? Back to you, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, let's do it upside down. And look, Jeff Pohl departing. Off and running there. But yeah, uh, let's, let's live stream upside down. I don't have a great history of being upside down. That's not something that uh, I'm very good at <laughs> in terms of my ability to hold my lunch in. Uh, we are getting ready to launch the adventure class. And we got someone from Fort McMurray, Alberta. Love watching the stole competition. That's Aaron, ba Aaron Baldassi. Thank you, Aaron Baldassi, for that. Here we go. It's the adventure class kicking off first. Coming up, taxing up with the gun racks in a 2019 American Legend aircraft MOAC. It's Luke Spore. Luke Spore has been flying Legend since around eight years old. He soloed in the company's first aircraft, and he uh, he achieved first place this year in Swamp Stole uh, with this Moex. So everyone, give a round of applause as he taxis by. It's Luke Spore. Folks, here we have these beautiful Legend Cubs made in Sulphur Springs, Texas by Randy and Darren Hart. They got a great company up there and some great people working for them. If you want to see an airplane with some fine craftsmanship, come have a look at some of these Moex here. Here comes Brian. That's right, this is Brian Shirley in a 2020 through. The paint's not even, 2023, Legend Moak. The paint's not even dry on it. He's from Dodge City, Kansas, born and raised there. He's got 30 years of off-roading experience. Also used to race circle track, another motorsports, you know, classic motorsports guy. So I want you to notice, Ryan, right there, you see that step that's on the landing gear of, of this particular Moac. Brian asked for that. And of course, Darren does custom alterations. You can go in and talk with uh, Darren and he'll build the plane that you want to build, the colors that you want, whatever you need. Uh, you can go to Sulphur Springs, Texas or contact those folks and they'll build the plane you want. And of course, we're about to see here in a minute, they perform. Absolutely. And they've got their work cut out from, because guess who's coming up next from Wasilla, Alaska in a 1956 Piper Super Cub. The Piper Super Cub is the granddaddy of all bush planes. This one's named Pepper. It's flown by Keith Lang. Now, you, did Keith tell you how long it took him to get down here? It was like 40-something hours. 47 hours. 47 hours in a Super Cub to get down here to compete. And what a, what a fine competition we've got going on here. And look, folks, we got to give a shout-out uh, you know, as, as an event organizer, I got to give it up for the, the town of Gallatin. The town of Gallatin has just done a great job, rolled out the red carpet here. This airport has done such a fine job and all these great volunteers out here making this thing happen. So we've got Luke up against the line, waiting for Lexi to pull him up. That's right. So here's the lineup real quick. It's the Legend Aircraft Adventure Class. First up front, Luke Spore in that 2019 Legend Super Cub Moac from Sulphur Springs, Texas. Behind him, Brian Shirley in that brand new 2023 Legend Moac from Dodge City, Kansas. And Keith Lang in the 1956 Piper Super Cub from Wasilla, Alaska. So that's the Legend Cub Adventure Class. And so while, you heard, oh, go ahead, go ahead. You heard Luke talking about that 210 horsepower, folks. You're going to get to see some of that when he comes up here to the line. Um, when he start, when he hits that throttle, that tail is going to come up, and then Luke will be able to come out. Now, Luke is an experienced stole pilot for such a young person. Take the line. When ready, go. And he's coming up to the line now. He's flown at Sun and Fun. He's flown at Oshkosh, and now here he is. for you at Gallatin, Tennessee. Here he comes. Look at that. Oh, it's a short one. Very nice. Um, we're looking at what, a uh, 78 maybe? 79? Outstanding. And that's that 210 horsepower that we're talking about, folks. Oh. And here comes Brian Shirley onto the line. Now, that's a custom paint job. That is exactly as Brian wanted it. Look how close they are. Sub 100 feet there for Brian Shirley. And now we've got Keith Lang coming up to the line in that Super Cub. 
And here he comes. Here comes Keith and his Super Cup all the way down from Alaska. Man, you'll, you'll grow a long hair coming down from Alaska. <laughs> Ran into him yesterday. Taylor, look at this. Putting Taylor on a down. clinic. Another sub-100 foot takeoff. So, so here comes Granddad. Here comes Granddad showing how it's done. And now as they make the ray around the pattern, Reese Duckhan. Once again, I cannot get enough of saying your name, friend. Uh, who you got there with you now? We are here in the heart of the crowd. This is a family event. This is none other than my sister from Kingston Springs. How are you enjoying the show, Hallie Dockin? It's beautiful out here. I love it. And I'm glad I get to see my brother. And the gentleman behind the camera. Do you introduce him? Brennan. I grew up with him doing all the shenanigans with you as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love the Gallatin crowd. Everyone loving airplanes. What is your favorite part of being here? Growing up with a grandpa who loved airplanes, just getting to see you and your love with airplanes and just having a great family time. Read the mom. Hi, mom. What's up, mom? Back to you, Ryan. And you couldn't have timed that better because look who just landed come. real short. Real short. He's got the wheels locked up. Now he's putting the pressure on it. He's about 130. Not bad for Luke Sport. Not bad at all. Did he scratch? No, he did not scratch. Let's watch it on the, the re oh never mind so let's watch it on the replay here there we go oh yeah well nice. over the line very nice for Luke Sport. okay so we've talked about this before ryan in the in the psychology of these contests he's got one in the books now and here brian comes brian Shirley with a oh, scratch, with a scratch. For brian Shirley. brian has been uh, fun to watch on the circuit all these years he loves new airplanes that's right <laughs> he's Who always doesn't? got a new cool airplane you know his plane smells new did you know that? If you oh, stick your man. head in, maybe it I haven't even been me. over by it. I'm yeah, afraid. He, he took delivery of that plane in June, and so it is literally like new, 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 new. Yes, that new airplane smell. You just want to <sighs> new. Got to breathe smell. it in. Yes. Here's and Keith here Lang now in that Super Cub. He calls it Pepper because it's black. Coming in long. Real safe. Real safe. Now, he's got one in the book. So let's let's talk about the longest distance in any stole pilot is the distance between their ears. It, it, you got to get into their head, okay? So these guys, they're trying to get one in the books. they got four tries here. And if you scratch on your first one, now you've only got three tries. So Brian, he didn't mean to, but he kind of put some pressure on himself. Right. And and he's got a little pressure on himself. Where on the other hand, Luke is coming by. He know he had He knows he had a good run. He and, knows he had a good run. And Keith, you know, that was a longer landing. He gave up a bunch of oh, just 100. getting over the line. He's right now we've got Luke Spore, 235, and Keith Lang with 304. Brian could be anywhere in there, right? He could oh, be sure. anywhere in the minute. So those guys both had to, even though he scratched that round, they need to continue to put up good scores and good performances. Brian coming by. He's still smiling. He knows he's got one in the books now, and he's, he really wanted to have that, but he knows also knows he was 100 feet long. So I love aviation is, on that. is here. I'm wondering, you are a Bush pilot. I'm wondering if you agree. He said, what's the best thing, safety thing you can learn landing short? Do you agree with that? Well, let's watch Luke take off first, and here he comes. Very nice. He's uh, not quite as good as his first, but he's already got one in the book, so he might be able to win with his first takeoff. And he knows that, ladies and gentlemen. He's sitting in the cockpit right now, and he's got that in his head. You might want to mark that one for review. I saw the names come off at like And here comes Brian Shirley to the line with his custom steps. Getting that tail. Whoa! He cut back okay. down around 100 there. So one of the problems I was having, um, I had to keep taking another bite. And you saw Brian Shirley. He pulled just, just a few feet too early. Then he came back down and he bounced. And, of course, we measure the length by the last time the tires hit the ground. I'm sure Ryan explained that to everybody. And that'll cost you. Here comes Keith. Very smooth, but a little long. So, so Keith is off the ground. Keith's off the ground now. Let's look at the takeoff distances. Luke Spore coming in with an improvement to 80 feet. Takeoff of 80 feet. 
Brian Shirley with a little bit of an increase down to, down to 110 from 101. And Keith Lang with a significantly longer takeoff that time with 139. So it's still anyone's game. We've got a bunch more landings we can do, a bunch more things we, uh, we have to do. I want to talk about some of our sponsors that bring this to life, this adventure class to life. We've already talked about Legend Aircraft, but we also need to talk about FlightHelmet.com and our friends over at Air Tech Coatings. So FlightHelmet.com, you can guess what they do. They make flight helmets, hashtag.com. But then Air Tech Coatings, you want to make paint fly. Absolutely, you know, Mr. Robbie look. Stanton. Yeah. Uh, Kelly I, Qualls and all those fine folks with Air Tech. Yeah, they do, they're doing beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. And of course, Legend Aircraft, like the Legend Aircraft we see right now with Luke Spore coming in, short final holding it off. That was pretty good. He ran out of almost all of his energy right before he landed. Folks, if you can post a 102-foot landing, you're doing good. Going around for Brian, Brian Shirley. Around. He probably got his spacing off a little bit on the downwind. Uh, Luke might have been flying a little slow. Brian might have been flying a little fast, and he's going to go around for safety and, then, and take another setup at it. So they're asking, what's the, the best thing you can learn for bush flying? Well, the, the, the observation was the best thing you could do for safety as a pilot in general is learn how to land short. Do you agree with sure, that? Sure, I totally agree. I mean, you're a pilot, soft field takeoff, soft field landing. Yeah. And, and I talk all the time about how I fly a lot of young eagles. I flew a couple of young eagles before I came up here. And it does give me, here comes Keith. looking good. He's got to get that power out and get that nose oh. up. Oh, no. Oh, it's close. It's close. Are we going to? She doesn't know. We're going to have to go to the tape. Going under review. Let's We're check out the replay. Tape. What do we think? I say no. Oh, I say it's good. I, but look at it's the, good. Look, no, it's good. There's a shadow no, under there. Look at the dust right there. But Oh, you think that's a left wheel? Yeah, there's, I think the, ju dust the judges the called wheel. it a scratch. I, you couldn't get much closer to that. It was like two wow. inches. That is amazing. Now, here's and Brian Shirley. After the go-around, you do see go-arounds sometimes get in the head. You said, what was the thing you said about between your ears? That's wow. right. That's He's got, oh, see? Painless. Very good. There he goes. He gave it just the right amount of power there, a little burp, just to get it over the line. He can go a little slow. He can get a little shorter in that. He knows that. But he gave it just that little bit of power. He did better than me when uh, I accidentally left my power in when I landed. So he's doing a whole lot better than me. So I'm going to give him that. So the thing about safety, when you're flying young eagles, you want to be able – I mean, that's somebody's kid you've got in the airplane. And you want to know that if something goes wrong and you need, and you need to land that plane, that you can do it. No matter where the plane is – and no, no matter how little you've got to put it in, you want to know that you've got those skills, you've developed those skills at competitions like this, that you can put that plane down wherever you need to put it down. And, and so this definitely is a safety factor for any pilot that might want to improve their skills. Real quick before they take off, I want to throw it over to Reese Dockhand, who's hanging with a beautiful family. Who's that right there, Reese? Right behind the Carbon Cub, we've got a beautiful family that wants to say hi to Ned. Hi, Dad. We miss you. And go, Charles. Charles Lilly. Charles Lilly. You got some fans in the paddock, the paddock out here. And uh, who are you rooting for? Charles. <laughs> Charles. She wants to say Charles. You just got to get it out of her for a second. Go, Charles. <laughs> Back to you, Ryan. So we'll see Charles Lilly flying a little bit later in the sport class. Here is Luke Spore now for his third attempt. His best run so far, 183 combined. Take off. Outstanding. Home point updated. There's a computer talking in my ear. Oh, I think that's that is the amazing. drone. It's the drone shots that are happening. That is, a, You're that hearing is amazing. hearing the drone talk to us. Here's Brian Shirley now correcting for that crosswind angle. We've seen that all day. Everyone's trying to get as much as they can. Look how close Short it is. off. We're 125, 126-ish, let's call it. Uh, we'll see that there. Uh, that there. We'll see that there in a minute. Uh <laughs> Now we're okay? going to Keith Lang, who's up front there in the – he calls this airplane – not only does he call it Pepper, he also says it's part of the wolf pack. You can tell why he says that, that beautiful wolf on the front. That, he's throwing down the gauntlet there. There we that go. That might be the – well, Luke Spore had a short takeoff of 80, 
Let's see if he can beat that yeah, here, Yeah, but Keith it's Lang. a combined score. It's a combined score. Once again, if you're a pilot and you're in there competing and you get a really good takeoff, you feel a little bit of pressure because you are you got that good score and now you want to make sure you get a good landing and that puts pressure on you. You feel that pressure coming in on final. I, I want to ask you, so we've been talking about the Legend Cubs and obviously they're the sponsor of this, of this adventure mm -hmm. class. It's a really interesting clinic we're seeing right now. I keep using clinic. Uh, it's a really interesting test we're seeing. We've got the classic granddaddy Piper Super Cub, yep. that 1956 classic bush plane is what I think if anyone thinks of a bush plane up until YouTube, up until Trent Palmer happened, basically, in the Flying Cowboys, you probably thought of a Super Cub. These Moaks, these legend Moaks, could you walk me through as we see Luke Spore land, what's different about them? What do they do to them? And that's a scratch for yeah, Luke Spore. Scratch. Yeah, those winds can be kind of gusty, and when you're setting up right at the edge of the envelope, sometimes the wind can betray you. You know, he didn't even stop, which was a bad idea, because what if he'd have stopped and then he could have gotten, what's the award? What's Most the award? consistent. Most consistent. See, I mean, and, and that's a really good award. I mean, especially, uh, we see a lot of our commercial guys who come in. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, y'all know they're airline pilots who on the weekends, they fly, you know, some major commercial airline. <laughs> on the weekends, they come do this, which is kind of funny, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff going Abrams, from who's... Flying around in that 140, retired airline pilot. That's Here's right. Brian Shirley now. The big thing I want to point out is look at the front of the wings, folks. We're going to talk about that in a second. Nice. So those leading edge slats really improve your airflow across the top of the wing and increase the angle of attack that the plane can come in. And so that's just all the slower that you can come in. So these, these backcountry airplanes, folks, imagine, if you would, a beach like a pebble beach or a, or a hard-packed sand beach on a river. And these guys are coming down the, the river using their motors to, to stay aloft and then cutting the power and landing on the beach and then, then camping on the beach that night. That's what these airplanes are built for. Holy cow, he's good. Ooh, there he's we go, good. Keith. And, that, and that bounce tells you he was all out of energy. That was a good one. That was a good one. He was all out of energy when he hit the line on that one. Keith, I'm guessing based on that landing, we'll wait for the official score to come in, is bridging the gap between him and Brian Shirley. That's right. He's a lot closer now. It's getting tight. Luke Spore kind of healthily in the lead with 183 feet from his second run. Also best from the second run was is Brian Shirley in second place with 240 feet. And Keith Lang just dropped 50 feet-ish, uh, 256 feet. So... Just 16 feet separating Keith from Brian, so I think we're going to see a real battle between second and third place. Yeah, and folks watching at home, if you were ever wondering if you should come to a National Stoll Series event, uh, I just got some grass blown in my eye by a Moak. So, uh, I mean, you are right there. You are right there on the action. Keith is like right there. You know, it is really exciting to be here and to, to smell the exhaust and feel the prop wash and, and get to see this firsthand. Here comes Luke Spore to the line. Luke Spore says that the gun racks are also able to add a little bit of lift. I don't know how that's possible. Maybe he fills it with helium. 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 Totally helium. You fill the gun racks with helium so that uh, you get just a little bit of lift from them. Here comes tail high. Good pull. Good pull. Outstanding, Luke. Okay, folks, so Luke, he took off. You notice when he, he languished just a little bit in ground effect, that was a good takeoff, excellent takeoff. It might not be as good as his first one because he's now getting a crosswind instead of a little bit of a headwind. Um, and the winds are fickle. They are what they are. Ooh. And there goes Brian, not to be left out. I think he beat Luke on that one. I think he beat Luke on that takeoff. He, Brian's, he's out here to compete now. Don't get it twisted. And look, all these guys are friends and everything, and they rib each other, but when they get down on that line, oh, no, it's time to compete. And you were right, by the way, 116 for Luke and 110 for Brian. All right, now where are we going to count Keith? In the 127, 128? There we go. Folks, once again, great Great thanks and a shout out to our great volunteers over there helping line judge today. 
these events take it takes a lot to put one of these events on. I gotta tell you, you uh, may know Ryan, a little Ryan bit about knows that. that. Yeah, I you do. Might know I, a little bit about I have that. my own event, Swamp Stole, that I uh, I throw. We're throwing another event next weekend. It's as we say in French, un petit soirée. It's just a little party. Okay, it's going to be a, a smaller event. Uh, down there in Jennings next weekend, and then at the end of the month, it's a busy month in September, is uh, Arkansas down in uh, Bird's Adventure Center. Uh, so there's a lot going on this month. And here comes Luke Spore. Woo! Right good. on the line he's for good. Luke Spore. He's good. He's got him locked up. He knows he's got a good score there. Outstanding. Good job, Luke. He is happy with that one. His best Absolutely. landing, though, was... 103 feet in his second run. This one was 144. I think we're feeling the wind doing that thing it's been doing all afternoon where it kind of is like, it's there for a little bit yep. and then it's gone for a and little then, bit. And then it, you get a little headwind and now you got a little crosswind. And it, yeah, it kind of it kind of messes with you that way. It's hard to, it's hard to keep up with it. So what is the next National Stole Series event that's coming up, Ryan? Well, we've got Lone Star Stole. Oh. In November, early November. Check out nationalstole.com for that. By the way, if you're checking out nationalstole.com, here comes Brian Shirley right over the line, wow. locking him up. Wow, look at Oh, Brian. look at that, oh, Brian that Shirley. Was awesome. Oh, give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for Brian Shirley. That's hard to beat. If you liked that, you could go to nationalstole.com slash vote. Nationalstole.com slash vote. Vote for your favorite pilot. You could vote for Matt Peterson, I guess, Please. too. But uh, you could probably vote for Brian Shirley instead. Sorry. I don't know. There's a lot kinda, of really popular pilots that out That was here. a low I mean, blow. That was a low it blow. It is hard to beat Sean. You know, you got Sean. Everybody <laughs> likes Sean. Jeff Pohl. He's making favorite, his way home. Favorite does not mean best. Uh, well, okay. You're going to vote Which for me being the best favorite? pilot? You, really? You're going to vote for me being the no, best pilot? No, favorite. Your favorite <laughs> pilot. <laughs> Keith Lang kind of diving oh, in over yes. the line there. Holy cow. He brought it in and locked him up, ladies Look and gentlemen. Look at that. Hearing some nice. cheers in the crowd for that one. Very nice. Outstanding by Keith. Great job. You know, folks, when you come to one of these things, it's also a fly-in. You get to see some really good-looking airplanes. Look at this tail dragger. Look at this straight tail tail dragger coming by. Yeah, 180 or 185. Just, yes, that is an... That is a good-looking airplane. All right. We that. are – it's almost over. It's almost over for the adventure class. No, it is over for the adventure it class. Is. Let's look at the results here. Luke Spore, best run of 183. Brian Shirley with a best run of 240 feet. Couldn't quite sneak up on him. And Keith Lang, big improvement run over run over run. To 253 feet. And I think it's fun. We're seeing some of the pilots. Oh, look at these 180s and things right now. Uh, they are I know what they're lining doing. up on they our line, but on the hard surface to see they how they compare. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. They're uh, participating without participating. That's exactly what they're doing. They're not doing and, five. Are they doing a fifth one? I only see three scores on the sheet. Oh, four. Okay, I want to address this. This is something that needs to be addressed. And as a competitor pilot, I'm going to address it. In the C1 through 4 class, they also got mixed up. And they didn't know if we had done three runs or if we had done four runs. And as they were talking on the radio as to whether or not we were supposed to get another run, I want you to know, right, not one pilot said a word. <laughs> <laughs> they we all, all wanted another run. We huh? all just sat there. Not me, not Micah, not Sean, not Jeff. We all sat there. See, one through four, silent. So I we knew better. So if these guys, you give them another run, they'll run. They'll take it. Speaking of taking it, it's time to take a commercial break. So we're going to go over to commercial. And after this, we're headed over to heat one of the sport class.
What's skeleton like? It's kind of like... close to Nashville. Yeah, but without all the yeah. And there's a ton of stuff to do. You get it. And so does Gallatin. At Aerolids, we believe that innovation is equal parts inspiration and perspiration. Since our inception in 2006, we embarked on a mission to redefine the expectations of aerospace lighting. Entering the aerospace lighting market, which had remained largely unchanged for 50 years and in drastic need of a new product with fresh look and unequaled performance, Aeroleds was inspired to redefine the expectations, which resulted in a series of innovative designs. Hungry for new ideas, backed by a company that valued the patronage, customers quickly adopted the new standard of quality, design, and performance never seen before in the industry. Over the past 12 years, AeroLED's installation, ranging from the experimental and 23 markets up to the space and military applications, with over 15 tactical military platforms featuring products in both overt and covert operations. AeroLED's continues to lead the industry in design, reliability, and unsurpassed performance. Unique in its presence and unmatched in its perseverance, AeroLED's serves the aviation market from one spectrum to the next. From you to you too, Aeroleds is redefining the expectations. And we are back, everybody, getting ready for the sport class. But before we do, we got to do a little debrief. We got to understand what just happened. Reese. What just happened? I was down here with the winner. Congratulations, you've done it. Yeah, I mean, what was it over the top? You know, you had Brian, you had Keith. You were hoping for someone to make a mistake. Yeah, um, I think it just did really good there in the beginning. Got lucky with the wins. They're kind of right down the runway, gust them pretty good. It got a little weird there towards the end, but uh, held in there. I don't think I scratched once, which is new. <laughs> for me <laughs> usually i'm riding that line pretty hard yeah but uh brian and keith both did really good so it was saw their first few landings and i got a little worried there for a second but yeah feels good it, it's gotta feel good. It feels good it helps that brian sex not here yeah, it helps that he's not here to you know cheat and use all his reverse prop and all that stuff but <laughs> yeah so some folks that you uh, that might be watching at home that you want to thank uh yeah mom and darren they're uh they're in Europe right now. I'm sure they're watching, or maybe they're not. They're probably drunk on a beach somewhere having fun, along with Brian Steck. <laughs> so uh, I got roped into working, and they're on vacation. But, yeah, hopefully hopefully, I made them proud today. Yeah, you got a great company behind you, the Legend Cubs. If you haven't already, check them out. They're made in Texas. And uh, congratulations on adding 25 more points Thanks. to the championship chase. Good. Back to you, Ryan. Awesome. Good. Congratulations, Luke Spore, on oh. that run. It was just great. Always fun to watch him compete. We're getting ready to uh, kick off the sport class. And if you thought the adventure class was getting all exciting, well, the sport class is going to turn it up another notch. So all these aircraft getting a little lighter, getting a little more powerful. you got better power-to-weight ratios. And we've got just uh, 
again, you, you've said it before, Matt, the, some of the best pilots in the lower 48. I might say some of the best pilots uh, in the country. I, we could include Hawaii and Alaska in that, maybe? Well, I always say the lower 48 kind of as a qualifier because, you know, this all, this all started in, uh, in Valdez, Alaska. You know, that's where all the, the birthplace of all this mecca of it, if you will. And uh, it's kind of migrated down here, and now the sport just keeps growing and growing and growing, you know, and, and with the great job that National Stoll's doing promoting this sport and putting on great events like this, it's probably just going to keep growing. Yeah. but I mean, actually, you talked about, like, National Stoll helping it grow. Someone who helped it grow from the very beginning, right there, Brian Shirley right. with Reese.can. Let's go back to Reese and Brian. Brian used to help out. I think I, I met him at one of the first National Stoll events. Brian, you had a little trouble putting one together. You were talking. Uh, you did a go around. What was going through uh, your head as you were coming in on short final? I was just trying to put one together, and I got too close to Luke on that one, and it was going to be close, and you kind of hate to crowd him because it gets you off your game a little bit. And Air Boss said go around, and I was glad to hear it, and so I did. Usually they say uh, permission to buzz the tower. No, the pattern is full. But, yeah, when the airing on the side of safety here, uh, go around. And how did you feel going into a, a secondary approach? Oh, it was good. And now I kind of had time to regroup myself because it, it does kind of get in your mind a little bit that you're, you know, you, you got off your routine a little bit. And I was off my routine today altogether. I had, had trouble put one together. But uh, there's no harm in being number two behind Luke and with Keith. So I'm happy. How's that MOAC performing outside of the, uh, you know, normal competitions? Where are you flying this thing normally? Well, I've had it all over the country so far this year. It's it's a brand new airplane. Just got it done. I've had it in the mountains at uh, my home airport up there is at 8,000. I've had it at Leadville, which is 10,000. Uh, my, where I'm actually from is Dodge City, Kansas, and I've had it there is 2,600. So, yeah, I've had it all over the country. It's performing well. A lot of fun. One of the things that you can do is take these things into the backcountry, camp all over the place, and then just enjoy life to the fullest. These are, like I said, the Legend Cubs out of Texas. If you haven't already, check them out. Back to you, Ryan. Thanks so much, Reese. And we are getting ready to get this first heat of sport class started. We're going to do some intros, show you a little bit of who you've got to watch next. Let me see where they're at. Oh, they're look at that. we got like a cool ultralight. Thing. It's like a mini air cam. It's like, is that a drifter? You could land that that is on a the drifter. Rivers. Ah, nice. Oh, Thank you turn. very much. We got the assist here in the audience. That's a Max Air drifter. Love seeing that. Love seeing it with uh, the amphibs on it. That looks like a heck of a lot of fun to fly in, especially a day like today with all this heat. Well, you know, there's a the whole river system just north of here that, you know, with cliffs. It's beautiful. You we know, I don't know that because I've been on the ground this whole time. Uh, you know what? The invite went out. The invite went out. I said, yeah, who wants to go yeah, flying? Right. And Reese took me up on it. Yeah, Reese. And then off we went. Reese, you know? yeah, my name isn't Reese, though. I had way too much gas in the plane. Yes, yeah. I had too much gas in the plane today, if we're really being honest. So we're going to watch this drifter take off. And then uh... here he goes. Look at him. He's. You know what he's doing. There he goes. That looks like a lot of fun. That was awesome. Speaking of a lot of fun, look who it is, folks. It's the first heat of sport class in November 98. Charlie, Charlie, it's Rick Boardman in a 2015 Cub Crafters Carbon Cup SS all the way from Henderson, Nebraska. That's Rick Boardman. Now, yesterday in practice, Rick was doing really good. He was getting that tailwheel down first, coming in at that high angle of attack, letting the plane stall across the line. You know, um, we mentioned Luke's dad, Brian Steck. You like that? And yeah, I, we I mentioned wonder what Brian, Brian Steck, Steck likes about we, that. We mentioned Brian Steck because, you know, he's doing just great uh, on his vacation. But Brian has a video online of what I call the perfect stole landing in a legend cub he stalls just before he hits and i mean when it when it gets in those shocks just play out he is done he is out of energy here's your next competitor for uh, sport class it's nick ardillo everybody cheer for nick ardillo in the 2014 cub crafters carbon cub ss it's the red and white one he's from dallas texas 15,000 total flying hours from this guy, everybody. Nick Ardillo. So if he's from Dallas, we should see him at Lone Star, right? 
Sounds like we should. I mean, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to to uh, Sulphur Springs. He ought to be able to come on up there. I'm I'm sure that the Sulphur Springs Airport is going to host awesomely, and National Stoll be there putting on an awesome show. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's all no- the way from Wyoming. Idaho. Idaho. All the way from Idaho, what? it's Joel Milloway. Joel Milloway in a 1996 Rams you know S7. He calls it the Tiger Shark. He's got the Roberts Bush gear, got the backcountry custom planes work on it. Everyone give a round of applause for Joel Milloway. So, folks, Luke came up here in the booth, and he's like, you know, Brian's not my daddy. And I said, yeah, but he's your, he's your daddy because he beats you so much. He said, not today. Not today. Luke is number one today. Top of the heap. I tell you what, he did a great job flying. By the way, folks, if you ever get to meet and talk to Luke Spore, don't be fooled. That young man has thousands of hours, sits right seat okay. in corporate jets, and just knows all about aviation, has a lot more knowledge than his years would, would suggest. So if you get a chance to talk to him, make sure you go over there and talk to him. And talk about those Legend Cubs. Man, those are some great airplanes. So Rick Boardman up front now. You'll see him right after number 682, Nick Ardillo and Joel Milloway. But then don't, don't get, don't, don't get too excited. You can't call it before it's over because there's a whole second heat of sport class with Gary Varga, Justin Tisdale. And while they're getting ready to go, we're going to go over to Reese Duckhand with Keith Lang. Yeah, we were. Hey, hey, everybody. We're with Keith Lang, an Alaskan bush pilot. It was a little tough out there for you, huh? It was. It was. I, uh, I just couldn't hit the numbers just perfect. The wind was a little switchy, but you know what? I did as best as I could with what I got. And those Moax make it challenging, don't they? Oh, man. Them are some beautiful birds, and the pilots are good. You know, it's, it's competition, and you do what you can. And that old uh, 56 Cub, she does what she can. The old wolf pack's gone hungry today, but third place is still third place, right? right? I'll take third place. That's got to get me pretty good on the numbers for the finals, so I'm happy with that. Give out some shout-outs to the friends and families at home watching. Oh, yeah. My grandkids, Atlas, Apollo, and Athena, love you guys, and I'll be seeing you soon, heading to Charlotte, and uh, love you all, and talk to you soon. All right, back to you, Ryan. We're having a blast out here. Dude, I just, uh, I'm so glad you got that big hat on, Reese. It's uh, the sun's out there. By the way, everybody in the crowd, because I haven't nagged you enough about it as your dad, you got to put on some sunscreen. Now's a good time to put on a little extra sunscreen. Drink a little extra water or wear good or buy job. one of the National Stole straw hats. Here goes Rick Boardman now. Rick. Whoa! Good okay. Pull, good pull. All right. It's the sport class. Sports class. Yeah. Now we're getting into it. Good pull right there by Nick. I mean, uh, Rick. <laughs> the Rick Nick. Good pull by Rick. He, I mean, he really timed that well. And look at these flags. They're getting a little bit of a headwind. So we're really going to see something. There's a carbon cub right behind Woo! him. All right, there goes Nick Gardillo. Let's talk about these two pilots, just the first two. Rick Boardman, approximately 12,000 hours of flying. And guess what? Nick Gardillo, 15,000 hours of flying. They're both professional pilots. Nick flies for a major airline. Rick's doing... Uh, uh, agriculture stuff. And look, Joel Milloway in the Tiger Shark. Just like, hey, guys, I can also take off super short. What do you think of that? So Joel's from up there around Steve Henry's way, Utah. Is it Utah Idaho? Utah. Idaho. Idaho. It says Idaho Idaho. right here. He knows a good potato when he sees one. So, okay, so here he is. I'm telling you, to come all this way to these competitions, you really got to admire these guys who, who get in these small planes and fly all the way across the USA. Well, guys and gals. Absolutely. Absolutely. And since we're talking about Carbon Cubs, can I give a shout-out? Can I give a shout-out to Jaden Newman? Oh, Possibly yeah. Possibly one yeah. of the Jayden best Newman, Carbon yeah. Cub drivers you ever want to find. Um, she has excellent timing. She knows just when to take off and when it's just the perfect amount. Um, if she were here, she, I guarantee you she'd be in Bumblebee, her carbon cub, and, and the, she'd be giving everybody out here a run for their money. Yeah, she's an amazing pilot, really fun to watch, and only, only can see more and more and more from her. Hope to see the FX3 in the sport class as Tasty Basie. Yeah, that would be a cool thing to see. And the other thing that uh, I was just texted uh, 
A little birdie texted me and said, hey, I don't know if you noticed, but the density altitude has risen 1,370 feet there since the rookie class. Good, Rick, good. hold it. No, oh, no, oh, no. oh, oh. Don't do it, Nick. He's, don't do it. Wow. Don't do it, Rick. Don't he do did it. it. There okay. He goes. Okay. Whee. Holy cow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we, we do have the occasional, uh, we do have the occasional incident. Uh, where somebody gets on the brakes too hard and uh, sometimes props go places they don't want to go. But most of these pilots, they know exactly how hard they can break their aircraft without hitting the prop. Uh, Warren Grobelar even had all of his friends uh, back at his hangar. They put the prop down and they lifted the tail and they said it was like 12, 13 feet in the air before the prop would strike. So he knew he was in good shape. But Rick knows, Rick knows what he's doing. Here comes Nick. Get that tail up. Get, those, get on those brakes, Nick. What do you think, folks? Was that Excellent. a scratch or was it good? That one's under review. Let's go to the replay. Okay, we got... Ooh. And the judges are calling that a scratch. I agree, but, like, only by a few inches. I cannot believe how many one- to six-inch scratches we're seeing today. Like, people are really cutting it close, and uh, that just shows how competitive they are. We should have Joel... Yep, there's Joel Milloway now. So I really think that speaks to the skill of these pilots. When I say you're, you're flying with some of the best in the lower 48, and whenever I say you're, you're looking at some of the best pilots in the lower 48, these are the best pilots in the lower 48. And Joel flew all the way from Wyoming to compete with these guys. Here he comes. Get that power out. Hard on those brakes. A little bit of break fade. Got it stopped short. They're ready to, for him to go. Uh, I got a correction from the booth, not yeah. Wyoming. I'm stuck on yeah, Wyoming, you're stuck on and Wyoming. Gentlemen, because when I met Joel, it was at the Pinedale event in Wyoming, which is a great event. Hopefully, it'll stay on the National Stole Series. Uh, it is just a great event there in Pinedale, Wyoming. And the good folks of Pinedale really put on a good show and really roll the red carpet out. But that's where I met Joel. So I've got Wyoming stuck in the brain when I look at that airplane. Speaking of looking at airplanes, check out Reese and Brennan. They're in front of an airplane right now. Reese, what are you standing in front of? Jim Abbott here, local pilot to the area. We were talking a little bit about your, your uh, military history and your service to the country and also putting your life at risk for the community with the helicopters and the police force. Now talk about what your goals are in aviation. Well, right now, today, my goal was not to bust the airplane up and embarrass myself in front of everybody. So, you know, it was really fun. Like you said, I, I, uh, my dad was a service member, a pilot. My brother uh, was a military pilot. My wife's uh, just retired from military. So the whole family's in the military. I did that, and, you know, I said I did some community service with the police. I did some EMS service, you know, just always wanting to serve and do something for the community. But for the goal now is, I told my wife, I said, my, my airplane's too heavy. I can't slow it down. I can't stop. And she goes, well, we're not changing airplanes. I said, well, it needs better brakes and needs to lose weight. I need to lose some weight off the airplane. She goes, well, if you lose 20 pounds, you, <laughs> you, you'll lose some weight off the airplane. There you go. So that's kind of my goal now. It's like, you guys warned us, it'd get in our blood. So this was the first first go, and it was personal best for me, you know, so it's kind of addicting. I'm looking at how far is it to fly to this next gig <laughs> and uh, keep flying to the rookie class. So that's kind of, kind of how it's been going. It was great fun today, and I got to say, the aviation community is always really close-knit, and people's always really friendly, but... The pilots here that, that are professional, national-level pilots here are the friendliest, uh, just most open and approachable guys. They're saying, hey, try this. Not try this today, but this is the technique we use. This is what we're doing, you know, and, and it's been super helpful. You're talking to the leaders in the class, and they just talk to you, helping you out. So it's been great. And let's just talk about the friendliness here in Gallatin. I was actually just walking down the paddock a little bit further over here where the hangars are, and I just saw a beautiful red car. Went to talk to him. His name's Don. He led our formation flight. Happened to be your father. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Dad's on the local board here, and uh, the community, the, you know, the mayor went. It, we've just the support has been great, and the community coming out has been awesome. Just you always hear about airfields closing. You never hear about airfields opening and what the economic impact is only for fun and family and STEM, you know, the science, the technology, you know, the, all these things, it all starts here. This is a grassroots place, but it's also, as you've seen, we got multi-million dollar biz jets up and down, in and out all day long. So we've got the whole spectrum here and we're trying to grow a, a good aviation community and be good stewards of it and continue to press that out into the family. It's not a noise complaint. This is a good thing. 
And we'll keep ringing that noise. It is a good thing. Aviation's a great thing. Back to you, Ryan. Thanks so much, Reese. And man, have we seen some amazing takeoffs and landings. Eric Farewell's back with me in the booth. What did we just see, Eric? We saw we saw a hundred foot takeoff, less sub sixty six foot takeoff by Joel Milloway there. It's it's getting insane. The reaction from both at the same time, both hands up. What did we just see? So much energy already in that airplane, and just sixty six feet plus Nick Ardillo. I mean, this guy was a rookie just six months ago, absolutely levitating his Carbon Cub SS. This is the kind of performance that we love here at National Stole. The sport class really sending it. Let's get ready to see what happens when this next landing happens because a 66-foot yeah. takeoff could put him solidly in the lead if he's able to nail the landing. Yeah, I mean, and I want to say again, this is the Duke Propeller Sport Class, and we're seeing some real amped-up competition now. Here we go. Like, like Eric mentioned, 66-foot takeoff for Joel Milloway. The best next takeoff was 81 feet by Rick Boardman. There he is, bouncing it in. Good over the line. A little bit of fade to the left. I think he's actually doing that purposely. You notice that he lined up on the right corner of that runway, faded it off to the left, able to use the cross section of the runway, the whole width of it, not just its length, probably saving him 10 to 15 feet in overall distance. He's thinking through this the long game way, flying 17 hours to get here. He had plenty of time to think through exactly what he wanted to do to give himself a little bit of an edge. Love to see it. As they taxi around, Eric, we got to mention a few other sponsors that have helped make the sport class possible. Again, Duke Propeller, can't thank them enough for their support. But also Avi Nation, Matt Harris and Brian Harris Homes and Jet Access. Jet Access, really appreciate them. Uh, put a little party on for all of us and the competitors last night, and that was just a, a bang up time. Oh, it was a great time. Great people, really excited to see a lot of their staff out here volunteering to help us throughout this process, whether they're on the ramp, in the paddock, or right here on the runway. Rick Borman, no win. Absolutely zero, zero, not what he's looking for, but the flaps are ready, he's pulled early about 140 feet, 130 feet. There he, he's wished that he had that win that just came through now. What a bummer. But that's all right, because Nick Ardwillo has it lined up. He might be able to get a little bit more of an advantage. Again, this is the same airplane lacking just a few mods. Nick's a Southwest Airlines pilot, and I hope he's not flying oh. the 737 like that. There we go. For Nick Ardwillo, the big difference between the two is that belly pod. And we talked about it yesterday during practice. Uh, Rick Borbin's belly pod. If you ask Josh Richling, who's the crew chief of Steve Henry, uh, he says that belly pod actually gives Rick Borbin an advantage. I, ab I completely agree with that, but I actually would counter you a little bit. I think that the slats are what give him the biggest advantage, especially if you look really carefully at the way he's able to stay behind the power curve on those very low approaches. He gets his nose so high, it seems almost impossible, but the wing doesn't stall because those slats really give him a competitive advantage, allowing him to get it just slow as can be. And that's what you want. So as we guys, we're getting wrapped into this now. This is what, the third run? We've got one more after this? Yeah, one more after this. So. The other thing I gotta say, right, is we had a couple changes come in. First, we have a second heat of sport class. We've got Gary Varga, Justin Tisdale, and Sheldon Hetherington. We've got some Zeniths come into play and a one of one World Aircraft Vision come into play. That's very exciting. The other thing that's a little bit of a switch up, and maybe Joel Milloway's a little happy about this in his Rans S7. The other Rans S7, Patrick McIntyre, decided, you know what? Instead of being in the sport class, I'm gonna throw some cash down and I'm going to compete in the unlimited class. So that's a little bit of a changeup. Here comes Rick Boardman now in the 2015 Cub Crafters SS. There he is, getting it slow, just like we talked about. All the energy into the gear. Watch those slats start to slide forward. He's balancing it as carefully as possible. Wow, beautiful <laughs> control. <laughs> oh, man. He knows how to ride that balance just exactly. When we saw it on that first run, we were all like, ooh, Rick. But he knows he, that those 15,000 or 12,000 hours of flight time, that really pays off, right? And he knows how to work an airplane. Speaking of high flight time, again, Nick Ardillo coming in. Really nice control, keeping the wings level. Winds are off and on, side to side. Beautiful control from Nick. 
I have enjoyed watching him progress so much from the rookie class at Swampstall all the way to where he is now, going toe to toe with the best in the country. Absolutely awesome to see. And I want to talk a little bit more about that unlimited class entry because unlimited class is the class where anything goes. You've got nitrous, no problem. Whatever you want to do in your airplane, that's the place to do it. And one of the things that comes as an advantage is not only can you take your friend's money, but the prizes are better. So we've got some great prizes and that's what Patrick is in there. He's going to be battling it out with Charles in the carbon cub. But right now, Joel is on your left, low and slow. Slow is right. Oh, it just dropped out on him there a little too slow. And that's really heartbreaking because that is the landing he would have wanted to be the best of the day. The wind was perfect. His control was beautiful. Just a little too little too late there on the scratch. So we've got one more run for the sport class. Uh, this first heat of the sport class, I should say, the Duke Propeller Sport Class. So Rick Boardman's taxiing by. Nick Ardillo will be right behind him. Joel Milloway in the Tiger Shark right after him, all the way from Idaho. It's going to be a good one to see how it wraps up. The current standings, Joel Milloway, I was about to say healthily in the lead, but actually it's still pretty tight. 179 feet for Joel. Rick Boardman, 209. And Nick Ardillo, just behind him with 234 feet. But remember, we have three more competitors that are going to come compete. And we've got particularly the Zenith 750s, something to look out for uh, when they compete. So it's not over till it's over. I just know this for a fact. I know that Nick Ardillo is going to be thrilled with a 234, being that close behind someone with Rick Morbin's experience in a carbon cub and in the tailwheel aircraft. Whoa, okay. It's astounding. But so, oh my goodness, speaking of his experience, the line judges are baffled. 75-ish feet? Sub-75? Hey, Sub-75 for sure. Uh, just came in as 68 feet. Oh, my goodness gracious. 68 feet for Rick Boardman. Nick that, now hot on his tail. And look at the gust. Got a little bit of wind on his nose. Oh, okay. All right. A little bit longer than Rick, but still super short. We're now dealing in 1.2 to 1.5 F-14 Tomcats. Hey, you know what? As long as we make the measurements in F-14s, we're doing something right. Joel now taking the line, cheating to the right, expecting to play with a little bit of that crosswind. Watch as he drifts across the runway and floats off around 60 feet. <laughs> I didn't expect to see an S-7 giving Rick Borman this much of a run for his money. Great control as always. I uh, just got a note from race control. They said you can use any measurement that you'd like for explaining this except the metric system we got to keep it either freedom <laughs> units or uh or random airplane length so we'll keep working that yeah we can't talk meters i don't even know i, don't I, even know I prefer the metric system it makes more sense but metric system did not get them to the moon so I feel that's like right we got something going wait for did us. the metric system get him to the moon does I'm, nasa use the metric system i think they probably I'm do i'm sure they do <laughs> <laughs> all right rick boardman now High and to your left, got those wig-wag lights back and forth on his uh, wings. I believe those are Aero LED lights, one of our sponsors, and I have to say, I love their technology. Even on a bright, sun sunny day like today, you can see those lights coming. Rick lighting up the sky, and on short approach now, let's watch as he transitions into that nose-high behavior that we expect. Power coming in. Getting all the energy out and across the line. Perfect. Perfect <laughs> balance. Perfect <laughs> balance for Rick Boardman. Only giving me a slight heart attack there. One of our commenters said <laughs> that his heart rate just jumped to 190 after watching Rick's first landing. But then he said, this is a master's class. Absolutely. Exactly what it is. And Nick is now be quick becoming one of those masters. New to lighter aircraft. He has been absolutely Mr. Consistent, adding a you touch of power. Just jinxed it for him. Ah. Mr. Consistent, and then he scratched. Nick, when you watch this back later, because most of the competitors do, uh, it's Eric's fault. It is my fault, Nick. I take full responsibility, and I will not be flying Southwest tomorrow just in case. <laughs> You gotta use caution around here. All right, guys, let's take a look at the current standings. I believe that the latest ones will be rolling in in just a moment. We do see that our friend Joel Milloway is in the lead. 
His score last run was 177. I'm waiting for the landing report right now. I'll have it for you in just a second. So oh. Joel Milloway is actually back by two feet. Rick Boardman's in the lead at 177. Joel Milloway, 179. And here he comes for his fourth landing. It's going to be tight, Eric. Very, very tight. This is not the landing he was hoping for, though. It's going to be a bit longer than anticipated. 177, 179, and 234. An incredible first round here for this first flight. What do you, would you rock a, a tiger paint With scheme? a pinup girl on the back? I feel like anyone would be a fool not to. <laughs> All right, so that wraps up the first heat of sport class. Rick Borman, bring in the smoke. Rick Borman's going to smoke us out here in the booth. Thanks. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Thanks for that. And ladies and gentlemen, that smoke <laughs> is health consci conscious. It doesn't even kill mosquitoes. We wish it did. That's great. Oh, I think he maybe did he blow our camera? Yeah, he even blew our camera sideways. <laughs> so we need some help with that from our production crew. He blew the Hi guys <laughs> blew the camera over. Uh, that's fantastic. Nick Nick's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> look at all this smoke on the drone shot there. That's uh, Rick Boardman uh, establishing dominance with his two-foot lead in front of Joel Milloway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it's two feet's two feet, all right? That it is what it is. It's all right. We're trying to direct the camera, and the camera went a little too far, so I'm going to pass it to this guy. We're going to turn the camera this way just a little bit. Oh, other way. Keep, yep, 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 yep. There, there we, we go. go. Got, Got it. it. Guys, we are all along on the same adventure. We get to watch cool airplanes. You get to experience us trying to figure out how to direct a camera. So thank you very much. The other thing I'm noticing about our trailer is it's still filled with smoke. <laughs> it is still filled it's with smoke. hanging around in here. Oh, man. Okay, so we're getting ready to go over to the next heat of sport class. And then after then, it's going to be a grudge match between Patrick McIntyre in the Rans S7, very similar to what Joel Milloway just did, and then Charles Lilly in a 2016 Carbon Cub. We've got Nebraska versus Tennessee. I know who you guys in the crowd are going to be cheering for. I've heard a lot of calls for Charles Lilly. Charles is a newcomer to our event. And he said that he signed up for Unlimited because he wanted to race with the best of the best. And thankfully, Patrick jumped in with us. Absolutely awesome. So we're going to head over to some commercials, and we will be right back with the second heat of the Music City Soul Sport Class. It's time to say yes to new adventures, to find joy in the little things, and to spend time laughing with the ones you love. Create moments you will never forget and moments they will never forget. Connect with nature and catch up with old friends. It's time to take a trip to explore the beauty of all that Sumner County has to offer because memories are made of this. I got that right turn, we're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound and group up. I turn four. Good little driver, straight on through. Big old bush tires, and there's nothing boring about being on top of the world. I think you got them. Congratulations, two feet. Yeah, that's what they're telling me, two feet. Um, yeah, it was a uh, little bumpy conditions, a little rough. You didn't know which way it was coming from, and 
I have some tough competition out there. Yeah, Joel's not going to let it go lightly. And uh, by two feet, the heat is not over, as Brendan said. But, yep. you know, uh, what are you feeling? You know, the Carbon Cup performing or what? It's doing really good. Um, wish I could figure out how to get it off the ground a little quicker, but it's doing good. You're over here chatting with Patrick. You were saying uh, you, you, you noticed something. Maybe you're doing something different, dragging your toes or something? Yeah, I could tell that he was kind of dragging on his first three takeoffs. So um, that fourth one was phenomenal. He probably got 30, 40 feet off of it. Just changed his technique a little, huh? Yeah, I just, I think my toes were dragging uh, a little bit on the brakes. And I, so I repositioned my feet for that last one. And I could tell it right away that things were different. And it's just, it's margins of inches, cool. you know, that's two feet. Yeah. That's all we needed. That's awesome. Congratulations, <laughs> yeah, my man. Go, man. All right. It's ball Thanks. smiles right here with Rick Borman. Back to you, Ryan. Awesome. Thanks so much. And you're right. Two I, feet, two foot congrats, difference, and it's just wow. a little bit. A little a little uh, a little bit is all it takes. We <laughs> sorry. I'm getting <laughs> tired over here in the booth. I think er we broke Ryan. You guys. broke you broke me. Eric, farewell now with uh, in the booth with me as well. <laughs> and we're getting ready for the second heat of the sport class and we also have uh an exhibition aircraft that's gonna play with us a little bit this beautiful air cam will teach you and a little bit more about that in a second but let's get ready to go here in the sport class so rick boardman's got a got a pretty healthy lead and i think he he could be maybe confident about maintaining that but it's anyone's game still we've got a bunch of new aircraft entering the mix. The AirCam is not going to participate uh, in terms of competitiveness, but we'll be there just to see what kind of numbers that they put down in that aircraft. It's it's not part of any specific class because it's twin engine, and it's very weird. So uh, <laughs> that said, though, yesterday in practice, his numbers were exceptional. We saw some really, really beautiful numbers. And speaking of beautiful numbers, we'd like to jump out to talk to Patrick McIntyre. Pat, who I just totally ruined your name, Pat. Apologies. But Reese, walk us through why he's in the, in the Unlimited class. Pat, why don't you tell us? Why are you in the Unlimited class? Well, you know, I started a couple competitions ago in the rookie, and then my last competition I was in the sport class, so I figured this one I'd just go for the unlimited. Well, I think all the other competitions so scared that they're miles and miles away. You don't have Hal Stockman and his Rans S7, and uh, we, of course, Steve Henry and his Highlander. Yeah, I, I think they heard I was entering up. They, uh, they ducking, they're ducking me. Didn't want to come out and compete. Maybe it has something to do with the fact they weren't here, so I entered up late. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Win's a win, baby. Hal, Steve, where are you guys? Patrick's here to take the W, take the belt, maybe. Yeah. All right, we well. Some Looks like our tent might be blowing away. This massive thermal uh, push Ranza through. 7, um, 100 horse. So now Brother, we're, maybe uh, you can take that carbon cup or what? I think I can. Yeah, Carbon Cup pilots just fly on autopilot, so I, I, I think it should be pretty handy. And it's just Charles, right? It's right. Just, it's Charles. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, love. Agree straight to Charles. Okay, folks, and as you could tell here, we had a little bit of a. A little bit of a gust come through and knock over a couple tents there. Uh, and part of that is that a bunch of debris looks like it may have entered into the runway. So now we have to, one, uh, firm up that tent to make sure that that is all safe and good. And then separately uh, do a little bit of a FOD check on the runway make sure that we keep all the aircraft safe. I can see a couple pieces of paper or something out there, but we'll do a quick check for that as well. Uh, so apologies for the delay while we, uh, we get that sorted out. Thanks to mother nature throwing a little bit of a, a little bit of a curve ball at us. So we'll get that all sorted out. I guess while we get that sorted out, we won't have them taxi cause we have to check the runway. We won't have them taxi, but I can at least introduce you to the aircraft that are sitting in front of you while we get this all sorted out. Yep. 
So first, in one of one, the only aircraft like it in existence currently, a World Aircraft Company aircraft. It's the Sentinel Vision. That's piloted by Gary Varga from Burlington, Wisconsin. He's basically my neighbor. Uh, so that's Gary Varga, folks, in the World Aircraft Vision. Can I give you some quick feedback? Yeah. Gary blessed my heart this morning. He said, I told him, I said, man, you're flying better than I've ever seen you fly. And he said, all I want to do is fly well enough that Ryan will trust me to go for a ride. Oh, man. <laughs> he invited me yesterday, and I said, let's go fly together, man. Uh, so that's Gary Varga from Burlington, Wisconsin, up front. He's going to hold the line there until it's clear. Behind him in the Moustache Flyer, number 18, with Stoll Drag on the tail as well. It's Justin Tisdale squeaking his ducky. Yes, that is not a euphemism, ladies and gentlemen. There is a rubber ducky in his left hand. He says it helps him fly better, and it's just so cuddly. So that's Justin. So Justin Tisdale again in that 2021 Zenith 750 powered by a Duke propeller up front. Everyone calls him Bruno. He has been the one to watch this season. Adversity after adversity after adversity has been thrown at this guy, and he just keeps getting back up. Everyone, give a big round of applause for Justin Tisdale. Justin came out of the military, has had some hard times in life, and built this airplane with his own hands, has rebuilt it, has had struggles with electrical, electrical issues, with engine issues, with all sorts of things. But he wanted to be at every single event this year, no matter what. Next up, we got a special one. Who do we have in the air cam? That's Abe Gaskins. He's one of your local pilots. Here's from Gallatin, Tennessee. Without any sort of cockpit on the thing, he can most certainly hear you. Let's give a round of applause for Abe in the air cam. I love hearing this town cheer on its own. Very nice, Abe. Abe is a great guy, really precise pilot. Expect to see him fly the entire length of the runway, about six inches off, only to drop those wheels just past the line. And now uh, we are going to go over to Reese, who's hanging out with Joel Milloway in front of the Tiger Shark. The Tiger Shark and Joel from Idaho. It's tough out there. Two feet, two yeah. feet. Dang it. It was tough, but... I knew it was going to be like that, so I was just hoping for the best. Uh, two feet, that's what it comes down to. You said it was a little rough up there for that light aircraft? Yeah, it was a little rough, squirrely. It was just kind of throwing them around a little bit. I just I couldn't get on a good line. Um, so it was, I was working up a sweat. But I knew Rick was going to be hard to beat, so I just gave it everything I had. So, I mean, he did the better job, so I guess he deserves it. If there was anything that you can go back and do differently, could you think of one thing? I really can't. I did the best I could for what the conditions were, and I, I don't think I could do anything different. So You had some distractions in the cockpit of maybe. I did. I did a couple of distractions up there, but um, I can't blame it on that. So, Right. Well, in Idaho, you fly maybe with Steve Henry occasionally. What's the conditions out there different than down here? Um, the air is just thinner out there, so we're using a lot more power all the time. Um, we're dropping it in harder. We're getting stopped easier. Um, so it's just a little different down here. Anybody back at home watching, you want to say thanks to the fans of the sponsors? Yeah, all my friends in Blackfoot at the airport, they're watching in the hangar right now. Um, TJ, Cameron, Donnie, um, Stetson, Lindsay, all those guys are all there. So they're cheering me on right now. So um, got to love it. Well, all right, man. We're out here sweating it up for you guys back at home. I hope you are enjoying it. Back to you, Ryan. All right, we're getting ready now for this second heat of the sport class. Let's look at the lineup again, presented by Duke Propellers USA. In front, you've got Gary Varga in that 2012 World Aircraft Sentinel from Burlington, Wisconsin. Behind him, Justin Tisdale in the 2021 Zenith 750 stole from Siloam Springs, Arkansas. Unfortunately, Sheldon Hetherington had a maintenance issue with his aircraft after practice yesterday. He will not compete. They were waiting on a part that didn't arrive. 2010 Zenith 750 stole from 
Gulf Breeze, Florida, and then right behind him, Abe Gaskins in that exhibition class. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look who appeared right behind Justin Tisdale. As I said, he wasn't going to be there. There's a yellow and red plane piloted by Sheldon Hetherington. So Red I, Bird. Red Bird, which is weird because it's a yellow plane, but whatever. It's called Red Bird, and it, we're going to see it fly. So Sheldon Hetherington is there from Gulf Breeze, Florida, and then right behind him is the air cam by... Hey, air boss, uh, you mind if there was a warm-up loop, I'll let the air cam go ahead of me. That's going to mess up, but do the warm-up right now, and uh, we'll hold Gary for a second. Do a warm-up, warm Sheldon. Sheldon was bringing up the fact that his aircraft is water-cooled, and even in Florida's heat, it can take a long time to get that oil up to the correct temperature. So he's asking for a little of extra time right now to allow the engine to come to temp, keeping his, himself and all of us as safe as possible. Ardillo. All While right. we wait for them to heat up, I, I see that Nick Ardillo and Reese Dockhan are hanging out by a plane. Maybe we should uh, go to them while we warm up some engines. Yes, we're here in the paddock. Nick Ardillo came here in the early of the season as a rookie. Now not looking so much like a rookie. How did you fly and how did you feel about your competition up there? The flying was really great. I had a really fun time. I think I scratched three times, but I got one on the board, so that counted. Uh, a lot of fun. My name is Nick Ardillo. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I fly a 2014 Carbon Cub SS. Uh, I want to say hi to my parents that are watching. Also, my 13-year-old son, Nathan. Uh, he's going to watch uh, later this evening. Uh, that was so much fun. This, this, it gets addicting. Now, I see you, you, may, you might be a little bit shaky, a little, <laughs> little bit nervous. You just got out the cockpit. Is it calming how, is, or, or is it nerve-wracking flying this aircraft? Uh, as I get experience, um, it gets more comfortable every time. Uh, there wasn't much wind out there. It was a little swirling wind right there at like 100 feet. But um, yeah, it was, it was pretty nice. I had a, had a great time. I want to thank Eric, Karen, and Tom for allowing us to do four goes this time. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for making that decision. Uh, I know the day runs a little longer for y'all, but it sure is good for us. Those are the national soul, heart and soul of this community series is uh, Tom and Karen. So much appreciated from Nick Ardillo to get four runs. And uh, we'll take it back to you, Ryan down in the booth. Thanks for all y'all do. So while they were finishing up the interview, Eric, we saw a few takeoffs. Any initial reactions to Gary, Justin, and Man, Sheldon? I do. I, obviously, we saw Gary kind of touch again further on down the field, which really hurt his score. But I was blown away by Justin Tisdale. If you watch his footage from earlier this season, the aggression and the control that he has now compared to earlier in the season is amazing. And speaking of amazing, the rocket ship to aim taken to the skies in incredible form in that air cam. If you can afford two Rotex 912s, it's worth it. You should probably buy an air cam. Air cams are really a fabulous aircraft. You guys were talking about it some yesterday. Phil Lockwood designed that aircraft for National Geographic. They were doing an incredible piece on the Amazon River. And while he had a Max Air Drifter as a great film platform, he wanted something that would be reliable enough not to end up in the rainforest. So the air cam is born from a production standpoint necessity. And it has created really an incredibly powerful performance machine, especially as Rotax continues to increase the horsepower of their engines that they make available. And I don't want to turn this into an air cam commercial, but it, in my nerdery, I've noticed that they have demos of that airplane taking off single engine. Oh, yeah. It flies great single engine. But with two, it flies even better. Right now on your left, Gary Varga in that beautiful Miss America. Oh, heartbreak for Miss America on that one. And Gary, by the way, uh, I, give, I gave him trouble the first time I saw him. Now I got a little respect. Uh, rocking shirtless again. Just a lot of confidence in that guy. Uh, I don't remember how old he is offhand, but if I looked like that at his age, I'd be rocking shirtless too. Yeah, me, <laughs> me as well. Uh, he's, he's, he, I mentioned it to him yesterday. He's like, dude, I just got to focus, and if I got the cooler I am, the better I can focus. Uh, so warm, warm heart on that gentleman. Speaking of focus, Justin Tisdale here in almost no wind to a downwind situation, perfectly controlled across the line, heavy into braking. Look at those wheels shimmy. We had a lot of conversations this morning and last night about his setup, his what PSI he's running in those tires, etc. He's constantly trying to find ways to maximize his performance. 
And that's another person, again, who's just totally, you know, we talked about Nick Ardillo starting as a rookie and and coming up and being, you know, uber competitive. Justin Tisdale now, the same thing, uh, putting in a ton of work and overcoming engine problems. A fire at one point is uh, avionics all burned up, had some gear uh, stolen out of his truck at some point. Here's Sheldon Hetherington now. Good over the line, getting those brakes stopped up. This is going to be really, really good for Sheldon. This is what he wants. He really lo was looking to get great numbers on the board that first round. He was heartbroken when he couldn't get in the air this morning. So I'm thrilled to see that he was able to actually get the aircraft repaired and show up to show out just like that. Now, just like I promised, very, very low into the left, about two feet off the ground. Abe is bringing that air cam in and making it look like the air is smooth, which I can assure you it is not. It is a scratch, but great control. And notice that he was uh, doing what you would, you know, all tailwheel pilots learn to do is when you get that good balance, you got to give a little, give a little goose there to soften the next landing. But of course, here that impacts your distance to stopping. 100%. But it was controlled, it was smooth, and it's exactly what we want to see from all of our pilots as they come back through. Who can we talk about? Who can we thank for being here with us? Well, again, we're in the sport class brought to you by Duke Propellers. Really appreciate that. You can see a Duke Propeller on the front of Justin's aircraft here as it taxis by us. Again, also, Avi Nation, appreciate their help. Matt Harris and Brian Harris Holmes and Jet Access. Those are the people who are bringing this sport class to you right now. Also, I think we got to thank all the volunteers, everyone that's been uh, helping us bring this event to you. It takes a lot of person power to do something like this. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six. I can see seven, eight volunteers in front of me just right now, not even including the line judges. We've uh, had dozens at this event. The, honestly, the outpouring of love from this aviation community here in Tennessee is amazing, and it's obvious when you realize how many people signed up to hit, spend their weekend in the heat to bring you National Stole. Gary Varga now, pretty good takeoff. That left main kind of hanging on, but he's got it figured out. Very impressive from Gary. You can see the tail sliding there. Those last 20 feet or so, bringing the aggression just the way you'd hope. And I think we're going to see the exact same thing here from Justin Tisdale in the Moustache Flyer. That's his Instagram handle if you, uh, you do that thing. You do some Instagrammy. Instagrammy, here comes the tail. Almost oh. to the stopper. It's a oh. bounce, and he doesn't oh. touch again. He didn't touch again. I think he did. No. Oh, we are divided. A house divided, Eric. It'll go back to the replay, guys. That is a super close one. I don't think he touched, but uh, I'm not saying my eyes are better. Only one of us is wearing glasses. We're both wearing glasses. <laughs> I didn't try a prescription, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Sheldon now in Redbird. Overcome that axle issue that he had, and now... Has it up and running. That's a downwind takeoff from my eyes right here. Crosswind, downwind, still under 250 feet. Abe now waiting for the call from the air bosses. They'll give him the go ahead, and I think he's probably waiting for this wind to change, but that's all right. He's on the go. Yesterday, we saw him very aggressive in one of his landings. Bum was going up on the nose. Reminded me a lot of Dan Reynolds in his Valdez special. That's right. Dan Reynolds kind of famous for the lawn dart landing he did earlier this year at Sun and Fun. Uh, we've actually seen him in competition, in national stole competition, land shorter than his airplane is long, which is super crazy. And he can do that in part because that Chinook has a pusher prop, and the, just like the air cam has. And then uh, you can kind of just like bang it in there if you feel so inclined. Yes, indeed. That's One the technical term. Us, for those of the people who are not here, they can't feel the winds right now. Walk us through what the weather looks like right now on the ground. Well, I would say it just kind of, ugh. Uh, <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. It's humid. Not as humid as yesterday. So the current weather... Uh, the METAR here is wind 130 at 5 knots. So, it, yeah, you're right. Well, now it's switching back to more of a direct crosswind. Here's Gary Varga really hanging it out there. 
He's good over the line, though. That last one was a scratch, so he needs to get one on the board. Uh, one three zero at five. So yeah, we've got a little bit of a cross one, a little bit of a headwind. I would call it variable based on what we're seeing right now. The visibility ten, awesome. Clouds clear below twelve thousand, clear below forever. Forever. It's Cavu right now, basically. Little clouds off in the distance there. Uh, temperature ninety degrees Fahrenheit. I'm thankful for the shade we have. By the way, water sunscreen, guys. Just want to remind you, water and sunscreen. You need it. <laughs> Heat exhaustion is nothing to joke about, but neither is Justin Tisdale in from the left. Again, super controlled. We're seeing more control from Justin here Woo. than we've ever seen before. Taking the big bounce. Okay. Oh, he's, he's oh, sliding. Oh, okay. Wow, great job, Justin. Getting the <laughs> rudder to the right as quickly as he could, stopping it from that little bit of a almost rollover moment. Whether it was losing the tire or having it go up on the nose, great performance from Justin getting ahead of the airplane exactly as you should. Man, guys, is he putting it all out there or what? That was uh, hashtag sporty. <laughs> hashtag sporty. Came in fast, let, took the bounce. The second bounce started things going a little bit sideways. He's been working to get those brakes to work. And I can tell you right now, it appears that his brakes work. Sheldon now clean and across the line. Heavy under braking. Once again, watch those gear legs shake. These Zenith aircraft, uh, they may be the ugly ducklings, but they're certainly great performers. By the way, these are the same airplane. Same model of the airplane, different engines, different tire sizes, clearly. And different tail, interestingly enough. The rudder on Justin's is much larger than the one on Selton's. And there's a big difference between... Let's watch the air cam here. Got to watch it. Oh, Ooh, it's a scratch. Another scratch. Uh, big difference between the manufacturing year. So I wonder if that... Did, did you know, did Justin put a bigger tail on his on purpose? He did. He did. Or did. So knowing which engine he was going with, he wanted to run a larger tail so he'd have more rudder to be able to impact the torque of that engine. Well, I he actually, definitely used all... He used all the rudder. <laughs> used all the rudder he had right there. So we appreciate him doing that, having that foresight. Yes, indeed. Great performances out here. Great to see Gary Varga out here shirtless and happy. And Tisdale, Tisdale is announcing that he's had to step down. We're grateful to see that he got some great points on the board, but sadly he had a mechanical malfunction in that moment there that we saw that pretty dramatic moment. And he, all is well with his health and everything else, but there is a mechanical malfunction, so he will not be rejoining us. As we see there on the monitors, he's, uh, he's out there looking at his airplane, trying to get her fixed. Yeah, and the word that I heard in my ears was brake pedal broken so i don't know if that means that the pedal and the uh cables the actuators broke or if the actual pedal broke uh he was certainly having to use every ounce of his strength to keep that i'm guessing it was the uh the right one yes indeed i expect you're right that right pedal may have fa failed him but I know Justin well enough to know that that's not going to stop him. He'll have that airplane back up and running and flying down to Texas for Lone Star in absolutely no time. Knowing him, he may have a different engine and a different life. You know, you never know. He can do so much in a month and a half. <laughs> Unbelievable. Sheldon then, the last Zenith in the match. He is ready, waiting for the word from the air bosses. Again, a very strong crosswind component. Not seeing a whole lot down the runway. Missing the luck of the draw here. Sheldon, by the way, a, a fantastic aviation photographer. Uh, one of his videos on Instagram recently, I noticed he, he was on a pier, I think, in Pensacola, and the Blue Angels came over his head at the speed of snot at, like, 15 <laughs> feet above him. It, it was, was incredible. Yeah, you guys definitely need to look up that photo. Find Sheldon Hetherington on your Instagram. He's got some great footage and photos. Hyper-aggressive. He pulls early. I think aggressive is my word of the day after the backcountry series. <laughs> yeah, we are definitely showing folks how aggressive you can get in flying. And, you know, we, Eric, you and I have talked about this a lot over the course of the series. But, you know, you can take some of what you've learned here home with you. I think, you know, a lot of the pilots you're seeing here, they've spent a lot of time being proficient at this specific thing. But that doesn't mean that you can't go take some of what you've learned here home with you if you're a pilot in terms of putting in the practice, 
being proficient, being ready to land short, soft field, those sort of techniques. Well, I think what you're, what you're talking about is exactly why national still exists. You know, it's not just for the competitors, it's for all the pilots to see how much value there is in taking the time to practice and taking the time to put a line on your runway that you need to make, to, you need to be passed. It really helps refine just the overall safety of you as a pilot every single day. Downwind approach now, that wind is definitely turned, maybe a knot to two knots, Seconds. Okay, now we've got a Reese is with Justin Tisdale right now, and he's got he's holding something in his hand. This is a microphone, and that is a brake pedal. It is, yeah. yeah it's my uh, rudder pedal and my brake. Uh, I mean, as you saw, like I came down and I was braking, and it just shattered across the weld. Um, so it's kind of hard to do out here, but I can find a welder and, and do it so it's not the end of the world it's just gonna take a little bit of time on a sunday probably not gonna happen anybody here in gallatin have a welding machine i'm sure they work on heavy farm equipment nearby I'm, you might be in luck but you had some of the toughest seasons of all our competitors hands down from fires from electrical panels to the brakes now you've got a big competition coming up ahead as a rookie you're going to reno for the first time ever does this put a little hiccup in your step uh, it does. The goal is to leave today, but it's probably not going to happen. So that six-hour or six-day flight is probably going to turn into seven or eight-day now. Um, but we'll get it done. I'll still make it to Reno. It's the goal. Whatever I got to do to make it happen, it's the same as, like, when this stuff breaks here, I figure out a way. It's just, well, you can either let this stuff beat you down or you can just say, hey, it's not going to defeat me. And I'm not that type of person. I, I, uh, I'm not going to let it defeat me. You'll see me. Justin Tisdale, absolutely living his dad's dream, his dreams here at the National Soul Series. Everybody shout out, give some love in the comments to this guy right here, putting it all on the line. Hopefully you can make it to Reno, my friend. Thank you. All right, back to you, Ryan. There is no hope or question in my mind that Justin will indeed make it to Reno. And what he asked for there may have seemed calm. Guys, if you run a shop here in this beautiful area of Tennessee, Please come and find us at the at the booth. We'd be happy to connect you with Justin or find him by his airplane. Let's get this thing fixed today so we can start his journey to Reno this evening for his first time competing at the Reno Air Races. Justin, bad beat, my friend. As always, you choose to be victim rather than victor, and that's one of the reasons why you're one of my heroes, brother man. Well done. I think you mean it the other way. Victor rather than victim. Did I say it backwards? You did. It's okay, guys. The heat's getting to me, too. Make sure you drink some water. <laughs> And find that sunscreen. Beautiful performances from all of our pilots right now. I love watching the air cam come in. Nice and smooth over the line. Heavy under the braking. Great control. So we're getting ready for the last round of the second heat of the sport class. Let's go to the standings. Remember in the first heat, Rick Boardman dropping the gauntlet. 177-foot combined score. Joel Milloway, two feet behind him at 179. Nick Ardillo holding at 234. Sheldon Hetherington, 342. There's Gary Varga getting off into the distance there. Justin Tisdale with 379 before the mechanical failure. Gary Varga with 422. So we could see Gary tighten the gap with Justin there. And we could see, I would be hard, I think, at this point in the conditions for to see Sheldon Hetherington drop over 100 feet to Nick, but anything's possible. Stranger things have happened at National Stole events. I do think that these are the best numbers for our number five and number six, Tisdale and I can't read here. Gary Varga. Varga, yep. <laughs> Gary Varga. Between those two guys, I think those are their best scores ever, potentially. And it was in really challenging conditions. So I love watching these guys refine how they fly, really living the, the mission of National Stole, becoming better pilots through practice and competition. Okay, so I need to buy an air cam. Uh, <laughs> if you guys want to sort of go fund me for an air cam for me, I would be... I mean, that would be weird. Don't do that. But I definitely need an air cam. Uh, maybe my friend Cam, who is a photographer here, maybe Cam and I could buy an air cam together. It could be Ryan and Cam's air cam. Uh, you know what? He's thumbs up in me. I think we're ready to go. Yeah. It's deal. Ink's dry. All right. Ink yep. is dry right. on the deal. contract. Verbal is binding in the state of Tennessee. I look forward <laughs> to seeing the, the, the Cam and Cam. All right. Beautiful Ryan stuff, and guys. Cam. And if you weren't sure, uh, my friend Ryan here is a father, and that was a dad joke. Yep. 
<laughs> yep, got two girls at home, and uh, they they're five and eight, and they they groan a lot at the dad jokes, but <laughs> and so do thousands of others all over the country and the world today, <laughs> apparently. Yeah, yeah, we've got some great folks from Germany watching right now on the live streams. Need to see folks from all over the world stepping up, enjoying the live stream, and hopefully, if you guys will, even though we're getting close to the end of that unlimited moment, if you haven't yet, please take a moment and share this on your Facebook. You guys can find the links on nationalstole.com if you're not watching the live stream, or just post some pictures and tag National Stole. We'd love to reshare your photos, your videos, and, and even just your posts about our live stream because it's really fun to share aviation with the world. And it really helps the series grow. Here's Gary Varga again from Wisconsin. That aircraft, one of one. Huge deck angle there, plopping it down, heavy on the brakes. Look at him locked up, Eric. That is a, just a different person flying that airplane than it was a year ago. Watching him at Sodbusters last year compared to, to that performance right there with the great deck angle, really smooth control, chopping the throttle at just the right moment. Really, really cool to see. And guys, we got one more quick interview with Reese Dockhand. Down here in the paddock with Charles for the Unlimited class. It's getting hot, man. Man, it is getting hot. The DA is getting high. But uh, Patrick and I, we got a little bit of a grudge match going. Uh, I feel like I can't let this Nebraska guy come to Gallatin and just, uh, you know, take the gold. So we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, the sugar and dough cookie code carbon cup is going to hook it up and uh, hopefully we'll come out with a win. For sure. Sugar dough cookie coat, baby. Yeah. That just rolls off the lips. That guy's a little light. You're a little heavy. What's going on? You know, he let his... Uh, it's his, the sugar dough. It, it is. His husband uh, let him drive uh, ride the Rand. So hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully that 500 RP or 5,000 RPMs will really, you know, get him off the ground. But uh, I'm, I'm really hoping to take off the goal. It's Glide sure. versus David. You got a little bit of more power, a little bit more... Um, you know, what you got working for you? Yeah, so I got a little more power, but uh, he's got the experience. You know, he's done this multiple times. Uh, this is, you know, my first uh, first time ever, but uh, I just, I can't let him go home with the gold. We can go with beginner's luck, right? That's right, beginner's hey, luck. Yeah, yeah that's it. it. All right, back yeah. to you, Ryan. Thanks so Good much, balls. Reese. Good Love balls. you guys teeing that up, that grudge match that's going to be up next for you. And, guys, this is really Charles battling for the honor of Tennessee up against Nebraska. it be exciting to see. But let's take a look now at our results Ryan, what is the final standing of the sport class? So these are the unofficial results for the Duke Propeller Sport Class. Rick Boardman, 177. Second place, Joel Milloway in that Rands S7, 179. <laughs> Woo, that's tight. Nick Ardillo, third place, 234. Sheldon Hetherington coming up in fourth, 342. Justin Tisdale, 379. And Gary Varga in sixth place, with 422. I also want to kick over to the exhibition results just so we can see the best run. We had a lot of DQs for our friend in the air cam, but the best run was a combined score of 1,062. Now, let's get ready for the Unlimited class. It's the Factory 10 Aerospace Composites Unlimited class, and we've got a grudge match. You just heard Charles Lilly tee it up. A minute ago there from Coopertown, Tennessee in the 2016 Cub Crafters, Charles Lilly. He will be behind Patrick McIntyre in the 2006 Rands S7 from Lincoln, Nebraska. So we're looking forward to that in just a few minutes. Hang tight for us to see how it ends. I'm excited about this. Guys, it's a great day. It might be hot. It might be twirling winds, but we've got a great crowd out here of happy people. Grab some extra water. Get that sunscreen on. If you don't have a hat, you need to go over to the National Stole Merch booth and pick one up. With that, guys, we'll be back in just a few minutes. With a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> What's skeleton like? It's kind of like... Close to Nashville. Yeah, but without all the and there's a ton of stuff to do.
Wow. Yeah, you get it. And so does Gallatin. Well, everyone, welcome back to Music City Stole, part of the National Stole Series here in 2023. I'm Ryan Dabrowski. I'm joined with the leggy and vivacious Eric Farewell. <laughs> leggy and vivacious is something I've never been called before, but I'll take it. It's been a long day, Ryan. It's I hot. understand. <laughs> I understand your needs. <laughs> uh, we are getting geared up for the unlimited class, the grudge match between Patrick McIntyre and Charles Lilly in just a second. But first, dude, he and Brennan uh, have been killing it all day with these interviews out in the sun. Let's go back to Reese Dockhan in front of a beautiful air cam. Yes, Eric. We are out here with Abe and Sandra and the beautiful air cam, local pilots. Yep. Yep. And uh, it's a unique aircraft. You got two two motors. Two motors, two Rotex, 912s, 100 horsepower. Um, very, very safe plane. Uh, flew better yesterday, I think, uh, like everybody does on the practice tee. You have no pressure. I flew good yesterday. Game day, scratched twice, and I uh, could have flown better. But uh, it was my first time. I'm happy. I uh, had fun, and nothing's got damaged. My partner that helped, that I helped build a plane, he's going to be happy because it's all intact. Uh, <laughs> it was great. It was fun. Sandra, this is a beautiful airplane. What is your favorite seat in the front of the back? Oh, it's the front. It's like floating, or I mean... Boating in the air. It just comes up so smooth and easy. It's my favorite plane to fly with him. I say that maybe they took you out of the competition because of the two motors. I don't care if you put four <laughs> motors on this thing. I want to see this thing fly in the competition. Well, I'm in the expedition class, so I'm the only one in the class. So just like Ricky Bob, unlike Ricky Bobby, I'm first and I'm last. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you can be first and last. Yeah. There's Dan Cougar in the car. Yeah. I put you it. scratch. You scratch twice. You're last, you, and you land twice, and you're, you're first. I think I'm drinking the same thing you are drinking in the booth there, Ryan. Yeah. We got to stay hydrated. It's getting hot and warm out there, but the competition's fun, isn't it? Oh, it's great. It's fun. It's fun. It gets, it's just the butterflies, and then uh, you start getting in the groove. And just like yesterday, I felt like I was in the groove, and I'm still learning, finding there where the right sweet spot is. And it's like you're, you're on, you're kind of, you come down, you get your approach where I wanted to be, and you're actually kind of tickling the stall. And then you kind of, your angle attack changes a little bit, at least in this plane. At least that's what I think. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. And you kind of, your angle attack changes and you got to add a little bit of power and then you want to drop it in on the line. And yesterday I, I got it. And today, I just, just, just wasn't my day. Just chasing it around. Yeah. Just chasing it. Sandra, how'd you spend your day? Running around trying to help folks make sure they got hydrated, make sure we got the wristbands handed out. It's been a wonderful day. We just appreciate everybody being here and being a part of our, our first national soul event. It's a beautiful day. The weather really showed up. I wanted to speak a little bit more. You know, we the, the motors are obvious, but this is a big wing. This thing just does want to stop, it just keeps flying. Yeah, it's really not set up for stole because it really does have a little bit of more speed. Uh, it's tougher to manage the energy. If you don't manage it just right, that's why I came in low, because if I stall, I want to be stalling a foot off the ground. If, I'm, if I stall five feet off the ground, this thing just, when it decides it says it wants to quit flying, it's like, I'm done. And then if you're in the wrong spot, your plane's done. Yikes. Well, next is the unlimited class. We'll kick it back to you, Ryan and Eric in the booth. This is the exciting part. Unlimited Guys, this class. this is the grudge match. This is the moment we've been waiting for. I want to take just a second to welcome anybody who has an exhibition type aircraft, whether it's a PC-12 or a caravan or something wild. <laughs> bring us three or four of your friends that have the same plane. We'll make a class just for you. But today's class is the unlimited class. This is the class where anything goes and there's money on the line. Not just money, but prizes from our friends at Aero LEDs, from Sarasota Avionics, from a whole bunch of our different sponsors, including Flight Outfitters and Lyft Aviation. And two men have decided to battle it out for the points today. Two very different airplanes that we saw some incredible results from that separated only by two feet in the sport class. That's right. This, Ryan, is, a, this is the rematch, right? The aircraft rematch. So in front, we've got Patrick McIntyre in a 2006 Rands S7 from Lincoln, Nebraska. Part-time veterinarian, part-time professional pilot. 2,000 hours of dual instruction provided. Let's everyone give a round of applause for Patrick McIntyre. He's on the roll. Dropping the nose down. He's only owned this airplane a few months. He's off the ground before 150 feet. Exceptional performance already from Pat. 
But now the hometown favorite, Here Charles we go. Lilly. Charles Lilly, 2016 Cub Crafters CC11-160, Skytrain Aviation Sugar and Dough Cookie Co. from Coopertown, Tennessee. Everyone, a round of applause for Charles Lilly. The door is open, the window's flying, and so is Charles if he didn't pull so early. All right, so Patrick's going to feel pretty good about that first one. I think Patrick's going to be very happy with that, but an area that Patrick struggled is in keeping the energy management right to not scratch. Reese, what do you have for us out in the field? No audio is what Reese has for us in the field, but that's okay. He's coming back. Reese, let's try Thank one you. more time. Yep, we're ready. Oh, we're out here. Yes, we're on the live stream. Sheldon, you're beautiful. Bird made the competition. Man. You were fighting it tooth and nail yep. right down to the time. Preventive maintenance, the yes, guys in Gallatin helped out. Mm -hmm. you, how excited are you? I'm just glad that I got the heat in and I'm done and it's all behind me, water under the bridge. But I had a blast. You just, you don't have, you don't not have fun out here. Give a shout out to the people that were here behind us at the FBO working tooth and nail Dude. trying to get this stuff done. I cannot remember the names, but there was a lot more people than just the two that helped me. Everybody was giving me advice and just what I needed to maybe go do, not do, whatever it was. They all they all got behind me and we pushed it. Now, hopefully I can help Justin out with his issues that he's having. So right down to the last minute, you got done. How, how soon was it? 10 minutes. You had 10 minutes. I actually had three by the time I fired up. <laughs> wow. Well, Sheldon, man, get a get a beverage and have a good one. Thank you for being here. Thanks. My goodness, guys, we just saw a great interview and Patrick crossing the line and stopping sub 200 feet, getting the first score of the day. Charles obviously having an early pull, sticking him to the runway for a little bit longer than he wanted. If he can get a score, though, it's a race. If he scratches, that's shame for the county. Whoa, you just escalated the stakes <laughs> pretty high. Right now, a combined score of 320 for Patrick. Here comes Charles now holding it off, holding it off. Right Great on the control. line. Dumps those flaps. Heavy on the brakes. Ooh, it's a hard, hard on those brakes. Just shy of 225. Very nice control from Charles. Now, Charles's first takeoff was a little bit longer than I was expecting to see. We did see that door pop open. One of the first things they teach you when you're flying a Cub type is, hey, sometimes that door is going to pop open. And what do you have to do first? You have to aviate, right? You have to fly the airplane first. Don't worry about that door. That door popping open also creating some drag. It does Which indeed. may be affecting him as well. So he's got three more runs to do this to beat Patrick. I will say, last night in practice, it was Patrick v. Charles. They're back-to-back, -back, and they both were performing at almost exactly the same level. This is a really good race, guys. This is what it's all about. We don't have all the nitrous and the crazy shenanigans because other air races kind of took people from us. But we've got a great grudge match, and Patrick's on the roll. Woo! Okay. All right. So between 125 and 150 there. His previous takeoff, 133 feet. This one a little bit longer at 140. Now, let's watch Charles Lilly. His last takeoff was 248 feet. But Feel he's like got he can, wind. He's got he's wind. Got now, look at wind. this breeze. Flaps right, okay. and he's away. Okay. Now we've got a fight. This is what it's all about, guys. As they come back through, you better be cheering on your hometown boy. Just over 100 feet for Charles Lilly. As they circle around again, I want to thank our friends at Factory 10. Factory 10 Aerospace Composites, a, a new annual partner with National Stoll, and we are so thankful to have them help us bring this to you. And also, I just got to say, look at all the people. Look at all the planes. Uh, I see some helicopters back there. You know, we haven't said thank you, I don't think, to you in the crowd. But thank you to you in the crowd for helping us put this on. We couldn't do it without you. We, we love having you. You guys deserve a round of applause for yourselves, especially on a hot and sunny day like this in the middle of Tennessee. Thank you guys very much. What an honor to be here.
get to talk about airplanes, get to watch airplanes, get to see airplanes do cool things. I mean, come on now. Patrick now, low and to the left, really dragging it in, loving this, this wind that is picked up for him. It's gonna be a very slow landing. Hard on the brakes at the 125. Yes. I heard a lot of, yeah, nices in the crowd because it was. It was very accurate and very heavy on the brakes and slow. His previous landing was 187 feet. This one was 128. So he just dropped massively. He now has a combined score, best run of 268 feet to 474 from Charles's first run. So Charles has got his work cut out with him, but he took off 35 feet shorter than Patrick did this second round. Exactly, and one of the things I love seeing and hearing is across the runway from us, the line judges cheering on. That's largely because they're the pilots too. Each class judges each other to keep it fair. Oh, oh it's a scratch. Come on, Charles. <laughs> the little pogo stick action there. So that's a scratch. So that's heartbreak because that takeoff was killer and he would be neck and neck. He actually would have been in the lead had he not scratched. He would indeed. And I've got some great news from the Moustache Flyer. He says they've already found a welder and he loves Nashville. Getting it fixed today. I got to love that, man. That's the community of aviation that we have right here at National Stoll. Just phenomenal people doing phenomenal things and helping each other. Great news, Justin. Glad to hear it, brother. Patrick now coming up for round three. Uh, I felt I just wanted to channel my inner millennium, like round three, fight <laughs> from Street Fighter. <laughs> Showing my age a little bit right now. Here's Patrick on the roll, getting that tail up nice and high, yanking it down. Woo, we have a fight still. The fight is on, the breeze is up, and we just got to talk about a little bit about how different these airplanes are. You've got a standard aircraft engine, you know, the, the traditional light coming Continental in the Harbin Cub. You have the new up, up and coming Rotax in that RANS. You've got the longer elliptical wing on the Cub. You've got the short and boxy wing on the S7. These airplanes are so different, but just like we saw earlier in the sport class, they perform remarkably similarly. Oh. Okay, so now let's tee it up. Patrick's takeoff distance, 117 feet. Charles Lilly, I believe, is going to be less than that, 104 feet. So literally a huge improvement for Patrick again. I mean, huge is another, you know, 20, 20, 23 feet. But uh, <laughs> in this game, inches count, right? So right now, going into this round, literally whoever does the better landing is going to be in the lead. 100% correct. And something I want to point out is Charles Lilly had a 105-foot takeoff last round and a 104-foot takeoff ra this round. So I'm going to say that first one could just be a mulligan, right? That 248. Could have been the door. Because I'm telling you, he is consistent, and consistency is what you're looking for. Charles is a former airline pilot turned corporate pilot, and he is fired up to be out here competing in the unlimited class for National Stoll. We've got Patrick now to your left, folks. On approach. I don't even want to say anything. I just I want know. to see what happens. I'm just sitting in anxiety. Get over the line. Get over the line. He is over the line. Nice and docile. That looked like the smoothest landing I've seen from him all day. So somewhere around 150 there, which will put him in the 260-something range, I'm guessing. Run two is 268. And run three was 268. Okay, someone's uh, feeling consistent. <laughs> Most consistent is an award that we do make. And if he's able to keep that consistency, he is definitely in the running. That's one of the pilot's most loved awards because it shows that you are just doing the same thing every darn time. Charles Lilly now low, tickling the tops. It's good, heavy on those brakes. He's gonna fade to the left. 
Oh, he's really struggling there. As we can see, oh. the difference between his approach and Patrick's approach may have something to do with the amount of experience he has in this type of competition. Patrick opting to bring it in a few feet higher and then allow it to drop downward, taking the energy and that momentum and forcing it into the ground instead of gliding along the top. Obviously, I prefer Charles's landing, right? It was smooth. It was lovely. It was comfortable. But Patrick, with his additional experience, really driving that energy into the ground instead of into forward momentum. Going into run four, I think it's safe to say it's still anyone's match. 268, best score for Patrick McIntyre. Give him a shout and a cheer as he taxis past you. And here comes Charles Lilly with a best score of 316. So he's improving dramatically. That's a massive increase or decrease for him from 474 to 316. Absolutely impressive to see. You know, this is anyone's fight. I think that right now it's pretty clear Charles has him on the takeoffs. And if he's able to get that momentum downward, he is going to be locked in. All right. We're going to bring the air bosses in. Waiting for them to release. All right. Very nice control there. Just past the 130 foot marker. This is your last go. Round. Charles releasing the brakes a little faster than someone like Rick Foreman, but what a takeoff! That was something else. Okay. Patrick McIntyre, his takeoff, 118 feet, so not his best, but 95 feet for Charles Lilly. That's the best of unlimited class. That's right. That deserves some attention. Love hearing the cheers from the crowd here. The hometown favorite really showing how it's done in a beautiful takeoff. I know it seems like he just completely became a different pilot from that first round. Yeah, what's what's happening? <laughs> what is <laughs> happening? So, okay, I, I maintain my position that this is still anyone's race. We've seen what Patrick can do. He's got two runs at 268. He can possibly improve and get a little bit of cover from whatever Charles will do. But Charles now coming in with a really solid takeoff. He just needs to wrap up that landing. We saw kind of one really good one, but that was a scratch. But the other two were fairly long for him. Definitely long. And we've got a nice note from a fan. She says, Team Skytrain, go Charles. Love seeing people checking in online. And speaking of online, please go to nationalstoll.com slash vote and vote for your fan favorite. If Charles doesn't win this, he won't think his hometown loves him. So he go show him some love. We'll see what happens. Oh, man. Winds are light. Definitely calmed down quite a bit from what it was. Patrick really oh. trying to bring it in and scratches. So a scratch for Patrick now, which means that 268 is the number to beat for Charles Lilly. It's all on this last landing. That's why I love National Stole. Oh, it's the best, man. He's got, what, 70, 67 feet. Let's see, I have, to, I have to math this. 167 feet is how much he has to make. Less than 167 feet to win. That math might be wrong, but it's close enough. And he's right here, oh, just over the oh. line, keeping it slow. Come on, get it stopped, Charles. Get it stopped, Charles. No! <laughs> Doing it with style. I don't know what our judges will say. But that was definitely a unique way to, uh, to stop the airplane. They've got a measure from the furthest wheel away, if I remember the rule book. That is correct. The furthest wheel, which in this case is the right wheel. The aircraft was certainly slow enough not to cause any damage or any concern for our line judges there. But maintaining the direction of your aircraft is important at all times. Ladies and gentlemen, what a crazy day. We have the results back. That was a 180-foot landing. What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? 180 feet 
plus 95 feet gives us a result of 275, which means that just seven feet separate our first and second place with Patrick McIntyre taking home the win for Nebraska. Better luck next time, Charles. What a great show and what a way to end it. What a way to end it indeed. That was something else. We are hearing from our race authorities that we are grateful he kept it safe, but we wish that he kept the direction correct. Guys, this has been a great day. Let's hear, it, hear from Reese Charles. and Charles. Wow, whoa, whoa. we're putting it all out on the line there, yeah. my man. Thanks, Reese. The Carbon man. Cub. I know you can't modify it. You'd you love know? to modify it. Yeah, we'll probably modify it next year. The owner's out here, and uh, I know he's getting kind of into it. So we'll probably modify it next year. But, uh, you know, had to let it all hang out. Oh, man, Some, one way or another, we're going to stop it, uh, even if it's sideways. That, right? takeoff, <laughs> that takeoff was the one to do it. I think it was like 95 feet or whatever. Woo! Your best one ever. <laughs> Good job. You good too, job. Man. Yeah, good job. That Thanks, was awesome. Thanks. You did great. You so, did great. Patrick, you took home the win. The Rans S7, just that lightly loaded aircraft could just stop it on dime. You know, you saw Charles putting it out there. Talk about the competition. Oh, yeah. I would take off and I could see his takeoffs when I was turning like uh, crosswind to downwind. So, I knew he was killing it. And then, of course, I'm watching his landing. So, that was fun. That yeah. was so fun. I got to fly the Unlimited. You can't beat it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Steve Henry can handle it. I think right? he's just going to forever just go to maybe Reno and just do all the stall drag. Uh, probably. Yeah, yeah, he's just not built for this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, come on over, Charles, man. These are your unlimited class competition no, pilots. Everybody give it up for him, Gala. We love you. Great. You were awesome. I couldn't have done that. Yeah, that was yeah. really, really cool. You guys, first event, rookie flies the unlimited. How awesome is that? appreciate it yeah it it uh probably wasn't the smartest thing to do but it was fun you know right it. yeah <laughs> great i did the best i could the best i could so yeah. did uh, did we get the scores what was uh what was the final score i, I separated by I seven did. feet guys separated by seven feet seven feet seven feet between us seven feet between them that is correct seven oh, feet seven was feet. all that seven separated feet. them right there good one either way yeah so so uh patrick got it correct that's correct. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Sugar, go, 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 go! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> National Soul Series, Gatlin, Tennessee. We love you guys. That was awesome. Ladies and gents, this is what Gallatin. it's all about. The Brotherhood of Aviation right Gallatin, here. Gatlin, Tennessee, you guys showed out. Awesome, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for being here. Wanted to take just a few moments to thank our sponsors one last time. After the sponsor, we'd love to have you guys join us in the Rogers tent for some live music and, of course, our award ceremony. That'll be taking place right after these messages. Again, it has been an honor. Ryan, take us away, my friend. So first and foremost, thank you, everyone, for showing up today here in Gallatin, Tennessee. It's been an absolute blast, and what a way to end the show. What a way to end the show, indeed. Let's thank our annual sponsors, Lad Gardner Insurance, Legend Aircraft, Hartzell Propeller, Sarasota Avionics, USA Trailers Direct, Duke Propeller, Lift Aviation USA, Air Tech Coatings, Factory 10 Aerospace Composites, Aero LEDs, Rugged Radios, FlightHelmet.com, Flight Outfitters, Committee Coffee, Avination, and Flying Eyes Optics. We also have to talk about our local sponsors. We actually have to because they had some incredible ones here. Some of the best we've ever seen, led by Firefly LED, the incredible, beautiful banner sign thing that has a screen on it that I want one in my house. Big thanks to them, as well as Matt Harris with Brian Harris Homes. Try Green. Ingram Aviation Insurance, Jet Access, Sumner County Tourism, and the City of Gallatin. Factory 10 Aerospace Composites, Charlie's Golf Carts, Stolen Aircraft, Sumner Bacon Trust, Rogers Group, Brower Online, Tennessee Flight Training, Tennessee Brew Works, and Half Batch. Guys, this is what it takes to put on an amazing event like that. It's local sponsors coming together with our annual sponsors and throwing an event that people will talk about for years to come. We hope to see you again here next year. And I want to thank our production staff. They just, they just showed a little sneak peek of the production room in the trailer. Huge thanks to those guys for all they've done to put this together. The hours are not just what you see. There are many, many hours. So huge props to them. Guys, again, meet us in the Rogers tent for some live music and our award ceremony. We hope to see you again next year. And if anyone here is interested in sponsoring National Soul and seeing your national brand all over the internet, we'd love to hear from you. You can find out more information at nationalstoll.com. With that said, my name is Eric Farewell. I'm Ryan Dombrowski, and man, Eric, it has been 
one heck of a ride. It has indeed. Everyone, thank you so much. It's been an honor. We'll see you again very, very soon. See you soon, everybody. It's time to say yes to new adventures, to find joy in the little things, and to spend time laughing with the ones you love. Create moments you will never forget and moments they will never forget. Connect with nature and catch up with old friends. It's time to take a trip to explore the beauty of all that Sumner County has to offer because memories are made of this. So my name is Lexi Duncan. I am the official line boss of the National Stole Series. I have no idea how I worked my way into that title, but been here the whole season, so here we are. Yeah, so I'm an airport supervisor back in Virginia, and I'm a pilot myself. I fly pretty much anything I can get my hands on. Uh, whatever's available, I'll take it. It's been so fun. I feel like our weather the wind has just been so tough every single time. It's, it's, always, it's always something. It's always something It's either too much or not enough. And it's kind of hard to do a soul, good soul event with that. But those guys make it work and they make it work well. I mean, it is so fun to watch. I love the rivalries. Uh, those, those always give me a good time out on the line and being on the line, I mean, I got the best seat in the house. So it's good, it's awesome. For me, if I'm pulling them up to the line, I'm looking at their mains and making sure nobody's getting too far back or too far forward, you know, not giving up a foot or not cheating a foot. Sometimes they try. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, you know, making sure they get up on the line spot on so that all the scoring's fair for everybody. And same thing when they land, making sure they're not landing before the line. If they're on it, great, great for them. But I'm calling it good or I'm calling it a scratch or I'm saying I don't know because sometimes those guys, I mean, they have so much skill in them, they'll land right on it and sometimes I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I no idea, no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they hate it so much and I mean, I, I take it personally, you know, if one of, I hate to see my favorite people scratch and they do it and it happens and it's, it's so painful. Yeah. It's so painful to see, I hate doing it. But, you know, they get just as excited when they have a good landing. So I think it all, it all balances out. It's okay. The first thing that comes to my mind is three weeks ago, Jeff Pohl in Minnesota just kept hitting stuff. Because, uh, you know, he puts all this stuff on his airplane and he doesn't know the size of it. He, he hits cones, he hits flags, he just, you know, he does it all. And that probably made me laugh the most out of anything that's gone on. Um... Swamp Stole overall was just chaotic because it was so muddy, so muddy. That, that sticks out in my mind. It's always something, we either got mud, dust, sun, too much sun, anything. But yeah, Jeff Pohl, he'll, he'll give you a good laugh. Fan favorites, easily the Jeff Pohl and Micah Lindstrom rivalry, That's, that always gets everybody. Colin Kaneva, definitely, definitely a crowd favorite. Um, Steve. We can't miss Steve, Hal, I mean, shoot. There's so many good ones. Brian, Brian's one of my favorites. Rick Boardman has been killing it. I mean, he, the way he put out an aisle, that was awesome. That was so awesome to see. So consistent, so awesome. I mean, he just makes it look so easy. Yeah. Oh, he makes it look so easy. I mean, he flies that carbon cub like it's nothing. But yeah, I mean, I'd say everybody's favorite's probably Steve just because of what he can do. But he's so humble and so awesome. It's, oh, it's great. Man, I just want to see this organization continue to grow and continue bringing awareness to what we're doing. Because, I mean, shoot, when I first started flying, I didn't know this was a thing. I had no, you know, I'd never flown a fat, fat tower airplane. And, you know, the first time I did and started coming to these events, I mean, it was just, that was it. That was it. You know, I was like, okay, this is what I'm doing with my life. And... 
you know, the fact that this organization has done so much and brings a different side of aviation to so many people, whether they're in aviation or not. That's the beauty of it. It's, it's intriguing, it's interesting, and it's so fun regardless. And I just want to see the organization continue to grow. And I mean, you know, even just looking at what was going on a year ago compared to what we are now is so phenomenal. So I'm ecstatic to see what happens in the next 12 months, 24 months, continue going on. I can't wait. 